what up everybody back in the building once again last day of lux and a lot of us are just you know what we're ready we're ready to see what's gonna happen tomorrow we might end up doing uber more than we do lyft so we're about to find out uh before this live stream really gets going you know i'm gonna i got an idea what i'm thinking about doing because our live streams go three hours four hours five hours at about if it gets close to two hours i say let's take a break I'm going to chop the live stream up and then we come back. Let everybody go use the bathroom, do what they got to do, get up, you know, go hang out, go drive, do some deliveries. And then right after that, we'll I'll start up another live stream for those who want to just have like a cool down hour. You know, one hour of cooling down. My man Logan Blocks in the house. What's good? What's good? What up, Glitch Dash? Always on a Glitch Dash. He live on YouTube, man. It's like whenever you get on YouTube, you see Glitch Dash doing something. He always busy, man. He stay busy on his platform. That's what's up. That's what's up. What up, DoorDash Rev? My man, the Rev. He's in the building with MKKM. Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Yeah, it's time to go out and try to get this money tonight. Ebony says, finally caught alive. I know it. I know it. Hey, I woke up today kind of late. I woke up about what? Two o'clock. So I got up about two o'clock because I wanted to sleep in pretty good so I can get up and get my get out there and, and get this money tonight. I'm going to drive nonstop. I'm going to try to go until about five, six in the morning if I can get some good uh, reservations going this morning. What up? All for kicks is back. She's back in the building. Hey, we trying to go out there and get this money tonight. We know this is the last night to really go out and do it. Oh, yeah, I go out tonight. Yeah, it's only four o'clock p.m. right now. I don't start driving until eight, nine p.m. So I wake up and I just like, you know what, I, I kick back, relax for a few hours, swim, do whatever I want to do. Like I said, a lot of us, we we're the type of gig workers that have the luxury of waking up, getting yourself together for a few hours, going out and enjoying your life, running your errands, doing whatever, then starting work. You know, a lot of W2 people and a lot of people in corporate, you know, they wake up from the moment they wake up, they in a rush mode because they got to get to work in about an hour and a half. We wake up, we got like four, five hours. <laughs> ODB, thanks for the super chat. Old dirty bastard was, <laughs> I like that. Hey, old dirty bastard live and uncut. That's my man right there, man. Don't, don't bring up ODB unless you're ready to hear some of it, man. Yeah, but a lot of us, we like to get up and get our life together, you know, get our energy together, get set in what we are, clean the car off, do whatever, Hank, watch some TV, watch a few lives or whatever. So, yeah, it's like I'll I'll get out and drive later, but I'm one of those drivers that like to get I like to get up and get into my zone before I really do much. Because if I had to wake up like corporate, wake up, hurry up, make breakfast, hurry up, get dressed, hurry up, run out the door. I might as well just work corporate. It's like forget that I like to wake up and take my time, get into my zone. And then I'm like, OK, cool. I'm ready to work today. Go online, start going through everything. It's like, all right, bet. Uh oh, all praises that I've been getting looks all day. All day. They feeding everybody right now. Because the deluxe division at Lyft is like, well, this is our last time to really make good money. So let's throw it out there. So they throwing a ton of Lux to everybody right now. I was going to drive last night. Me, Juan Vargas, and King James, we went and uh, sat and watched the Chargers game over at Fate. So we was hanging out, watching the game or whatever. And we was comparing like apps back and forth. Man, it was nothing but surge out there. They was trying to get people to drive bad. I didn't even drive last night. I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm good. But tonight is the night. This is like Wednesday nights for us are good. There's going to be some events downtown. Go down there and make some money. Man, what up, Mike Penner? He's back. My man. This is my man, Jeff. Long time no see. You the man. Please tell your audience about the Jeffy Lube oil special, $19.99 for Tesla drivers. Just got mine done in 30 minutes. <laughs> I know. Juan Vargas need to hear that. Hey, man, take that Model S in for an oil change. What are you doing, man? You need some transmission fluid in that Model S. <laughs> yeah. And all praise say, hey, makes sense. I'd be ignoring out of ignoring five out of ten. I'm gonna drive tonight though. Yeah, because tonight, like I said, they're gonna be throwing some good money out there for everybody. And last night they were trying to get people ramped up because I think that division is kind of closing down. So they want to get as much revenue through the door as possible. And they're moving, you know, lift people up the lux, they're bumping people all around, keeping these drivers on the road because they know. And and like I said, two board members on Lyft walked out. They, they resign their positions and they're going to do something else with their life and shit like that. So you already know when somebody sees a ship sinking, they're going to come up with an excuse to get off that ship. They're like, you know what? We're going we gonna to kind of get off the board. Uh, We're going we gonna to do something else because this is like not for us. So those members got off and now they're, you know, going to have to come up with some, some new board members to help make decisions and stuff like that, especially after this Lux debacle. And I'm going to call it a debacle. 
because it's about to get there yeah all praises said you get uber comfort been getting those my rating is like 4.83 but still getting it yeah i don't get uber comfort on uber you need a five series bmw to move up to comfort so anybody with a three series on uber you're just doing uber x that's it and i roll a three series i got the 330i so on uh look on lyft they're gonna put me on extra comfort once you know tomorrow so my my lux is gonna disappear but extra comfort is gonna pop up on my screen now and i keep that until april so i'll be rolling extra comfort too i don't know what the prices are gonna be but you know how i drive even on lux i decline some lux because every lux ain't good just like every uber x ain't good every ride ain't good some of those offers just ain't worth my time so i'm sitting there going you know i'll probably wait to see how comfort is going to go before I really fully invest into it. So, yeah, that, look at that, 10 cents a mile, all that, man. Just, I'm still going to do what I do on Lyft for Lux. No matter what I do, I'm going to look at the profit margin of the transaction before I accept that transaction. I don't care what they pay on their rates and their standards. I don't go by that. I'm looking for 15 miles. I mean, $15, three, four miles. That's what I look for. If I'm looking for some, you know, six, seven miles, it's got to pay me like, you know, 20 bucks. That's what I'm looking for. I'll take, you know, 16, 17 but I know what I'm looking for. So the tier really don't matter to me. The transactions matter more than the tier. But the fact that they're removing this tier only floods the market with certain type of cars. And that means a lot of people with the upgraded cars, the Mercedes, the Beamers, all of us, we're going to have to, you know, now compete for rides on the, with the lift riders. The bait, if we, once this stuff disappears, we got to drop down a lift. So people are going to say either I can get a Nissan Versa or I can get a, you know, a, a C230, a Mercedes. Of course, they're going to choose a Mercedes every time. So everybody with the Nissan Versus are going to be upset because people are going to be choosing those cars if they can get a Mercedes for the same price. They're not going to be choosing, you know, uh, uh, Altima if they can get, you know, uh, a BMW or some kind of, you know, Mercury Zephyr or something like that. If they can get a really nice upgraded car for the exact same price. What do you think they're going to choose? I'm like, I mean, common sense. And so I think they're going to end up getting rid of a lot of drivers that they didn't even intend on getting rid of. Not just the Lux drivers going over to, to Uber X, but they're going to get rid of a lot of the base tier drivers that now they can't get a lot of rides. They're going to be like, man, I'm not getting nobody's choosing my car. I'm trying to get rides. Nobody's choosing my car. Why would they? They put all the luxury cars down a tier. Now everybody's choosing luxury cars at the exact same rate. I'm like, and if I was a base tier driver, I would be worried too. Not just Lux drivers, base tier drivers need to worry because when you flood the market with a lot of nice cars, they gonna and that's what they're going to do. They're going to end up making people rent. They're going to say, okay, since you were renting or since you were driving a Nissan Versa, you can come rent a Honda Accord from us or rent a Tesla from us and now get more rides. But you got to get a different car. So leave the Nissan Versa at home. Come get one of our cars. And it's like, that's going to that's gonna be the, the big issue right there. A lot of people not having the the equipment that's going to get the drive the riders to say I want that car. It's going to be all these luxury cars on the platform. They're like, man, all day I've been getting BMWs, I've been getting Mercedes, I've been getting Teslas, I've been getting all these cool cars all day. And now a Nissan Versa pops up. I know I don't want that. Cancel, cancel, and they're gonna try to go for a nicer car. And they're gonna keep they're gonna say, dude, every time I'm on my way to a ride, they keep canceling me all the time. What up, Doc, my man? Yeah, board and AZ, if you don't own a car, you don't have a chance. And that's why I'm glad my man Wes, like last night when I met up with King James, I finally saw his car. He just bought a, a 2022, no, 2024 Camry. Clean. This thing is all white, clean as hell. Thing is nice. But that's what people have to do. You have to go buy a car. Yeah. And board says, I got to figure out how to get an auction car. I'm so tired of working all month just to barely afford to keep renting. And that's what we tell people. You know, renting is a short-term solution to a to an immediate to something immediate you got to eventually get a car because if you don't i mean you're paying you know two thousand dollars fifteen hundred fourteen hundred a month just for a car that's all you're paying for is that car and now we're hearing that tesla people got to start paying for their tires we got some people looking into that i want to see if that's really true if it was just a rumor if tesla people really got to pay for their tires now but you know, my man Wes went out he got a car he's paying 290 a month for ev golf so he's paying 290 a month no fuel because it's an EV golf and he's no longer paying two G's a month for a Tesla. So he went from 2000 a month spending to keep that Tesla rented all the way down to $290 a month. I mean, that's a huge, you know, expense swing right there. So he's don't have to work as hard. And if, if he keeps working as hard as he does, at least it's all profit for his bank now. 
He don't have to turn around and be like, man, I got to give all this money to Hertz. Dang. Every time I do a ride, you know, X amount of the dollars go towards Hertz. X amount goes towards Uber. And I only get a small chunk of that ride because I'm paying all these expenses out just to do these rides. So I got to do a ton of rides just to, you know, stay afloat. He's just like that, Borden AZ, just like that. So he decided to say, I'm going to do something different. He went out and just bought an electric car, $290 a month, the EV Golf. Doing the exact same thing, making bank, doing Instacart, doing Uber Eats, you know, doing Uber when he can, making the same amount of money, the expenses less. So his profit margins got real high. So I, I love it when I see people really starting to think about the business behind it instead of, well, instead of the fear. They go, well, I'm going to go get me a Tesla just in case something happened to the Tesla. It ain't my Tesla, it's somebody else's Tesla. But I've been doing ride share for almost five years. Ain't nothing ever happened to my car in five years. They sell you fear when they're selling you a rental. Oh, you're going to blow the engine. You're going to blow the transmission. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Ain't none of that ever happened to any of my cars. And I've been driving them all. So they sell you fear in order to get you to rent. And once you rent, you out of all that fear money is spent. They don't give you none of it back if you don't blow the engine, if you don't blow the transmission, if the tie rods, they don't give you none of that money back. It's all fear money. And they keep it. You can't go, well, since I didn't blow the engine, can I get all that money back? Can I get, no, it was just in case. It was like, no, I don't, I don't like that, man. You're keeping all my profits on a just in case, but you ain't returning my money back. <laughs> yeah. But all praises say, sometimes I got to use hyper app and give my, my bands a break. Hyper app is cheaper than Uber. Higher app. Okay. Higher. Yeah. I don't think we have that in Phoenix. I'm going to have to look at that. All for kick said, yeah, one tire is about $400. Sheesh. Yeah, I don't know about them Tesla tires, man. And, you know, a lot of people talk about Tesla use special tires and things like that. I don't know. Me, y'all know me. I'm an engineer at heart. I mean, my uncle was an engineering professor at the University of Missouri, Raleigh. That was my dad's brother. My son, he's a mechanical engineer. I build stuff all the time, but I have an accounting degree. I would take a, a Tesla and try some other tires. <laughs> That's just me. Thank Doc, man. I believe it, brother. Hey, Doc, thank you for the super chat. Say, Uber Levy, I mean, Uber gives me a headache. U Uber Levy, I know it. I mean, Uber gives me a headache. Hey, I had a headache last week, man, about two or three days dealing with Uber. I was like, man, I got a headache. I got to stop. Serious. I, I really, it was giving me a headache with the crap they were sending. And I was like, man, forget that. They all praise that Mercedes Benz dealer tries to charge me 300 a tire. I just hit up discount tire and the same as 130. Yep. That's what I do. I order my tires straight to the house and just do them in the garage, man. If I don't got time, I just take them down the street. They, you know, pop the, the run flats. Now that the run flats are gone, I don't have to worry about trying to break the bead on the run flat, which is literally impossible without hydraulic pressure. So now that I got regular tires back, I can do my own tires again. But the run flats, yeah. I could do Jeep tires. I could do anything as long as it's not a run flat. A run flat, you cannot bend the sidewall because it's so rigid and I do everything manually. Nah. I took it down the street. Let them do it. <laughs> no, -uh. Abe said, yes, you do have to pay for tires. But if you get the extra insurance, you don't. Well, the extra insurance ain't nothing but tires. That's all it is. You're just paying. You're prepaying the tires. So it's like instead of paying the insurance, just put that money in an envelope somewhere. So if the day comes, you need a tire, then just go get a tire because you had it saved in an envelope. And that's what these these places are doing. They're overcharging everybody for everything. In a what if standpoint, they're pre-charging you for all the wear, tear and everything else, which is totally fine. Totally fine. Pre-charge people for it. But then if nothing ever happens, you don't even get a percentage of that back. You get nothing back. And it's like they're just banking on profits and they're banking, banking on people saying it's, it's cheaper to rent. No, look at your bank account renting and then look at your bank account after you have bought a car. You will have two different balances. I guarantee you'll have two different balances. So if it's cheaper to rent and you're renting, you should have a really high bank account. You really should because you're saying, well, I didn't have to replace an engine. Well, your bank account should be high. I didn't have to replace a the transmission. Then your bank account should be high. Well, I don't have to do maintenance. Then your bank account should be high. So if your bank account is low and you're renting, but everybody who's bought a car bank account is high, that tells you the whole story. This is about money. It's not about fear tactics. It's not about, you know, you know, what ifs and all. No, it's about reality. The reality of when you waking up and you see bills coming in the mailbox and you get anxiety about how high is this shit going to be? That's real. That's real. When they sell you the illusion and you throwing all this money at an illusion all the time and it never happens, you never get none of that money back. They never say, you know what, since nothing happened, we're going to give you at least, you know, 50 percent of the money back, 40 percent. No, they don't give you nothing back. They they be like, got them, got them. 
So everybody who who wants to really do business. And and like I said, there's a lot of people out there who want to talk about, you know, miles and talk about this. and talk. No, look, the only anytime I did business, the first thing we would do was bank account reconciliations. A bank account reconciliation is when you look at all your balances, you go through all your fees, all your ends, all your outs. See if your balance is really what it is, whether stuff is outstanding. You got a cruel sitting there, something. I reconcile my bank account at home all the time, constantly going through it. And it has to go up because that helps you make decisions on to get that balance to go up. Because if you never know how much money you got, you think you're doing fine. But once you realize you're not doing fine, it's too late because now a bill's due, an emergency came up, and you're not doing fine. So always stay on top of your money. Always. Every business stays on top of money. A lot of these drivers out there, they're not on top of their money. They like to talk about how many hours they put. Oh, man, I put in 75 hours last week. Cool, cool. What's your bank account looking like? They don't want to talk about that. But this is what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the bank account. We're doing this for the bank account. We're not doing this so we can brag about how much time we put in the street. I don't care about how much time. I would rather put less time in the street and have a higher bank account than put more time in the streets and have a lower bank account. Because if we're doing this about money, let's do this about money. Let's be smart about it. What up, Briggs, then? And they said, yeah, they know how much your car is going to depreciate fast and it's not worth the risk. I need to find a W-2 until I get a car loan. Yeah, Borden, AZ, and I tell everybody, they they scared that they wish they do the offer praises. Man, I wish I lived in your area. I'll pay you to work on brake pads and stuff like that. You do brake pads, I'm sure. You, man, I got brake pad videos on my channel showing how to do Beamer brakes, Jeep brakes, everything. But yeah, they, they talk about how your car is going to depreciate. But I'm going to tell you something about a car. A lot of people look at a car as an entire complete package. I look at a car as a unit. If you take brakes off and put on new brakes, you got new brakes. That's just how it works out. You got brand new brakes. If you take a transmission out, put a transmission back in, doesn't matter what your dash says, you got a brand new transmission. That's a zero mile transmission. So I can hit a half a million miles on that car. As long as that car works, it's totally fine. I could take the whole engine and transmission out, get a salvage yard, like an insurance yard, like, you know, all state or progressive, go to their salvage yard, take out something that they totaled out. Like maybe the, the rear end got hit. So they, they totaled the car out. I can take a 15,000 mile transmission, get that engine and transmission assembly for seven G's, $7,000, have them crated to my house. And I can spend a weekend putting it in my car. Done it many times. I used to do engine installs with people all the time. So for me to get a new car is going to cost me $7,000. If I blow my engine, that's it. $7,000, I get a new BMW starting at 15,000 miles again. I'm not going to go trade my car in with a heavy loan and go get another car with another heavy loan. I just buy an engine for seven G's. I'm pretty sure I got a credit card, or a line of credit somewhere around here with at least seven thousand dollars on it. I'd rather pay interest on seven grand instead of, you know, 40, 50 grand. So I'll just go out and get a new engine. It's like they, they can't scare me when you know that you can go buy a new engine with fifteen thousand miles on it. It's already been tested, already went through the ringer a little bit for about a year or so. So, you know, it's a good engine. Drop that shit in your car. Now you got that engine that runs just fine. And I'm one of I'm one of those people, man. I'm one of those people. A lot of people, they don't, I'm old school. I don't look at new cars as the solution. A lot of new cars end up on flatbeds because of, you know, recalls and electrical circuits went out, you know, modules went out, stuff like that. Give me an engine that works. I'll get that shit in my car. You ain't got to worry about that. I'll put it in my car. I got an engine hoist in the garage now, ready. <laughs> yeah. What up, Riggs? And yeah, I see your 11K on the bank. Amir. I got to encourage you. You're the only one who shows. Yeah, Fortune John, I, I do that, man. And I sit there and I tell people, you know, I put it on there because I want to show people the reality of what happens when you use certain taxes and strategies. I don't do that shit to brag. I do that shit to show people because there's a lot of people on YouTube going to have you doing shit that they heard. Oh, you should do this because I heard this. You should, but yet they ain't got no proof of it. Show me proof. Show me you doing well, doing what you're telling me to do. Show me you doing well. I ain't got to show you nothing. They don't tell me shit. I don't want to hear it. If you can't show me how well you're doing with what you're saying, I don't want to hear it. I don't. And I give people my bank. I give them my email address, uberjeepaz at gmail.com. Email me. Send me your bank account. When you're sitting on 20, 30, say, Jeff, I've been doing this shit for three years. This is where I'm sitting. Now we can sit down and talk. But if you're sitting at $300, Telling me what to do with. No, I may not want to end up with three hundred dollars. I may not want to end up with that in my bank. I may not want to end up in the same boat you in. So I'm trying to listen to people whose boat I want to be in. And a lot of people out there, they may not even have the same bank account I have, but at least they got the strategy that can help build on what I got. And I'm talking to those people. 
And I see how every like everybody's expenses are different. Some people got one kid. Some have none. Some have four. Some have five. So everybody's bank balance is going to be different based on who's feeding off of that income. But if you got strategies that can keep that income commensurate per capita for the people in your house, then you good. I'll listen to you. And it ain't got nothing to do about it. But I got a lot of people out there trying to tell me how to do business. And they haven't even seen my bank account. I haven't seen theirs. I don't know who they are. They're just a screen name. It's a screen name on YouTube telling me how to run my shit. And they don't, I don't know nothing about them. And I tell them, I'm 100. I live in the real world. I don't live on the internet. So if you internet and you tell me something on the internet, you know, here's my email address. Email me so we can keep it real. Let's keep it 100. Thank you, Briskin. Value for value. I appreciate the super chat. Brixton, $4.99, value for value. Hey, that right there helps, brother, especially with these gas prices. Woo, man. It slowly started creeping back down, but it's going back up again. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. But like I said, man, we, we live in a real world, and I try to tell people it, it's okay because we show what we make gross every week. People love to show what they gross every week. Oh, this is what I made this week. Cool. Now show me what does that affect. Show me your bank account. No, I ain't showing you that. Cool. A lot of people don't want to show that. That's totally cool. I do. That's my decision to do that. That's not to brag. That's to let people know I'm not full of shit. When I tell you I'm out here doing this, I'm out here really doing this. I'm going to show y'all what I do. Everything. What up, Logan? Thank you, Logan, for the super chat. My damn gas pedal went out on my S430. About to order a damn part now. And another sensor. I'm old school, too. <laughs> That's right, Logan. I appreciate that, brother. Hey, and you know that that uh the Mercedes gas pedal, I think that's a signal, right? Because you you gotta uh, screw it right behind the pedal because it sends a, a signal to the ECU and that controls your throttle. I I think I remember how those S430s work, man. And that's like I said, you could do that right. And Mercedes will probably charge you about you know nine hundred dollars to replace that. You could do it yourself. <laughs> it's like, man. And I tell people, man, it's like Boy, board these last one told me to go work at McDonald's in my first paycheck, then come back. Man, man, I don't know. Sometimes you got to be like, you know what? I'm going to go work at a warehouse. Just do a warehouse job. They got a lot of warehouse jobs out in Arizona that pay pretty well and you're indoors. So I might do that first before I do McDonald's. I'll do a warehouse job. Yeah, but I know I'm one of the, you know, only YouTubers out there who ain't scared to, to keep it 100 with people, man. I'm not. And I tell people everything. I tell them, hey, if you guys want to, and I've said in so many of my videos, hey, what you guys should be doing while you out, stream people walking, stream dogs walking, stream trees blowing, stream whatever you can. Because if YouTube grabs that, puts that in the algorithm, there are 7 billion people on this planet that going to say, hey, you know what? I want to watch this while I'm cooking or I want to listen to this while I'm cooking. YouTube and Google will take care of it. Don't worry about it. And I tell people that that's how you create, you know, the income around you to pay the bills that's going to come up in your life. And it may not be a whole lot. Like I tell people, it's not a lot. I mean, for the time, the hours of editing and the hours of doing videos and all this shit I do on YouTube, I swear I tell motherfuckers I make about really about a dollar an hour because it's a editing is a lot. I edit when I'm in my car waiting on rides sometimes. I'll sit there and go through videos and I edit on my phone and, and get things like lined up right, get my you know memes put in right. And it's a lot of time involved in it. But in the end, hopefully it'll be worth it. Hopefully it helps people. Hopefully it creates more income in people's bank account than, than the time that we're investing to do this. It shows people how to use, you know, Uber Pet. A lot of people online, oh, you need to quit chasing surge. Quit chasing surge. If I listen to them over the whole week that I've been driving, I would not have had any of those surges. And I'd be catching crazy surges, 18s, 12s, 8s, 9s, 13s, 21s, 15s. If I listen to them, none of that would be sitting in my bank account. I'd be right where they are. <laughs> Briggs said, man, your meme game is official. Hey, my memes are like my characters to my movie. That's why you see some of the same ones over again. Those are my characters in my movie. <laughs> the movie is called Ride Share. <laughs> <laughs> it's like them memes be killing me, man. That's that be killing me. In the board, they said that's the difference, Jeff. Makes you the best YouTuber, Jeff. They show you their weekly, you show us how to get that weekly. That's right, board, and AZ. That's what I'm talking about. You see it, you see through it. Because when I first started watching YouTube, when I started driving, I was never told how to do it. I was always, you know, look, looking at somebody's channel who was popping a collar and bragging, I'm the best driver out there. I'm this, I'm that. Because, and that's why people, you know, 
they they get upset that they get put down. Well, you ain't nothing but a driver. You ain't so they get on YouTube. Well, look, me, I'm the best driver. I'm this, I'm that, but they never tell you how to get there. It's like crab in the bucket mentality. It's like, hey, everybody come around and watch me eat this hamburger. I know all y'all hungry, but watch me eat this hamburger. Look at this big ass hamburger I got. I'm gonna eat this in y'all face. Watch me eat this hamburger. Like you don't do that shit to people in the window. Invite them into the restaurant. Hey, come on in, man. Let's eat. Come on in. Y'all hungry too? Come on in. The door is open. Have a seat. Let me make you a burger. What you eating? And you help feed everybody. You use information. You use knowledge to help feed everybody. Too many YouTubers eating a hamburger in the fucking window while all the drivers outside hungry like, man, I wish I could have that hamburger. Man, I wish I could eat that hamburger. It's like, no, you can. Come through the door. Let me show you how I got this burger. Come on through. We're going to all eat. And that's the kind of channel I've always had, even when it comes to repairs or anything else. We're going to all eat. There is no, no sense of bragging about something that you're not willing to share with people. If you're going to show somebody something, tell them how you got it. Like, man, I got this car. How'd you get it? Okay, this is what I did. I got my credit right first. This is how I got my credit right. I did this, 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 this. And you go through the whole gamut of how you achieve something. And you pass that knowledge to somebody else. And you sit and watch and see, okay, let's see if they achieve it too. When they achieve it, now you know the method works. Because it not only worked for me, it worked for you. Now you tell two other people. Now it's working for them. Now everybody has the same strategy we're using. And everybody's eating. Everybody's paying bills. Everybody's less stressful about, you know, that that mail truck coming and putting something in that mailbox. You already know I got that. I know what it is. It's probably a thirteen dollar bill, thirty dollar bill. I got that. I got it. And that's the kind of driver that that I've always been. I've always I've never been that that gloaty, braggy driver. I've been telling people to people, man, quit giving away your hot spots. Why? Nobody's ever going to find out about that hot spot if I was to die today. If I was to die today, nobody would know that that shit exists. I'm not going to live forever. So at least share information with people. I've never went broke doing ride share. And I've told everybody everything that I know about ride share. And I still haven't went broke. So that common fallacy of if you tell everybody shit, you're going to go broke. It doesn't work in my in my situation. Because I've told everybody everything. For four years, I've been showing people everything. And I still haven't went broke yet. So they got to quit with that shit of if you tell people your secret, you ain't going to make no money. I guarantee the people with the biggest secrets have the lowest bank accounts and they really think they are probably doing something amazing. But it's like when you share knowledge, you're educating yourself while you educate other people. If I sit and I'm showing you how to shoot a jump shot and I'm at the free throw line and I'm shooting jump shots, trying to show you how to shoot a jump shot. I'm actually working on my own jump shot while I'm showing you. So when I'm showing you how to drive and how to do things and on the map, I'm becoming a better driver through trying to teach somebody how because I catch myself fucking up or somebody catches me fucking up and we share. Hey, Jeff, man, you screwed up, man. When you went left, you could have went right. Hey, you know, you could have saved that 13. You could have did this. You could have did that. Hey, that trip that went through, it already had two things on it. Jeff, pay attention. Scroll up and you can see it was a stop on there. They show me everything. So me showing other people how to drive ends up making me a better driver through people criticizing what they see. And I take criticism very well. The only type of criticism I don't take well is drivers coming in that have never been in this channel. And they walk through the door, don't even know what room they in. They walk through the door and they go, oh, man, you don't know what you're doing. And that's their only comment. That's it. There is no. You don't know what you're doing in this instance. This is what you did. This is what you could. There is no breakdown of nothing. There is just, you don't know what you're doing. And that's it. I don't like that because to me, that's that's brainless. That, that's some shit a five-year-old would walk in the room and say. We're all intelligent adults. We're business owners over here. We can speak and have a conversation. You can criticize me, but criticize me with what the issue is, what did you see, and what do you think the solution is? That's how you create a conversation. But just coming in with destructive criticism, trying to tear somebody down because you're a hater, that's a whole nother fucking level right there. When I come in, I got constructive criticism. I'm going to tell you, you could be doing better. Let me tell you how you could be doing better. You could do this. You can try to do that. You can do this. And I tell people, if I'm going to criticize you, I'm going to give you a solution at the end of the criticism because I want to see you do better. I'm not here to tear you down. To tear you down, if I see you catch it with one hand, I'm going to tell you, you should probably catch with two hands because this way, as I was to grab one of your arms and pull your arm down, you still can, you know, move with the ball. I'm going to tell you different ways how to do it better. And a lot of people come around and all they do is want to destroy what you're doing because they couldn't do it. 
So now they're upset and they're going to try to tear you up. What up, Stan? Briggs said, this is why I subbed. Yeah, Doc, right, man. The, crazy, it, the surge will be crazy this week for the D-backs and Phillies game. And we was talking about that last night. If we got three games here, that's three big pockets of money, Doc. Three big pockets in a row. Mike says, Jeff, the Uber pet master. <laughs> I hope they don't ever take that shit away. I'm going to die without it. Briggs says, a monkey can do that. Real shit. Because what we do, you know, if, if you teach a monkey how to drive a car in a straight line, I've seen monkeys drive golf carts and shit like that. So driving a car is not the hard part. The hard part is running this as a business. That's the tricky part. How can you do this as a profitable business to where you can take care of your family? That's the trick right there. Oh, I drive my car to work every day. Yeah, you do, but you don't drive it professionally. We drive it professionally. We drive it for profits to make money, to pay rents, mortgages, invest in a condo with somebody else or whatever, pay for car repairs. We do this very differently than the average car driver. Oh, it's just driving a car. Sure, it's driving a car. But it's how do you get profits out of this to take care of your life without having to go get another job? How do you do that? There's a trick to it. And that's where the skill comes into play. And a lot of people don't want to see that skill. They see the skill developing. They see us happening. They see in the money. I look in my chat and my comments on my videos. I see people four or five hours driving $300. It's working. They driving two, three hours, 200 bucks. It's working. The skills are working. They're running it like a business now. I like to see that. But then you get haters from the outside. They see what's going on on the channel. They see all these people making little money in their regions and doing well in their, oh, y'all stupid. Y'all doing it wrong. Y'all not counting these miles. You're not counting those miles. Listen, when I go to Walmart in my car, if I walk, walk out the door right now, go in Walmart, I'm not being paid for that. I'm just not, it's my car. It's Walmart. I have to go to Walmart. I'm not trying to be paid for that. It's me using my car to do what I need to be get done. But what these people want to do is they want to know every single mile you log just to find some way to decrease the value in what you're doing. They're not trying to help you out. No, they're trying to justify why they ain't making what you making or they trying to justify why they shit ain't working the way yours is working. So they're trying to pick and, and nitpick at every little thing you do. Oh, well, when you went to Circle K yesterday, you didn't log your miles. Motherfucker, I went to Circle K because I felt like going to Circle K. But still, that's driving. It's a car. That's what you do with it. You drive with it. The difference is we not only drive our cars, we make, we make money with our cars. When it's time to be paid for driving that car, oh, I'm going to get paid for driving that car. If I'm not being paid for driving that car, I'm still going to drive that car. It's a car. So when they hop on my channel, well, and I don't know how many miles you put on last week. You're not saying how many miles. You know what? I could put, I could take a picture of my, my dashboard and show you how many miles I got week pass i could take a picture of my dashboard show you how many i got what up wes and you can adjust and, and figure out what i did that week if you want to but we don't have supervisors in ride share to where we gotta dictate every single well yesterday i went to chick-fil-a yeah that took like four miles then uh today i actually went to walmart and back that was like eight miles yeah okay so that's eight i'm you're not our supervisor you can't sit there and have us like isolate every single individual mile so we do miles that we're paid for. That's what we do, the miles that we're paid for. If you're going to pay me for a job, I want to be paid well for that job. I'm not going to sit around and pick my car apart for somebody on the Internet with a username who I have no idea who this person even is. But you're going to sit up there and, and try to play with numbers to justify what you doing, not what I'm doing, because I'm showing my bank account. I'm showing my I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm generating income because this is what we doing is for for money. So I'm generating income. But yet you get people out here with usernames on YouTube who you have no idea who these people are. They have no idea how to really drive. So they're trying to use what you do to justify what they do or what they with the lack of what they're doing. And I get it. I get it. It sucks to do something wrong for a long time. It sucks to finally find out that you've been doing it wrong. It sucks. Because how do you think I felt? All the times I've been to Tucson, I went to Yuma before, I went to Cottonwood before, I used to go to Fountain Hills. How do you think it feels for me burning all those miles in the past? It sucks knowing that I did all that shit for these apps and it didn't benefit me in any real way. It sucks. 
But when I see somebody doing something the right way, I'm not going to devalue what they do and say, oh, well, I'm still doing nature hikes and I'm still doing long shit. So what you're doing is no. Maybe you should think about what you're doing, analyze what you're doing, break down what you're doing. Don't devalue what somebody else is doing. If you clearly see it working, you clearly see their bank account and it's working. You see their credit score and they paying off shit. It's working. But yet what you doing is not working. So you want to make sure you devalue what they doing so you feel better. No, nah, that shit don't. I see through that shit. I can see through it. You're right. Haters will be haters, Mike, man. And, and they come jumping around to different channels. And they doing something to make themselves feel better about what they're doing or what they're not doing. They want to make themselves feel better. And that's the thing about ride share. Why a lot of people have high AR. Because they are the app always sends them a thank you. Oh, thank you for being a great driver. They feel appreciated because they hear the word. Thank you. Thank you. We don't get appreciated enough in ride share. We don't get appreciated enough. So when they get all these thank yous, thank you for taking 90 trips last week. They're happy as hell because they getting it. Spencer Fred. <laughs> Man. Is it? Yeah, they will learn when they realize that they need to make at least three dollars per mile to see any money for real, Michael, for real, because anything less than that, you're spending your wheels in mud. Real shit. You're spent. That's why I say yeah, I go for at least two dollars a mile minimum to a mile. And then I start getting the seven dollar a mile trips, you know, the twelve dollar a mile trips. And that kind of pulls my average up some. If you're not making at least three dollars a mile, you're not really going to get out of the mud. You're not getting out of the mud. You're doing a lot of miles for nothing. Melly Mel. And certain drivers that have been doing this for a while realize it because they see themselves in the same spot, driving countless hours, countless miles, and they're in the same spot. It's like, dude, how have you been doing this for three, four years? You're in the same spot. You got to wake up at some point and realize this game is about profits, not about hours and you driving nonstop. It's, it can't be about that. That's what the app's like. But as drivers, we don't like that. We need profits. We got bills to pay. We do this for a living. We don't do this because we just want to stay busy. No, we do this for a living. We're trying to make a living. You know, what Daniel say, Daniel said, Jeff, I'm telling you, they were uh, laughing at me all summer because I didn't match their earnings. Y'all they have transmission use on their cars and on rental slavery, Tesla, karma. Yeah, I'm telling you, Daniel, it all catches up. It all catches up. And that's why I, when I talk about, you know, using average earnings and trying to get at least two dollars a mile. But sometimes you go with the higher dollar per mile. It all catches up in the end. But not only on the revenue end, on the expense end, it'll catch up to you. The transmissions, the brakes, the engines, the torn door handles. The more rides you do, the more wear and tear you got. So might as well make the rides count. Make them count. $4 a mile. Make it count. Because I'm not going to be driving around 50 cent a mile all day tearing my car up. Mike already told you already. You need at least $3 a mile to really see any true you know, income. He already told you already. So why are you doing 50 cent a mile rides? It's going to catch up to you at some point. So if you do a 50 cent a mile ride, it better be like you better be like 100 miles from home trying to get home or something weird like that. You just need 50 bucks to in gas to get home. That's the only way I'd ever do that. But to be all day spending 50 cent here, a dollar 10 here, a dollar here, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it in ride share. It's going to catch up to you. You're going to have an engine problem, a transmission problem. You're going to have a brake. You're going to need a repair. And you ain't got no profits to cover that repair while covering your rent your grocery bill, any other bills you got outstanding, because this big repair is a new chunk of money you now got to come up with, and you don't got it because you've never been about the profits. Be about the profits so you can handle this. Uber and Lyft ain't going to teach you business. They're using you to boost their own business. Why would they teach you how to do better business? Because teaching you how to do better business messes with their profit lines. And they're going to say, now we got too many smart people out there knowing how to do ride share. We can't take advantage of these drivers no more. We can't charge somebody $60, $70 and pay them $15 no more. They're not settling for that no more. They're not going to teach you how to do business. So we got to teach each other how to do business, how ride share really works. Yeah, most drivers, they live in a driving is that employee mind. Is is you is that check to check employee mentality? They got it, they spend it, they got it, they spend it. They never have time to stack. Jesse said, use your method this morning, $50 an hour. There you go, Jess. And the thing is, people out there arguing, trying to get $17 an hour. Jesse, you can't survive on $17 an hour. So why would you sit and protest and picket asking for $17 an hour when you can go out and make $50 an hour? You could do that yourself. You don't have to ask these apps for nothing. These apps don't owe you nothing. They don't owe you $17. They don't owe you $15 an hour. They don't even owe you $20 an hour. You can go out and make $50, $60, $70. 
hundred dollars an hour. You can go out and make that yourself. You ain't got to ask these people for nothing. You just got to find the group that supports the type of money you trying to make and say, how do I get this type of money? Do this. Well, my market might not hold that. Well, you might have to mix in some delivery. You might have to mix in some Instacart. You might have to mix in some Spark. But you can make this much per hour. You've got to learn to kick out offers that are not good for what you're trying to do. And if you can't kick out offers that are not good for you, you're going to have a hard time making money. You got to be OK saying no. Be like, nope, doubt it. Can't do it. Not doing it. Nope. You got to be OK with that. And a lot of people feel bad. I tell my fuckers, it's not personal. This is business. I got so much money. I want to make an hour. I don't want to be on the road for so many hours. I want to stop by four or five in the morning. And people are like, well, that's working. Call it what you want to. I could care less. But I know I'm going to leave it about two or three hundred bucks. And I'm probably only going to drive like a hundred miles, maybe. And that's my goal. I don't want to drive more than a hundred miles. I don't want to put all this wear and tear on my car. And next thing you know, I'm sitting around saying, man, I just had to drive a hundred thousand miles just to make ninety thousand bucks. I was making 90 cents a mile all year. I'm not trying to drive no hundred thousand miles. No. If I could drive 30,000, cool. 30,000 at three dollars a mile. Average, like Michael said, three dollars a mile. I'm at ninety thousand dollars. I'm only driving thirty thousand miles, and I somehow made over the course of twelve months ninety thousand dollars because I kept being disciplined and saying I only want to stay around the three dollar a mile mark as close as I can. Look at that. What Melvin says, I just I'm on a miss. Live Lux just did a fourteen seven seventy five for point eight of a mile. Yeah, you get those bangers, man. But I got a funny feeling, man. Uber. Uber X be doing stuff like that to me all the time, too. Uber X be getting me, man. It'd be like $26 for like three miles. They be getting me, man. So if, if Lux don't have a plan, we're all going to be on Uber X scouting the hell out of those rides on that side. And we know we got the high AR people. We got the Spencer Freds. <laughs> Jesse said that shit. Spencer Freds. We, we got the Spencer Freds out there that's going to be running around 100% AR. Give them the shit rides. Feel okay with giving them. The, if they want that shit, give it to them. Give it to him. $14 for 28 miles. Give it to him. Fuck it. You can have it. $20 for 41 miles. Give it to him. They want that. Give it to him. Now, when you get $14 for three miles, that's what you want. That's what you was waiting on. So they on the road. The, the whole time they on the road driving 40 minutes to make $20. They on 40 minutes. They drive around to make 20 bucks. You made probably $30 in the past 25 minutes doing short rides. So you make $30 in the past 25 minutes and then you go sit back where you was chilling by Jack in the Box or whatever. You kicking back. And all of a sudden, another ride pops up. Cool. You do it quick. 20 bucks. Now you done made $50. An hour of time ain't even passed. And you just been chilling. You've been chilling. You done did three rides. You done made 50 bucks on my phone yesterday. I did. I did three rides and I made $63 in three rides. It probably took me a total of 42 minutes to make $63. 42 minutes total time of me just chilling. King James opened up his phone. He made like $72 in two rides. <laughs> That's the kind of competitions we have. Who can do the less amount of rides with, with a reasonable amount of time and make high profits? We profit chasers. We don't go chase. Oh, I'm a diamond driver. We don't do that. I'm on my man's head all the time. Dude, go out there, get that surge. He text, I'm texting him surges from downtown. James, if you downtown, get that surge. Because when I'm pushing him to make more money, it pushes me to make more money. So we pushing each other back and forth. And in the end, we looking at each other's phones like, damn, we doing good, brother. We doing good tonight. And some nights it's like, dude, we ain't got no money. I'll go home with $14. I did one ride, 14 bucks. I've done it. Because when it's crap, it's crap. And it's, it'd be crap. And James, he'll be like, dude, I went home and took a nap. I'll wake up at like three and start early morning. <laughs> I'm like, I know it, man. It's, it's horrible out here. But that's what we do, though. We got to go out there. And what Keith say, I agree, driving at least $2 a mile in the Quest, it averages 4 or $5 a mile or a mile. Thank you. Yeah, Keith. Because I don't see why everybody was arguing and screaming and yelling, I want a dollar a mile. I want to, I'm like, who said that shit? I want a dollar a mile. For what? What reason? Because you got to take into consideration time. You got to take in consideration your actual miles you're driving. All a dollar a mile is not going to cut it. And at minimum, with the prices of gas and, and repair parts and everything like that, he just like like Michael said earlier, it's going to take you at least three dollars. Keith said it. You going you got to drive at least two dollars is minimum. That's what you're looking for. If you get like a dollar seventy five, dollar eighty, dollar ninety, take it. It's close enough. Excuse me, because they're going to throw you a tip. 
And that tip going to push you over the $2 mile. So now you're sitting good. You're like, cool. It was $8 for 13 miles. So I did it. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, $8 or $13 for eight miles. I did it. Then the dude gave me a $5 tip to make it 13. So cool. I'm good. I got my $2 a mile or whatever. I got over $16 for going eight miles. I got over, that tip took me over the top. And that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure you don't get trapped into the cycle of employee mentality of I want at least $17 an hour because that's going to push you to stay busy, 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 busy. Because you're looking at the clock. You're like, oh, man, I, I got to hurry up and get another ride. I got to get $17 an hour. I got to get $19 an hour. Meantime, we kicking them rides out to you. You feel them. You taking all that shit. And we sit around, get a $36 ride for like 17 miles. I'm like, OK, that's the part I'm going downtown Phoenix anyways. So I'll snag the ride from Mesa, 17 miles, thirty six dollars. I'll do it. So now I'm sitting downtown and I'm having a short field, a short trip festival, all short hops, eight dollars for point point eight miles, nine dollars for two miles. I'm downtown just eating them little short rides up because that's what you got to do. Position yourself. That's right. Rob Floyd says, I'm just chilling when I drive. No stress. Just pick the good ones. That's it. And, and Uber and Lyft tells you off the bat, you can't be deactivated for low AR. They tell you that. And we still got drivers in the industry right now running around. Well, if your AR is too low, you could be deactivated. What rock y'all sleeping up under, man? What rock are y'all sleeping up under? We out here really trying to drive, really trying to do this, giving out solid information on, on why people are deactivated, how AR doesn't get you deactivated. And they still walking around. Your AR is so low, you might wake up and be deactivated. No, that's not how it works. You you don't re people be passing bad information back and forth. And that's why they're in the same boats as the people they listen to. Because once you hop into a boat of somebody who's like, hey, you know what? We need to steer this ship differently. Because like I said, when I got on YouTube and I was always going through videos, seeing what people were doing, I was never told how to drive properly. I was told this is how you turn the phone on. You hit the power button. The phone comes on. When you see the Uber word, the net, that means your Uber app is now activated. You are now ready to drive. That's the kind of shit I was watching. And I'm like, who is this? Is this five fucking third graders? Who is this for? <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to make money, man. I got bills to fucking pay. I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> yeah, he says, my AR tanked immediately after upfront pricing came in. Real shit went straight to the ground. Ground. Randy says, are you doing 40-hour weeks? I want to see the outcome. No, I haven't started 40-hour weeks yet. I mean, I'm still cranking out a grand in like 18, 19 hours right now. And for me, that's good because I'm not spending a lot of money to make that grand. And, you know, there's people out there making 1400, 1600, 1700. A couple of weeks ago, I think I made like 1400, but that was because I had those private rides lined up. That kind of got me over the top. But normally I'm running about a grand, 1100 a week. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I mean, there's people have seen weeks where I cranked out 3600, 2700, 2200, but those are high hour weeks also. That's where I'm working 40 hours a week. 52 hours a week. But it's like one week I worked what 51 hours. That's how I made that 3600. I made like work like 51 hours, made $3,600. But I push, push, push. And I'm one of those. And I think it was a uh, online time. I was doing online time when I was doing that. I was running about $80 an hour, $90 an hour. So, but that, and that was my, my book time. I mean, my book time was running around $80 an hour. Online time, you know, I just let it run. I can just have it on. And if nothing good's popping up, I'm not working. I'm just not working right now. I'm a contractor. If the money's not good, we don't take the rides. That's just how it is. They give us that flexibility. If the money's not there, don't take the ride. And too many people, they these drivers, they'll take the rides and they feel that Uber is watching them like a boss, like a supervisor over their shoulder at work. You going to take that ride? I'm going to send you a ride. You better take that ride. It's like, no, nah, man, I ain't taking shit. This is garbage. It's like, no, I'm cool. And so I'll kick that shit out. What up, Nicole? She's in the house, north of the valley. What's good, lady? You out there? Did you do some deliveries today or what? Yeah, driving the wealth real. Sometimes it's easy and the money comes. Sometimes it's not there. Yeah. If it's not there, you got to have that, that discipline to say, I'm going to get this car off the street. I don't want to be carjacked. I don't want some, our car to be hit. It ain't worth it. Let me go park this shit back in the driveway where it's safe. Park it back in the driveway. Can't get car jacked. Car can't get hit. Rock can't chip my windshield. It's, it's sitting in the driveway. The money ain't out there. It's sitting now. I don't got time to, to damage my car for nothing. It better be money out there if I'm going to have this car out this driveway. <laughs> what Mel say? Proudly, I can say my ARs went up to 9%. Yeah, that means nine out of, nine out of 100 rides 
are good in your area. Nine out of a hundred. <laughs> I'm still at like 29%. So 29 rides are good, but it's slowly tanking, man. Cause I was up to 40. It started going and I was going to be way worse. Yeah. That's what it is. Mike, man. AR chasing that silver glow platinum bullshit. And the thing is, Mike, they send me Uber sends me shit all the time. You could be a gold driver. You can make, you know, $300 if you're this, but, and that's what, how they fuck people over. They see that $300, they go, oh, $300. But do you know how many 50 cent a mile rides you got to take just to make 300? I can make $300 like in a night. I don't need you to give me 300. I'm willing to make 300 the smart way. I'm willing to go out and earn 300. You ain't got to give me 300. Give me the opportunity to have good rides to make 300. Just give me the opportunity. Don't give me free money. Because when they give you free money, you got to jump through some stupid ass hoops to get it. You got to take 50 cent a mile rides. You got to take nature hikes. You got to do all this crazy shit just to make the money. Don't give me nothing. Just make sure you give me the opportunity with some good rides, some good surge. Maybe throw a question there. If I hit 20 rides this week, I, I'll get, you know, maybe 40, 50 dollars if I can hit 20 rides. Not that, you know, 20 rides and I'm getting 10 dollars. That ain't worth shit to me. <laughs> it's like, man. Well, Nicholas said, yeah, Jeff, you're the reason I'm still making good money here in Miami. That's good, Nicholas, man. That's good, brother. That's good. I was checking out your uh, video, your driver safety video about how to be safe while uh, Uber driving. I was checking that out this morning when I was cooking breakfast earlier, man. That's a good video, brother. I like that. But yeah, man, like I said, and, and in Florida is one of the hardest markets right now. Florida is really one of the hardest markets. So you really got to let the shit go and you got to just be on it. Be ready to get them, you know, high dollar per mile rides. You got to be on it. And that's why, you know, to be in Florida making good money, that's a testament to how smart of a driver you really are to be in Florida making money because that shit is not easy. You do not have a good market and you eating good. That means you using your brain. You're not letting that app run you ragged. And like I said, some of these markets, L.A., another market, if you're making money in L.A., you're doing good in L.A., you're using your brain. You're not getting chewed up out there. If you're not doing, you know, 90 hours a week, 80 hours a week, man, it's hard, man. It's hard. <laughs> right? Well, I see what he said. Them free hot dogs really get people. <laughs> you can get a free hot dog. Just do 90 rides today in one day. In one day, do 90 rides. You get a free hot dog, man. I started at 4 o'clock in the morning. I went till midnight. Man, they, that hot dog, they even left off my relish. <laughs> I'm mad. Shit, I'm mad the fact that you did 90 rides in a day. <laughs> it's like, damn it, that's impossible. You took all shit rides all day. Like, man, yeah. And that's what it is, man. People got to not fall for that. Like I said, I get stuff to my phone all the time. You know, you got to do this. You get, you can get $300 by, you know, November the 1st. If you hurry up and get your AR up. I'm like, no. Because in order to get my AR up, my bank account is going to like tank because I'm going to be putting a ton of gas in my car. I'm going to be repairing shit all the time, fixing things in about three months from now. So the three hundred dollars I just made, I'm going to have to turn around and give back to a shop or somebody for parts. So it's not it's not worth it to me. Keep the three hundred. Just give me good rides. That's it. Give me good rides. Yeah. Yeah. Nicholas. Hey, thanks, Jeff. I definitely don't chase the rides anymore. I stay super calm and scout. That's what you got to do, man. Just scout the talent. See what's out there in your area. Because there are good rides buried in all the crap. But if they if they send your phone a lot of junk and you take in the junk, you're losing that opportunity cost of saying, I don't want that. Somebody else probably does. They probably need that ride to get to that area. I don't want to go to that area. Sit. Guarantee. It's somebody down the street from you at CVS. And that's going to be $8 for like 1.3 miles. And you're like, dude, he's like a block away from me. Hell yeah, let's do it. That person at CVS waiting. And you're going to have that a much, get that $12. You're going to go less than two miles. You're going to go to them, take them home less than two miles. You got 12 bucks. You at $6 a mile right now and you ain't went nowhere. You just sitting there chilling. Now you could have just took a 23 mile ride, 23 miles. And it gave you like $13, but yet you made $12 in like less than two miles. You don't got to go 23 miles to make $12. You can go two miles to make $12. So sit and chill and relax and know the money's going to be there, but you got to have that discipline, that patience to be like, I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm cool. Somebody else might want that. And a lot of drivers, you know, they, they see how we drive. And they, oh, you're stupid. You're the, We're feeding our whole community. We ain't stupid. If you think those are really good rides and I'm kicking them out, you should be happy because some family is eating if you think those are really good rides. Because if I'm eating and you see what I'm doing with my income and I'm doing well with my income and I'm kicking out all these rides, that means and you think those are good rides I'm kicking out, everybody's eating. 
So the logic and people being upset at us kicking out rides makes no sense. That shit don't make no sense to me. You're upset at me because I'm giving another family income to eat because you think those are good rides. Because if you think those are shit rides, then you'd agree that I should be kicking them out. You'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't take them either. But my income is doing okay. For the hours I'm working, it's doing okay. I wish I could make more. I wish I could make like 1500 1600 a week, but 1000 a week is good. I'm cool with that. But to kick out those rides to other families who might want those rides or need those rides, I mean, how can anybody complain? How can another driver complain? That's the shit that cracks me up. I complain at the app for sending me that shit. But another driver says, you should have took that. I gave it to another family so they can eat. Fuck that family. You should have took that. Don't worry about them. You worry about you. See, that's why we don't fuck with drivers like that. We do something totally different. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm going to feed that family because I'm not trying to go to Scottsdale right now. No. Somebody else is. Somebody's like, man, I just need to ride to Scottsdale. That's it. I just need to ride to Scottsdale. Guess what? I just kick one out. Because I'm trying to go to Gilbert. I'm going in the opposite direction. And I go south. They go north. Everybody's happy. But yet you'll find somebody on, on the channel. Oh, you stupid. You guys are wasting so much time not taking those rides. That's money. You could have had that money. They have no idea. I'm like, motherfucker, show me your bank account. Show me what you sitting on. Because if you driving that way, I guarantee you're not making what a lot of us are. You're not. Not with the profit margins we're sitting on. You don't sit around and, and take, oh, what up, Drew? Drew said, what up, man? I don't know how these my notifications don't come through for these zoo. I My notifications are completely blank on my phone, completely blank. I can open up my notifications. It's just a black screen right there that says some text in the middle. YouTube is doing something right now. They had an update that screwed up the whole system. I have no notifications in my phone, none. So I have to like go through my laptop and I got to go through stuff because my Uber app, I mean, my YouTube app, it don't work right. So I have to go through my laptop for YouTube now. They did something to the app. Yeah, man. As Jesse said, Jeff, thoughts on a married couple arguing in the car. I had one on Saturday. <laughs> I tell them, let the window down because y'all breath stank. Fuck that shit. <laughs> you argue all you want. Let me play my music. You let the windows down. Your breath stank. I get y'all motherfuckers some Mentos here, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit argue all you want just don't ask me a question what is your opinion driver They're like listen writer i don't get into nobody's shit y'all can argue all y'all want to i'm listening to some kendrick lamar right now here's another mentos your breath stink <laughs> it's like man <laughs> this is spencer chris and sergio sabotage notification <laughs> Spencer Fred, Chris, they, they fuck with my notifications. You don't have any notifications. I'm like, fuck it. That's less problems I got to deal with, I guess. I don't fucking know YouTube. Get your shit together. They're like, let's fuck his account up. Yeah, probably. I know somebody out there dealing with my account. Somebody's fucking with my channel. I don't care. It's like, you know, I'm going to always get the word out. Always get the word. And drivers are always going to come to where they know they can celebrate their success. And a lot of channels won't let us celebrate our success. Because if we come in and go, oh, man. I just made $190 in three hours driving today, man. I had a great day. Oh, well, you're probably going to need a new door handle after the day anyways, and, and your fucking tie rods are going to explode and your muffler's is going to drop off. Like, dude, I only drove like maybe like 70, 80 miles to make the 180, 190. I only drove like 80 miles. Well, that, that means that your, your car, your oil's going back. It's like we can't celebrate shit on other channels. It's like, come on, can't you just be happy for a motherfucker? Come on, man. <laughs> Tony says, Ryder, we need your help. Paw Patrol on the road. <laughs> what up, Tony? Driven dead. And that's what it is, man. It's like, I, I always wanted that channel where people can celebrate even working on a car. People will fix something on the car and we like, yeah, you did it, man. You took that risk. You went out there. You did it. Appreciate it. I'm proud of you for just even going out there and trying because a lot of people don't even try. So we celebrate those things. So on the ride share side, we celebrate the financial gains. We celebrate the gains where somebody feels like appreciated for doing what they do. Because like I said, drivers don't get appreciated. We get talked down upon. We get devalued. We get you know told that we ain't doing nothing. We low skill. We get told that all the time. So to have a channel that actually celebrates us as drivers and that hangs out as drivers I mean, it's it's a different it's a different way to do ride share because we've had a very competitive market to where drivers didn't even like drivers. They'll sit there and be fake to you all the fucking time, but yet they hating your success. They behind closed doors hating on you succeeding, but yet they in your face. Hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 hey. Then turn all oh, that motherfucker. That motherfucker really what? Man, man, get get the fuck out of my face with that, man. You can't do that. What the best be rise? Hi from Santa Barbara, the XL Comfort. Woo, you got the big one out there. 
Uh oh, PWN says the new surge map for Uber is going to be shit. Some drivers already seeing the update. I haven't seen it yet on my phone. We still got numbers on our phones. We still got numbers. So it's like, yeah. Man, what Jesse say sounds like the Uber and Lyft chat room. And they always criticize on there and hate. Yeah, that's why, you know, and when I was on Facebook, I got into one, uh, I got into a delivery, I think an Uber East chat. I lasted there for like maybe two weeks. Because I just, I couldn't understand how all these people didn't like each other. They didn't even know each other. But none of these people liked each other. And I would come in and say, hey, man, this is what we're looking at. I got some analysis about, you know, how to break down, you know, time and that. Oh, we don't need that shit. I said, you know what? Fuck you, motherfuckers. I walked into the wrong room. Unfollow. I got out that room quick as a motherfucker. Fuck them people. It's like, nah, y'all ain't gonna do me like that. And now, you know, I'm on my own YouTube channel. We're actually helping people. We're doing something. We're seeing progress. We're seeing people eating. We're seeing people do well. We're seeing people go, hey, you know what, man? I was struggling, you know? I was barely clipping, you know, 500, 600 a week, barely clipping 5, 600 a week. Now, you know, I've doubled that. I'm making 1,200, 1,300 a week. I've doubled that, and my miles have went down. That's the shit we like over here. We like that. We don't hate on that. We love that. A lot of channels hate that shit. Well, you know, your time might be down or your miles might be down. They always got some negative shit to say. They can't just say, you know what, man, I'm happy you're not struggling, man. I'm happy you're not struggling. That They mouth can't even form that fucking sentence. I'm happy you're not struggling, man. I'm so happy you're not struggling. It's like these motherfuckers want to see you struggle because they can't figure out what they doing. And I'm like, why would you want to see somebody struggle? It's like, you wouldn't want to see somebody like do okay, like do well, like, you know, be able to say, I'm going to take the day off so I can run to my kid's recital and I'm going to go to a soccer game. And I know I can go do the soccer game because yesterday I was banking $60 an hour all day. So I could take, you know, a few hours off today to go do that. I'm happy for that. That's the kind of life we got. It's right. You don't got to ask nobody to take off. You schedule when you take off. Yeah, Rob Flo, that's it. They're haters, man. That's why they're just haters. And it makes no sense why somebody would be upset at someone achieving a goal they set. If I say, this is my goal, I would want to do this. Anybody around you, and it's a beneficial goal. My goal is never, oh, my goal today is to make sure four drivers wreck their fucking car. That's my goal today. I need to make sure four drivers wreck their car. That's not my goal. My goal is I want to make sure I can make this much today. I, that's my goal. You always got somebody going to hate on that goal. I want to do this with my YouTube channel. I want to do this with driving. I want to do this with my front yard. I might want to do this with my car today. I want to, you know, try to, but instead, they hate on that shit. That type of energy in ride share is such a cancer. It was, it's always been a cancer. When I first started my channel, I'll be like, man, this shit's a cancer. I can't stand these haters, man. Go get a real job. I'm like, well, this is real money. It, pay, it pays real bills. So if you want to say it's a fake job, that makes you the idiot because you work in a real job and somebody with a fake job is doing better than you. So you the idiot. <laughs> it's like, I'm not. I'm the one working a fake job, paying real shit, doing okay. So you making yourself sound bad, in my opinion. You ain't even got a real job, but I'm living better than you. That's That fucking sucks, don't it? That sucks. So I kind of shut that shit down. You know, don't, don't be on my channel like that because we got drivers over here that's really trying to, you know, pay for shit, really trying to cover bills, really trying to pay arrears, get out of the hole in certain debt and stuff like We got actual humans doing this shit. And these are a bunch of characters all over online, a bunch of characters just want to come around and mess with somebody they see doing well. It's like, we don't do that over here. We don't do that. So if you're going to walk into this room, understand where you at. Like you said, what, what Jesse say is a barbecue. Yeah, you just walked into somebody's family barbecue. You walk into somebody's family barbecue talking shit about the macaroni and cheese. You don't even know these people. You talking shit about the macaroni and cheese. Who made this nasty ass macaroni and cheese? Man, who the fuck are you? Where'd you come from? You ain't even in this family. Who are you? You just walked up into somebody's barbecue talking shit about something. It's like, you don't do that. And, and especially on YouTube, you never see me just jump on people's channel. And instantly start berating and barraging random people. I don't know how that family operate. I don't know these people. So I walk onto a channel and I look around. I look through the comments. I listen to the, uh, the commentator. I make sure I know where I'm at. Because I don't want to step out of place at somebody else's barbecue. I don't do that shit. So I sit there and I look around. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. I see how this is going. All right. Y'all motherfuckers hate this. You hate that. You hate people with foreign cars. You like people with American cars. I see how the flow is going. I got a BMW. Let me excuse myself from this fucking table. But I don't jump in. Oh, well, I got a BMW and all you American car owners are a bunch of idiots and you motherfuckers are stupid. Y'all, I don't, that, that's not my barbecue. I get the fuck out of there. I get out of there. And that's how I operate on YouTube. I operate on YouTube like it's my real life. It's like because I'm a real person. 
And one day I got to account for all the shit I say and all the shit I see. You got a lot of fake motherfuckers on YouTube. I don't got to be fake. When you see me, this is what you get in public or real life. This is what you get. So when, I, when I'm on my channel and I'm talking to people and I'm trying to help people out, I do the same shit in real life. I don't just help people online or hate on people online, then help them in real life. No, I'm parallel. Both My online life looks just like my real life, just like it. What Vision One say, hey, brother, God bless you. The hustle is real. Don't let them get to you. The garbage man tossing these rods. Yeah, Vision One, man. Hey, they be trying. But that's what they do, Vision. When, when people see somebody succeeding in a way that they can't succeed, they hate on that capability because they say, why can't I do that? Why is that person can do that, but I can't do that? Why can that driver do that, but I can't do that? But instead of them looking at themselves in their situation and trying to get some education from it and, and try to break down their own marketing and the logic behind everything, they just hate on what they don't understand. They just hate on it. Well, I don't understand it. I don't know. You ain't got to understand it. You ain't got to understand it. But you can sit back. You can observe it. You can look at it. You can try to get some of the education from behind it, then apply it to a situation you in. But instead of doing that, they just shut it down. Hate on. No, it's my way or no way. My way or no way. But they way ain't working, though. And they won't even wake up to say, my way ain't working. Let me change up a little bit. As I tell you right now, when I was driving, even with the Jeep, like people couldn't understand. Why was I getting rid of that Jeep? And man, a Jeep gets you good tips, man. A Jeep, man, a Jeep runs 220 miles for a full tank. 220 miles is like $90 in gas. When 220 miles in this car is like maybe 30 in gas. So I'm like, that's a $60 per tank variance. So I do that 10 times. I just lost 600 bucks. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to go spend money to park the Jeep to get something that's way more economic for ride share. And that's how a lot of people, you know, they stay stuck on stupid and keep doing the same thing over and over, getting the same result, not wondering, why can't I get out of this mud? Sometimes you got to switch shit up. Gas prices was going through the roof. I had to switch it up. The Jeep was cool. I still drive the Jeep. I was in it yesterday when I met Juan Vargas. Now, I still drive it. I just don't drive it for ride share because it's not conducive to profits. If I'm trying to make profits, then I'm like, hey, I got to do something that's profitable. Profits ain't gonna, you can't just generate profits out of thin air. You got to create a way, a system to make profits because the apps are doing it on their end. They're not telling how to do it on our end. We're figuring out on our end how to create profit. We're doing that over here. Man, James says, I'll finally use your Paw Patrol technique. Thanks for the education. <laughs> My man Stanley Jenkins came up with the Paw Patrol. I used to call it Uber Petty, call that shit Paw Patrol. We'd be out rolling like a motherfucker. Like, hey, Paw Patrol, skirt. I'd be hitting them corners, boy. I'll be on that shit. I need to put a light on top with a dog ear, dog ears on the side of my truck. Paw Patrol. <laughs> and hey, that shit, it'll keep them, it'll keep all them, them damn offers from hitting your phone nonstop, taking you away from the surge, throwing you off. Nope. Put that shit on Paw Patrol. Cruise on in. Snag it. Okay, hurry up. Bloop, bloop. Go right back to UberX. Let's get some money. <laughs> I do that shit all the time. And you see people in the little gigging with Buddha. Time to wrap the cars black. Man, I swear, man. All the Jeff, Jeff, have you got the Jeep rubber ducks? Yeah, I got them. Hey, I got a, a rubber duck the other night when I was actually at Popeye's. So if you look at the video that I did, the last video I just did yesterday, if you look at the Popeye's chicken box, next to it is a duck. Somebody put that duck on my Jeep while I was in Popeye's. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Rob Flo said, Jeff, you're the Uber pet whisperer. I'm telling you, man, that Uber pet works. It works. I'm going to have to give me a shirt that just says Uber pet. Yeah, I know. that's the duck I got. Somebody put that orange duck on my Jeep when I was in Popeye's with like a little card. The card's in the Jeep right now. Man, I did 600 last week on Lyft and 17 hours of driving. Is that low or high? 17 hours of driving. 16, let me see if you do, let's say 40. No, that's over $40 an hour. You do a good, that's about $40 an hour almost. Almost 40 bucks an hour. So that's not bad, actually. That's not bad. I would say that's a good week. That's a that's a normal good week. 17 hours for six, 600 bucks. I could do that. I could see that. Because usually if you did, let's say, $20 an hour, that would be $350. So 40 will be 700. So you're just under, you know, 40 hours right there. So it's not bad, especially depending on your market. If your market can actually make more than that, Wayne, then you can probably start pushing for at least 40 to 45, seeing if you can like kind of kick out some of those low end rides and be like, okay, I'm gonna kick out the low end rides and do some, some higher rides. 
could also be tips. Could also be tips. Because, you know, we ain't getting a lot of our tips. Funny, on, on Uber, I'm getting a lot of tips now. Lyft, same thing. It's like, damn it, damn it. <laughs> Say, Paw Patrol, we be riding the sheep dog from the Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I know it, Melvin. The big sheep dog when it jumped the hill and the ears flopped. Man, that shit was funny as hell. The the van jumped the hill and the ears flopped up. I was like, dude, this movie is stupid. <laughs> Wait, Forerunner, you said no more Paw Patrol in Dallas Fort Worth area. Wait, what did they do with it? So you guys don't have any Uber pet at all in Dallas Fort Worth. Oh man, is you gotta you gotta go through your app, man, and figure out what else you can, maybe you can have like liquor delivery. Go through your app and see if you can find like liquor delivery on there and install the liquor delivery button. That way, if you hit that, maybe it'll just freeze your app up. <laughs> so you no know dollar numbers. Yeah. I, what yeah, because like I said, with Paw Patrol out here, daytime is crazy with, with Paw Patrol. A lot of people move their pets in the daytime. At night, nobody's doing it, so it's easy for me to use. I could jam with it at night. What Drew said, Drew said, I use Paw Patrol along with the destination filter to tether me in the surge areas. During ACL Fest in Austin, I was getting one or two ride, mile rides for $20, $30. Shit was nice. That's what it is, man. And that's what I did when I hit that concert and I was using that, that filter. I had lift, I had Lux on with the filter because I don't have it on Uber. I don't have my filter on Uber. But it kept me within that area, man. You stay in that surge area and just go berserk. Just keep eating on that surge, man. Just keep feeding on that shit over and over. $10, $9, $13, all free money. Just keep eating on that surge. A lot of people was like, ooh, a ride to Scottsdale. They would take that nature hike all the way to Scottsdale, but it was no surge. They would leave the concert area, be like, ooh, $40 for, you know, 19 miles. I'm taking it. Cool, it's $2 a mile, but you can make $40 in two rides. It's going to take you like maybe 15 minutes. Like you said, you're doing one or two mile rides, 20, 30 bucks. So you got to weigh the event, the event versus you taking me away from the event. Every situation is different. And ride share drivers know, you know, when to like stay in an area, when to stay put and, and get all that free money versus saying, OK, it ain't nothing here. I've ate it. it the surge is gone. I'm going to take this forty dollars, you know, for this 19 miles. Now I'll do it now. You got to wait to the end to get out of there. Because too many people in the beginning, and that's why Uber and Lyft in the beginning, they send nothing but nature hikes. They're trying to get everybody out of there because they don't want people feeding on the free money. It's like a shark frenzy. They know all the drivers are coming from all areas. So they, as soon as they get there, they give them a nature hike. They get in and get them out. That way, that driver only gets free money once. Because by the time they get back, the free money is either gone or completely depleted. So I stay in that area. I just feed, man. I'm, in the, I'm like you, brother. I'd stay in the same area just circling, getting as much free money as I can. $15 surge, $13. It's going down $9, $8, $7.50, then back up to $10. I'd be killing that surge. <laughs> it's like, do not nature hike out of the surge, man. Nope, don't nature hike away from a surge. Wait till it's, you know, when the event is dead, traffic is starting to open up, people are done getting rides. You don't see a lot of people with phones out. Now you can get your nature hike out of there to another busy area. Take that, you know, $1.50, $2, $3 ride out of there. Then you say, okay, cool. I fed all I could feed. Now let's go to another area and see if I can do it over there too. Then that's how you capitalize. A lot of how AR drivers, they don't have that, that intellect to say, I'm going to kick out all these rides and stay put. No, they just take whatever they get, they take. It could be 32 miles north. They taking it. Now they way up in Happy Valley, New River area. There's no rides up there. So they did one ride, $45 for 30 miles. And they sitting way up in the middle of nowhere. And we down here, you know, they made the 45 we're making, like I said, I'm at the Drake concert, I made 153 in an hour and a half, $153 in an hour and a half, eating on the same surge over and over, just eating on it. The Beyonce concert, I tried that shit the first night, I had to shut the app down. I made $0 at Beyonce the first night because I shut the app down and left. It got too crazy for me. I went back the next night, I made like $90 in an hour, something crazy like that in the next night. So I, I figured it out. So the second night I went to Beyonce concert, I did a lot better than the first night. But you've got it. Like I said, it's it's always a game. And sometimes when I know I don't feel like this is for me, I shut the app down and I get out of there. It's not for me because my energy wasn't there. The traffic was crazy. I was locked in the parking lot. I was already upset. There was no amount of money that was going to buy me out of being pissed off that night. So I said, this is not a night I can drive. So I didn't drive the first night of Beyonce. I just shut it down, took my ass home. And I was looking for a ride to get me home, but I couldn't get so I just went home with my own gas, my own music, listening to some Kendrick, whatever. I was man, I had to get out of there. But a driver that drives and knows 
will do stuff like that. Yeah, what Vision One say is is uh, elevation to the next level is key. When lift doesn't pay well, having another skill is crucial. When I run into drivers, I tell them to learn trade futures. Nice side money when things are slow. Yeah, like I said, and that's I tell people ain't nothing legal gambling. That's all it is, legal gambling. You got pe the same people that say I ain't doing no damn stock market shit. I ain't doing no stock market shit. They walking into a casino. I'm like, dude, what do you think you're doing? All you doing right now, you're doing you're when you walk into a casino, you're playing the stock market in, in real time. You putting a bet out, hoping to get money back. That's all you're doing. What do you think the stock market is? You putting money in hoping to get money. It's just slower. The stock market is just slower. That's all it is. It's gambling. It's just legal gambling. So it cracks me up when I see people in the casino, but they don't want to learn how to do like, you know, stocks and bonds and trades and shit. No, man, that's, I ain't doing that shit. That, that shit will take my money. As they walk in the casino, pulling a motherfucking slot machine. That shit will take my money. <laughs> they fucking yanking on the goddamn fucking playing goddamn poker. That shit will take my money. I ain't doing no goddamn stock market. <laughs> God damn it. I had two aces. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what do you think you doing it's like dude every game every person in the casino should be learning stocks right now you're like what it's just gambling that's all it is yeah oh drew says sometimes Kruber be, be blocking a destination filter should be pissing me off see that they probably blocking mine because i'm like why don't i have it but everybody else got and you got low ar like i got low ar how come i can't get a destination filter on damn uber man jeez <laughs> So, yeah, on Sunday night during the ACL, N was uh, hit shorties with big surges, then got $20 ride home towards the end when the surge was dying. Yep. Because, see, Drew, you know how to work the app. And, and that's why I tell people, on this channel, we got a lot of smart-ass drivers that, that say exactly what they're doing. And then you got drivers, oh, I ain't telling nobody what I'm doing. I'm keeping my money. I ain't telling them. Drew, you ain't, str you ain't struggling. You getting $20 to $30 rides. You ain't struggling. And you telling people exactly what you do in the markets you in and how you doing it. And through doing that, you're creating a discipline for yourself because it's kind of like, let's say somebody wanted to work out every day and they go, oh, man, I'm going to go to the gym today. I'm going to go hit chest. I'm going to go do back. And they say it every day. It forces them to do what they say. It's like you're affirming who you are and what you do. And it's creating you to be a better person that's going to the gym every day because you saying you're doing it and you going out and you're doing it. You telling people you're doing it. And so when they see the results of it in a the month, they say, OK, cool. I feel like more physically fit. I feel stronger. I'm, you know, I'm 15, 20 pounds heavier on this now. I'm 30 pounds heavier on that now. That means and it's right here the same way. When we come on this channel, we talking about things and we're discussing what we do, how we do. There is no secret to where I'm thinking it's going to help me more than it's going to help anybody else. Because I might tell somebody something and in their market, it don't even work. It's like, dude, it don't work in my market. But at least I'm saying it because you might want to try it one day. It might work one day. It might not. Just like you talking about how surges works. So when surges work like that and we got more drivers doing it like that, the apps have no choice but to lift fares up if they want to get shit moving. They have no other choice because they're like, why are all these drivers driving the same? They're all declining the same rides. Bump the price up. Because we know the, the rider is paying $20 for it. So why are we giving a driver $8 for it? Well, bump the price up to $12. See who takes it. You bump it up to $12. Now somebody takes it. That's how we work the apps down. But as long as somebody keep taking it at $8, they're going to keep paying $8. And these high AR drivers aren't getting it. If they keep paying 8 and you keep taking 8 why would they automatically just move it up to be nice to you? No. The apps are going to make profits. If you keep taking it, they're going to keep giving it because they won't get profits, too, just like you. The only way that rates and fares will go up is if we just stop taking the shit just flat off the bat. Nope. It's got to be at least this much per mile. It's got to be at least this much per minute. It's got to be at least this much during this event. The apps will be like these people are not getting no rides whatsoever. We got a whole bank of people not getting rides. Well, they're 50 cent a mile rides. Well, move that shit up to a dollar a mile. See if anybody takes it. Double the price. Nope. <laughs> Mike Fanna, you silly brother. Thank you for the super chat, brother. He said, from Spencer with love. Man, fuck Spencer Fred. Where he at? <laughs> Spencer Fred got to make a guest appearance on the channel one day. He just got to jump on and just say hi. That's it. Just hi. So we can rag on his ass for about a good hour. <laughs> Spencer Fred, he just jump in the chat one day and go, I see you, motherfucker. That's all he need to say. I see you, motherfucker. <laughs> And from there, we can just rag on him for another week. <laughs> Fucking Spencer Fred. 
<laughs> that dude, man, I swear to God. <laughs> See, that's the thing, man. Spencer Fred, he just disappeared. He came in to talk shit and just disappeared. He ain't been back since. That motherfucker, I still got to make my shirt to say Spencer Fred. I still got to do that shit. Jesse, he said, the Uber pet really does work. Jeff, a big time thank you to you and your show. Oh, no problem, brother. Like I said, this ain't even the show, man. This is the barbecue. You can say thank you for hosting the barbecue. <laughs> Everybody sitting around in the car eating barbecue, eating red beans and rice. Like, hell yeah, we at the barbecue right now. What uh, Tony said, there's also a variable we could tell people the exact strategy, but if they ain't professional, <laughs> that's funny shit. They won't get it right, right, Tony. They got to be professional with two V's in that shit, man. Stop ordering shit from overseas. Get get Stop getting shit off of Wish. That's my problem. I probably got that shit from Wish. <laughs> that damn microphone. <laughs> Man, goddamn lift servers and my microphone both came off a of wish. What up, Bartan, my brother? Yeah, and that's what it is, Tony. We could tell people, like you said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. That shit is so much like that in ride share. People can see the results that a lot of these drivers are having. It ain't just me. So many drivers are having the same results. I mean, I get emails all the time from people, man. I mean, they're getting $27 three miles. I'm like, that's crazy money, crazy. And we got people out there arguing, I want a dollar a mile. I want a dollar a mile. One day I'm going to go through my email and I'm going to pull all the rides that everybody, and I'm going to put their name on the rides. And y'all going to see what people out there are really making. I just got to get it out of my, my email. I probably got to screenshot it and then get it out. That's what I'll do. No, I could just download it. I can download it out of Gmail, apply the name to it, so and just do a whole video of what's happening out in Rideshare with these rides. Because I think people don't believe us, man. They don't believe us. You're not getting a dollar a mile. You're not really getting $2 a mile. Bro, I get emails, people getting like $36, four miles, $27, two, three miles. I get emails all. I'm just like, this shit's crazy. And that shit hypes me up. It keeps me in the car looking for that. And I'm like, come on, man, I could do it. I'll get some, you know, $15, three. Like I got the ride the other day, $13. Then I got a surge on it. A six dollar surge, so it should have been 19, but Uber gave me 17 because they increased my service fee. So I had a 13.99 ride for like two miles, and then I had a six dollar surge on it. It was gonna make it 19.99. They gave me 17 dollars and some change because they jacked my service fee up. <laughs> Say, oh three, how do you get reservations on Uber? They just pop up on my phone. I never I one day I just opened it and it was reservations in there. I get them all the time. And because there are no drivers out at early morning, people want to hurry and reserve all their airport runs to make sure they got an airport ride. So I love that because I live by all the hotels that service Terminal 4. And so I'm always just like, bam, bam, bam. You know, I'll get up. Give me the 330. Give me the 4. I'll take the 430. I'll take the 515. Then I'll take, you know, the 630. Then I'll take a 7. Seven's the latest. Because at 7, you got the flatbed trucks out. The box trucks are out. The buses are running. School buses is out. Everybody's up from work. Seven o'clock is my cutoff. That's the absolute latest. And I did one the other day. And in nine miles, I went over this with Juan Vargas last night when I was showing him nine miles. Usually in nine miles, it'll probably take me about, I don't know, 12, 13 minutes to go nine miles. It took me like 28 minutes to go nine miles. That's morning traffic. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ, it took me like half an hour to go nine. But I got like $36 or something for it for the trip. But it still took me like 28 minutes. And I'm like, damn, man, this is crazy. Thank you, Vision One. Smash that like button. <laughs> That's what YouTubers be saying. Smash that like button. I think I'm going to make a shirt to say that. Sh I'll be making shirts all the time. Because me, I'll just order a ton of black shirts off of YouTube, like a whole lot of them. And then I'll just start making myself shirts. I'll order some gray ones. I'll make a couple of gray ones. And I'll be like, smash that like button. <laughs> man, that shit's funny. Yeah, Vision One says people need to stop taking a thirty dollar promo for forty rides over the weekend, screwing themselves. Yeah, I always hit the lowest number, whatever the lowest is, I'll do it because I don't chase that shit. I don't do enough rides to chase them. I'm not doing no seventy rides a weekend. I'm not doing no fifty rides a weekend. If I could do forty rides a weekend or thirty, let's say I do thirty, and my average ride could be twenty dollars, that's six hundred bucks I can make over a weekend. All I need to find is thirty. That's fifteen rides a day at twenty dollars a ride, and that's tip and surge and everything. If I can get an average of twenty dollars, all I need is six hundred bucks a weekend. Because if you can make six hundred bucks a weekend, make four hundred dollars during the week, doing little short trips, you know, here and there, use about a quarter tank of gas. You only filling up once every three days, so sixty, seventy dollars in gas is gonna last me like three, four days. 
And then on the weekend, I use a tank of gas probably because I'm trying to do like heavier rides. So you're only using two tanks of gas. So I'll spend like $100, $120 in gas. And I usually when I'm done, I still got like more than a quarter of a tank. So I'm using maybe around about $100 worth of gas to make about 1100 bucks. So I'm 10 X in my gas money. I mean, it's like, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. And like, is it, we got to stop doing them promo chasing them promos. It's not worth it. You're going to give me $20 to do 40 rides, $40 worth for no, because I'm going to have to do a lot of fucking crazy rides to do that. And I'd rather not. I'd rather keep my rides low, keep the profit margins high, stack money like that. Them promos and them quests are for suckers, man. It's a sucker bet. And if, when it was used to be 500, it was good. 400 it was 900 800 for 70 rides that shit was good that was ten dollars a ride it's worth it to add ten dollars to every ride it's worth it but when you add 50 cents a ride a dollar a ride it ain't worth it it's like dude forget that i can get a tip <laughs> and that's why they giving you these dollar tips telling you hey the most you're going to get is a dollar tip shit i'll get like 10 bucks and y'all just stealing nine of it and giving me a dollar that's what it is what Drew say? Drew said, I reject almost everything under $1.75 a mile. Only take a dollar mile to position myself to make more money or to go home. Yep. That's the and that's the play. That's a smart play. You know, and and people who drive, we know about position. And a lot of the new drivers that come into the game, they think that they're working for Lyft and they work for Uber. Like, well, they're sending me rides, so I got to take the rides because they sent it to me. No, you don't have to do that. If, if they send you a ride to Cottonwood two hours up the highway, giving you $75 to drive for two hours, that's four hours you're making $75 because you got to go up there and you got to come back. Trust me. When I first started driving Uber, I did that shit in the Jeep. And I got about $120 total to go four hours. I went up there and I went back. And the gas I used was probably about $50, $60 worth of gas to do that shit. So I made like $60 in four hours is what I profited. I didn't have YouTube channels telling me that that shit was bad. I just had channels like, hey, man, go for the biggest rides you can go for. Go for them bangers. $120 banger. It's like, is no such thing as a $120 banger. Because if they're paying you $120 to drive from Phoenix to fucking Chicago, that's not a $120 banger. It's just $120. The banger is in the details. That's where the banger is. I want a $3 a mile banger, $4, $10 a mile banger. That's where the banger is. So all these people, oh, man, I had an $80 banger. Okay, cool. How far you drive? 97 miles. That ain't a fucking banger then. <laughs> it's like, dude, you you were mistaken. That is not a banger. Sorry, dog. That's not a banger. And that's what we were told earlier when I first started watching YouTube that bangers were dollar amounts. Bangers are not dollar amounts. Bangers are details. How much you getting per mile? How much is that going to net per hour if you did like two or three of those? How much are you getting per hour? Shit, King James, he was running what? $200 an hour the other day? Something crazy like that. 200 bucks an hour. Because he was taking these crazy ass bangers, like high miles, I mean, low miles, high dollar amounts. To me, those are bangers. I'd rather somebody get, you know, $15 for two miles. To me, that's a banger. $15 for two miles, a banger. I like that. $12 for three miles. That to me is a banger. That's a banger. But somebody say, yeah, man, I got $40 banger. How many miles you go? 36. <laughs> it's like, that's not a banger, dog. Sorry, that's not a banger. <laughs> 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 Melly Mel said a dollar per mile of bangers for Spencer Fred. I got a $300, $300 banger. Where'd you go? 300 miles? Motherfucker, wait to be. So you drove 600 miles total for 300 bucks. That ain't a banger. <laughs> they be killing me with them fucking bangers. Dude, look at this banger. Fucking $55. Damn, 55 bucks. How many miles you drive? 65. That's not a banger, dog. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mike Penn, I got it, man. I got it. Now, see, the thing is, is I haven't is in the kitchen right now because I, I got to cut my uh, my cord so it's short enough to wrap around the thing. But the way my seat sits, I got to scoop my I got to lean my seat farther forward because it's kind of hangling dangling. <laughs> That's a duster bus. <laughs> Get the dust off your app. Fifty five dollars for 60 miles is a duster bus. <laughs> Shit ain't a bank. <laughs> These motherfuckers look like look like the charcoal that uh, charcoal powder all over them and shit. They walking out the house like I got a banger. No, nah, motherfucker, that's a duster buster. You ain't got no banger. <laughs> I'm at to put that shit in the video. Next time I get one of them rides like showing up on the screen, I'm gonna put the dusty dude next to a duster buster. <laughs> you don't want that ride. What up, Roger? Lisa, she's in the building. Yeah, Drew, I was like that man. Man, used to do 70 ride quests, $400 or more. Man, I remember those days. We was making two Gs a week easy back then. I mean, we was working 35 hours. 
because all the money was in the was in the bonus. All the money was sitting in the bonus. All you had to do was hit it. I was throwing Uber Eats. I did twenty two hundred dollars in Uber Eats one time in less than 40 hours. And they took away my Uber X. They said that I was only Uber Eats. So I'm like, I couldn't get no bonuses on Uber X. They call me an Uber Eats driver. One dude said, because you did way too many Uber Eats to hit that bonus, Uber X got mad and said, you're now declared as a delivery driver, not as an Uber driver. Because you have to do more Uber X than you do Uber Eats. I'm like, well, they never told me that shit. <laughs> I just ran the shit out of that motherfucker. I was like, damn, I'm doing like double stacks, triple stacks. I'm doing McDonald's delivery. I'm shit, man. I made 2,200 bucks in like 35, 40 hours. They was mad as hell. Yeah. About eighty hundred, eight hundred thousand because of those quests. Eight hundred in a day. Drew made eight hundred in one day because of those. Hey, I tell people if you can hit that second tier, that's where the money's at. When it be like your last ten rides or twenty rides, knock that shit off in a day. Because in those twenty rides, you gonna get like an extra hundred and fifty dollars or something crazy like that. Get an extra hundred and fifty for doing twenty rides in one day. So that's a lot because you gonna already knock off, you know, at least three, four hundred in that day. Then you get that. That's four fifty five hundred dollars right there in a day, man. It we them quests used to be good. Now shit, I be seeing twenty dollars on the screen, fifty dollars on the screen. Man, forget that. Hey, what Connor say? He says, "Hey, do you think extra comfort will kick at kicking at midnight and it's bye bye Lux?" I don't know, Connor man. I'm gonna be out tonight. I'm gonna be out tonight. Ron was just asking that you going out tonight, Jeff, at the live stream. Yeah, I'm going out after the live stream. So I'm gonna be recording, and it's gonna be in, in real time what happens, man. So hopefully, you know. When the 18th hits, that that comfort pops up on my screen or anything Lux pops up that I want to see how this is going to work, because I guarantee, man, it's if if it doesn't work how they expect it to work, surge is going to go through the roof. Even Juan Vargas was saying this. The surge on Lyft is going to now start matching the surge on Uber, because if they take away Lux and no drivers are doing anything, they've got to push the surge up. So I think that's the only way they can compensate for it. When Lux is gone and all the drivers jump over to UberX or just stop driving all together on Lyft, they've got up. It's going to be $8 surges, $9 surges when it used to be two fifty, three fifty, because they've got to find a way to get drivers. They've got to find it. And I think tonight at midnight, it's, it's going to be good for a lot of us night drivers to see how this really works in real time. Because I guarantee if this shit drops through the floor and I start getting a bunch of requests, 12 miles, you know, for four or $5, nope. Doubt it. Do a live feed on the road tonight. No, nah, I really don't do live. Man, I got a $200 phone, man. My $200 phone can't do no live feed. This motherfucker probably explode on my dashboard. <laughs> this is a, this a motherfucker Samsung A32. That's it. I got to let me clean the screen off. Yeah, this motherfucker Samsung A32. It, it's got like, I think, 30 gigs, 30 gig hard drive. Then I got a 100 gig sd card in there so i move everything over to my sd card because this motherfucker is not a new phone i fuck around live feed this shit and you see some nasty shit hitting my phone like hey we're getting communications from some alien on mars now that's that motherfucker samsung a32 oh ragged ass phone somebody actually owns one <laughs> it's like me you're interfering with our satellite transmissions please turn that shit off <laughs> i can't do a live feed from that ragged ass phone <laughs> Motherfucker, my whole Uber app shut down on me and shit. I'd be in the middle of a ride that motherfucker just shut down. Be like, what happened? Man. Yeah, I'll get a new phone one day. That phone's a couple of years old. But Samsung A32 is actually a pretty good phone. Real shit, it's a really good phone. I bought this phone a couple of years ago. And like I said, the, the pictures are amazing. I will post pictures on Instagram and shit like that. People are like, dude, what kind of camera are you using? I'm like, that's the phone. Dude, I'll be in the desert taking pictures. They be like, dude, these pictures are like crazy. I'm like, yeah, the fucking the camera is amazing. Like the pixels and everything, the way you can edit them, make them look, man, these cameras, the photos look amazing. The videos look amazing, but just the speed is not there. The, it, it hangs up. So I got to hit airplane mode every once in a while, just to make sure everything's working and shit. I hit airplane mode. Then I'll hit it again. Make sure everything's like working. Like I said, it, it probably need to be updated. It's 5g. It's 5g, but it's not like the good, the newer Samsungs and the newer phones is out, man. It, it's crazy. It's these phones are like they're they're computers. They're they're basically work computers in your hand. You can make a million dollars with these phones, man. You can do million dollars worth of transactions and shit with these new phones. These phones are crazy. You can do stocks while you're doing stocks. You can be doing live feed shit. You could be doing recording this. You could be doing banking, moving shit around all on like the same screens. These phones is like more powerful than my laptop. And they be selling for like 14, 1500 bucks. But the thing is, you know. 
a new phone, if you get a fourteen, fifteen hundred dollar phone and you want to do business on a beach, you could do it on a beach now. You could run your office from a beach with one of these new phones. My phone ain't at that level, but if I got a new phone, you could sit anywhere you want in the world and run a multi million dollar business from these new telephones. So fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars is a really good investment if you're doing multiple things with it. And, and like I say, I get it, man. I get it. That's why I think phones are so expensive. It's giving you that, that ability to be remote. You can hotspot from it, live stream. You can do a lot of shit from that phone that has got so much speed, so much RAM and so much storage. You can basically work from anywhere in the world. But it seems like you could have a backdrop saying you're in L.A., but your ass is sitting in Tibet. You riding a motherfucking yak. Your ass in Tibet riding a yak. They're like, dude, what you doing, man? Oh, I'm just sitting at home, dog. Motherfucker, what the fuck is that sound? Big ass yak. But the phone makes you think like you're at home. It's like, dude, your phone is fucking sick, man. I'm into bet riding yaks right now, motherfucker. <laughs> it's like, Android sucks. iPhone is the bomb. I don't know, man. I had, I had fucking <laughs> say, Jim, Uber Camel. <laughs> exactly, motherfucker. I'm riding Uber Camel right now, motherfucker. Man, that phone crystal clear. What are you doing? I'm riding Uber Camel. <laughs> No, man, I don't know. I, I know Android too well to go to iPhone now. iPhone, I'll have to start slow. I'd have to go back. Cause like I have an iPhone 6S. It was my son's old phone, but it's in the car. So I would have to go get an iPhone and kind of like learn how to work that shit. Learn what it can and can't do before you just throw me a motherfucking iPhone 13, 14. Dude, that's like, that's like putting somebody with a brand new license in a Hellcat. <laughs> I just got my license today. I just got you a fucking Hellcat red eye. That's your birthday gift. Yeah, that kid will be dead later today. <laughs> you give me a motherfucking iPhone. Where's Jeff? We ain't seen that motherfucker in a few days. I'm like wandering around a desert and shit. The navigation went out. <laughs> Fuck that. You ain't buying me no fucking Hellcat red eye iPhone 18. Hell no. Like start me to fuck off. Give me a motherfucking Ford Ranger. I need the iPhone 6S. I need a Ford Ranger. <laughs> The fold, he said, I got the fold five. Yeah. See, that's the thing, man. I like those phones with the dual screens that you can open and you can do like multiple things on it. I'm telling you, man, these phones nowadays, I'm I like look at them on the screens. I see people using them, and I'm like, dude, there's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can like hot spot and have something else running, like your laptop running. Why are you doing stuff on your phone? You can run an office from the beach through a telephone. That shit is crazy. Y'all got to understand, man. I'm 50. I'm from that era of the motherfucker super, super long phone cord that stretched from the kitchen all the way to the living room so you can sit on a couch and talk to somebody. I remember that shit. And the phone cord would be all twisted around and you have to untwist it and you get your sister to hold it and everybody's like untwisting the phone because the phone cord is like 25 feet long. <laughs> oh, see, he fuck with me. I thought it was an iPhone 18 out. Man, he's fucking with me. <laughs> I don't know how many iPhones is out. <laughs> He's in there fucking with me, man. <laughs> I thought it was really an 18 now. See, man, you're going to have me fucking telling people, hey, you got that new 18? They're be like, what? The iPhone 18, my buddy Mike, we talking about getting one. They're going to be laughing like a motherfucker. Like, what is this? this dude said he getting the iPhone 18? <laughs> He's like, see, don't listen to Mike. This motherfucker have you fucking getting oil changes on the Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's the iphone time machine it's like dude don't don't mess with mike mike is out there screwing with people man <laughs> this motherfucker had me up in at&t yeah I'm, I'm trying to trade this in for that iphone 18 everybody turn around and just look at me look you hear this motherfucker <laughs> they're like you know my buddy mike penna man he said they're like yeah we kind of got a few people in here uh saying mike penna told them about the iphone 18 the motherfuckers ain't even created yet <laughs> <laughs> it's like that goddamn Mike. You're gonna have a whole line, a customer service line, just with Mike Penna's name over it. If you talk to Mike Penna, come stand in this line over here so we can bring you up to speed. <laughs> you go to Jiffy Lube, they got the same Mike Penna line right there. It was like, man, <laughs> he said, said, friends like me you don't need no enemies. Hey, you be doing them videos. You know how they be having a girls walk in the buildings asking for shit? <laughs> then the girl come back out of the car and she'd be like, Why'd you do that to me? <laughs> That's the shit Mike Benner be doing to people. Hey, go in there and ask him for this. <laughs> I need some muffler barons. Motherfucker, come back out. Why'd you have me go in there? You made me look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mike Penna. Don't don't listen to him. 
That motherfucker's tricky. Make them come in there with you, Mike. You got to come with me. No, nah, man. You go. You go. No, nah, you got to come with me. <laughs> uh, this is Melvin does what I do. He says, hey, I get my oil change my Tesla every 3,000 miles. She has an oil trail. All, all you got is oil in the trunk. Like, dude, this oil all in the trunk. Where'd you pour it? There's no, no dipstick, man. It's like oil all in the trunk and shit. Mike told me they needed an oil change. So we just poured oil all in the fucking trunk. <laughs> Blinker fluid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. Mike's nuts. He's nuts. This dude, he, <laughs> he be coming in with his specials. His Jiffy Loop Tesla specials all the time. It's like, man, one day I'm going to take a picture of a Tesla sitting in front of a fucking Jiffy Lou. <laughs> this is guy right here. He listened to Mike on the Internet. <laughs> He's in here for the oil change. I'm in here for that uh, Mike Pena oil change. Fucking shit. <laughs> oh, Logan, Logan. Well, he said, hey, Jeff, we rode you down in Phoenix. I had a blast. Back then you had the Jeep. Made our night. Thank you for being you. Oh, Logan, appreciate that, brother. Appreciate it. Oh, I still got the Jeep, man. It's still sitting outside. Yeah, hey, next time y'all come back to Phoenix, man, hit me up, brother. Hit me up. Cause like I said, I can we can still roll the Jeep. I don't have it on the platforms right now. I got the top off actually. So if you guys come out during the fall or the winter, Logan, I got you. Hit me up, brother. I got you. We'll have to hit up. We'll have to go up and down mill in it with the system blast. And I'll let y'all get on the intercom. I was doing the intercom last night for Juan Vargas. <laughs> let y'all get on the intercom and cuss people out on the curb. Be like, hey, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, Logan, that's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Thank you for coming to the chat. We don't get riders that often in here, man. So I'm glad, you know, you actually a rider that rode in the Jeep. So you rode with the old school version when I used to roll a Jeep all the time. So I got the Beamer now. So yeah, you come back out. We'll we'll do an old school ride. We'll do a Jeep ride, brother. I miss rolling that big. I, I use it for errands all the time. Now I need to put it back on the platform, but gas is just way too much. I can't do it. Uh-oh. What Noble say, will black Tesla still be under Lux Black? I don't, I think they're only taking away Lux, but I think they're keeping Lux Black. I think they are keeping Lux Black. I think they're doing that. But Lux definitely is, is leaving. Anybody who don't have a black car, we're going to be... Because they got to keep a premier option on Lux to compete with Uber's premier options. So they might still have Lux Black on there. I just think they're getting rid of just the Lux, period. Lux cars are gone. So... Uh oh, Shuggy Shug, new driver from Boston. Should I sign up for ride share insurance? Your truth, common sense is addicted, and you're funny, <laughs> crusty, dusty, raggedy motherfuckers. It's hilarious, but true. Love it. Thank you. Definitely get, I would get ride share insurance because this is why I have ride share insurance on my policy. Because if you were to, anything was to happen and you don't have ride share insurance and your company finds out you were doing ride share, they don't even have to insure you for nothing. They'll be like, well, you never told us you were doing ride share with it, so we ain't going to insure you on anything. Now you're out of pocket. Now you got a car you're still paying on. I mean, pay the extra like $13 to $18 a month, something like that. I don't know what it is. But for me, I think it was like $14 extra dollars a month I'm paying for ride share insurance because I go through um traveler's insurance. And I might be switching because I pay $470 a month for all my cars, $470 a month insurance. Now, this month coming up, they're charging me 500 with the new policy. So I'm looking for new insurance because I ain't paying no 500 a month for all these cars. Fuck that. No. And I was just telling Juan Vargas, man, that I was paying for two motorcycles on my motorcycle, motorcycle insurance because I never took my son's bike off. I gave him a bike a couple of years ago. So for two years, I've been paying over $240 every year for his motorcycle because I just forgot to take it off. So I took it off yesterday. My insurance dropped from like four sixty a year down like to two hundred a year. I'm like, so I've been paying for this motorcycle the whole time and never took it off the insurance. <laughs> it's like, damn it, why did I think of that? Oh yeah, Logan says, yeah, I came here because we spoke with you about your old finance career and you intrigued me with doing Uber. Up where I live, there isn't as much demand, but I might do it as a side gig, weekends only. Definitely, Logan. Hey, and that's the thing, man. If you're only doing it as a side gig on weekends, you can make some really good money with it. I mean, just think if you make an extra $150, $200 a weekend, that's $800 a month. So you could be making 800 bucks a month doing like maybe a quarter tank of gas a weekend, quarter tank, half a tank of gas a weekend. And it's easy, man. It's easy. And even if the man ain't there, you can help create demand. And I'm going to tell you how you do that. You don't take crap rides. If they're sending you a bunch of, uh, crap like dollar a mile 50 cent a mile don't even take that shit sit back relax guarantee at some point the demand for rides are going to increase so much they're going to throw surge out there three dollar and fifty cent five dollars they're going to throw something out there 
Get that surge. Like, look at how you can trap it with Uber Pet. Get that surge. And now you can take that ride that was a dollar a mile. And it's, it was like maybe six miles. So now you got a $9 ride for, you know, it's a six mile ride for $9.50. But the person might tip you $5. So now you got $14 for a six mile ride. Now you got your $2 a mile you was waiting on. You just had to wait and create it. Because a lot of times if you just take it, they're going to keep giving it to you. So don't take what they give you. Create the demand. That's why we tell people just log off. Don't be sitting at the airport with your apps on. Help create demand. Because if the apps and the algorithm says, because the algorithm is, is binary, it thinks in ones and zeros. If it sees way too many cars online, then it has to make a choice not to send surge. That's the, the one zero correlation. It'll say this many cars online equals no surge. This many cars online with this many rides coming in equals surge needs to be applied. So it's reading code. So if everybody was to get offline, the code will automatically say we need to get drivers to that area as soon. And that's why a lot of us, when we do concerts, we're sitting at the concert with our apps off. Nobody has their app on at the concerts. We're looking at stuff sometimes like I'll turn it on to look at it and I'll hear them turn it back off because they'll start sending me crap. But the surge builds because nobody's online. Everybody's just walking around, talking to each other, waiting to see the surge pop up on the screen. We're creating demand. Because if we all just sat online, the app would read the code and go, hey, you know, what? we have enough drivers in the area to meet the demand. There's no surge necessary. We want to create demand. So we go do nobody get online, sit around, make the algorithm think nobody's here. All of a sudden, nine dollar surge. Then it goes ten dollar and it goes 15. And it goes twenty five. dollars. The surge just keeps going up because we're creating. There's too many calls flooding the system. And the algorithm is like, we need drivers in this area. What can we do to get drivers in this area? What can we get to do to get drivers to take these rides? That's how it works, man. So would you be a new to ride share? You're going to you're going to have a it's going to be testy for a while. But you just got to believe in the system man. just believe in the system and say there's a way that demand is created. Supply and demand is how surge works and is how fares work. If you keep taking shit, fares are going to keep giving them to you. They're going to say, well, apparently the, the equilibrium that's reached. Is, is perfect. The supply and the demand, he's taking those rides at that price point. So apparently that's a good price point. But if you say, I don't like rides at that price point, they're going to move the price point up because demand is still going up. Supply is going down. So they're going to have to keep moving that price point until it comes to a new equilibrium. It might be $2 a mile, might be $3 a mile. But if you keep taking it at a dollar a mile, the algorithm thinks the, the equilibrium is at a dollar a mile because everybody's taking it at a dollar a mile. So everything's fine. It's like, you got to make the algorithm think. The equilibrium is off. You need to move it because the demand is not being met. The supply of rides coming in, the supply of drivers, they're not meeting up. So it's like it's just messing with the algorithm, man, trying to figure it out, trying to, you know, get their computer to see something different. Uh Oh, Chris D says no more Lux or preferred for me. Today was the last day for me. Uh oh, yeah, it's only 545 right now. So I still got about another six hours. Let's see what happens when midnight's hit. And Shepherd Brothers said, hey, what do you recommend? I'm on the old way. Uber pays where it does not give you in, an upfront fare. Shepherd, when I used to do that, when I used to only have that kind of uh, fare, I used to go post up in areas where I knew it was going to be short rides and very busy. That's when I used to do a lot of Scottsdale because Scottsdale is a big party area. Everybody was doing short rides back to the condos, apartments in the areas, back to the timeshares and, and the Airbnbs. So I would always post up in an area where I knew it would be short rides. If you go far away and you get longer rides, I mean, you're at you're at the risk of of having some serious nature hikes. So you got to like get to an area like a downtown area, restaurants, a lot of hotels in the area, events, everybody doing real short rides. And a lot of times I would tell people, you know, talk to your rider, talk to them, let them know, hey, I just I swiped it on and it says I'm going 37 miles. I can tell you right now. I may have to cancel this because 37 miles is a long way and I might not be able to, you know, get a ride back or whatever. They might say, hey, you know, what? we'll give you, you know, $30 cash right now. $30 cash on top of that. Cool. Cool. Let's go. Let's go. And that's sometimes you got to talk to your rider sometimes. Just let them know it might be a ride I can't facilitate because it's kind of far out. No. -uh. What do I don't say? I had ride share insurance extra 189 in Michigan. And since I had a passenger, my insurance didn't cover. Uh check policy my crash was catastrophic drunk drove into me at 140 damn man your insurance should have went through subrogation to get that paid for logan says true true great advice i'm going to try it again with your methods i need to get on lift so i can go back and forth our city is 80,000 people should have some demand i would think yeah 80,000 you could do something with 80,000 
I go to some pretty small towns out here that don't even have 80,000 and I do all their like restaurant areas in their bar at, like Gilbert Chandler. It's not 80,000 people, but I do all those little short areas, all those little short trips. And I get pretty, I get some pretty good rides out of there. So you might be able, be able to get something going, brother. Yeah, let me see. In my market, Lyft is going to beg me back. <laughs> Chris, these are, they're going to beg me to come back. Oh, a lot of people are giving like these huge bonuses too to get them to come back. And I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that. No, they don't. They don't give me the good bonuses. They don't. JQ, nobody says turn off your app while you are currently completing another trip. It's unsafe to deal with while driving. It will also increase demand if you are not online. Yep. We talk about that a lot. JQ, smart play right there. That's a smart play. We talk about using stop requests and last ride. I always go to lip. I hit last ride because if you don't, and we say it like this. If you don't hit last ride, Uber is notorious for this shit. They're going to keep sending you rides as you're driving because you're going to be by a surge when you get to the drop off. Now, if you lose stop new request, you use stop new request. You hit that. When you drop the person off, they get out the car. You see right around the corner, $13 surge right around the corner. Now, you would have never got that $13 surge if you didn't use stop new request because they would have linked you up with another ride. No surge applied at all. And you would have drove away from that surge, not knowing it was sitting there waiting on you. Always use last ride and stop new requests because, like I said, it's it's you're losing money. You're losing opportunity when you keep letting them stack rides on your queue. You're losing opportunity. Yeah, Uber should have covered you because you have passengers. Yeah, driven Tony's right, man. They should have covered you, and your insurance could have went through subrogation because your insurance company could have went through subrogation to get the money from Uber and for Lyft to cover everything. Because subrogation is when two insurance companies talk back and forth. One is going to pay like your insurance company would have covered everything, but would have went through subrogation to get their money back. They would have started fighting another insurance company. You didn't have to fight anything. Like when I got rear-ended in the Jeep, all I did was tell my insurance company, hey, I got rear-ended in my Jeep. It was like, okay. I was like, well, this is what it costs to fix it. Okay. So they went through, they gave me the money. My insurance company paid me. Then they had to go fight the other insurance company to get all the money back. I even got my um my deductible. They even fought and got me my deductible back. So subrogation is when two insurance companies fight. Your insurance company should cover everything, and they got to go after Uber and go after the other insurance companies like that guy's, yours, and everybody else's. But you should be free and clear of it all. Look up subrogation, man, and, and tell your insurance companies you know shit like that. Be like, dude, I know how subrogation works. You guys need to pay me because they don't want to pay claims. No insurance company wants to pay claims. But when you start speaking like you know how insurance works, they go, OK, so this dude's been through this shit before. This ain't his first rodeo. I know how subrogation works. You guys need to cut me a check. Y'all need to go chase these people for the money. I don't need to be chasing those insurance companies. I'm a, I'm a policy holder with y'all. So if I hold a policy with y'all, y'all need to go fight for me because I'm paying y'all a policy every month to cover my shit. Y'all cover it. Even though it's not my fault, y'all still got to pay me as my insurance company. And y'all need to go get y'all money from that insurance company subrogation that's how it works and so i've never had to deal with another insurance company they hit my shit i just call my insurance be like hey y'all gotta cut me a check somebody hit my shit okay give us their insurance give them all the information this and that all right send them all the the information they cut you a check it's a done deal you don't got to worry about nothing if they want the money back they got to go chase the insurance company subrogation <laughs> <clears throat> What JQ says, don't turn off your app. Just stop accepting trips while already completing one to uh, encourage um, surge. Yeah, well, that thing is, we don't turn off the app. You just hit stop new request. When you hit stop new request, it automatically sends you offline when that ride ends. So you can't stop new requests and stop rides and still have your app on at the same time. You can't do that. It's, it's impossible. If you use last ride and you use stop new request, your app automatically goes off when you hit end ride. You can't undo that. So that's why I always say you stop new request. It's going to your app automatically goes off. It's, it's not your control. You can't say, hey, stop last ride, but don't turn your app off. That's beyond your control. When you use last ride and stop new request, you have essentially turned your app off when that ride ends. It happens. That's how the app is set up. So I don't know what you mean by saying don't turn your app off. Just stop accepting trips. That's not possible. You can't do that. The app will go off on its own automatically. So as soon as you hit stop new request, you end the ride. The app turns off. You see where all the surge is. You can put it on Uber Pet or whatever. Turn your app back on. Go hurry up and get the surge. Do whatever you want to do. But the app's going to automatically turn it off. It's like, man. Let's see. Uh, uh, Lyft removed their insured, uninsured of March 2020. Uber is 50K. 
what lift removed their under uninsured underinsured margin but they probably didn't they probably removed that insurance policy but they sure didn't remove the charges we getting for it because we get that that comes out of our money i guarantee it does say so connor says lift really messed up getting rid of lux in vegas is definitely not dead here did 250 on it yesterday in four hours yeah they we get lux rides all the time Juan Vargas did like 29. I did like 19. It was crazy, like in a weekend. So I know the rides are there. So they saying, oh, there's no request. Oh, there's request. There's request. Yeah, on Uber, I turned it to Paw Patrol while on the ride to stop the new request. You could do that too. You could do that too. On Lyft, I don't have anything. All I got is like Lyft. I have to do last ride on Lyft. I don't have Paw Patrol. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> like, shoot. Yeah. Say so go to legal ride share lawyers about that accident. They could probably help. Yeah, I would because they you're in a situation where it was if you had passengers, you were covered. Somebody was covering you in that. You were doing work for somebody. You were being contracted at the time. So, yep. And what uh, Uber Lyft said, yo, Jeff, I did just some Lux rides. Super sad to see it go. All oh, Uber Lyft, Nick, man. Hey, I got a funny feeling that it's not going to be a lot of Lux rides out there, but it's going to be a whole bunch of Venmo cash app rides going <laughs> I tell you that much. There's gonna be a lot of vent because I'm gonna be like, listen, you got four motherfuckers, y'all trying to go 13 miles. This is what I charge to go that far. I charge like $45. Okay, bet, bet. That's what we're gonna do. Thanks, Uber Lift Nick. My man, my man. He's like this. He's got the super chat with the hands bumping. What's up? I like that. Appreciate the super chat, brother. The Nux. Give me some Nux, brother. That's what's up. <laughs> what Logan say? Logan said, hey, Jeff, I watch you a decent amount of your videos, and I know you do mostly nights. Have you tried days, and was the money as good? In Phoenix, days are hard for me. When I used to do days when I first started, I would start sometimes about, you know, noon, 1 p.m. A lot of traffic, moving slow, the ability I can't U-turn. If I go into a parking lot, I probably can't come back out as fast. So traffic really, it, it keeps you in an inefficient manner. I mean, there's crazy surge in the daytime. That's the one thing about it. There's crazy surge. And I've always said, you can look at some of my videos, brother. I always said day drivers should be paid more than night drivers because day drivers have to deal with way more shit and they get slowed down a lot more than night drivers. We're very efficient at night. We can make more money because we can move faster. Day drivers, the rates should be higher for people to drive in the day than at night because we're going to make our money at night. You can't have day drivers on the same pay system as night drivers. The shit ain't fair. Because day drivers get stuck behind buses, they get stuck behind cargo vans, trucks. These apps are not understanding how rideshare really works. Day drivers should be able to make the same amount of money we make at night. You got to pay them more because I could do four or five rides in an hour, like at night. Four or five in an hour, I could do. I've done it before. Daytime, you ain't doing that many in an hour. So therefore, your rides need to pay you more. So if you can only do two rides an hour, you should be paid the equivalent of what we can get paid in five hours. Because there's no balance. There's no balance there. It forces people not to want to drive days, which is why it's surging like crazy all day, because nobody wants to deal with all that traffic. Day drivers need to be paid more for day rates. It that shit just don't make sense to me. Why they using the same rates at night and day? It that shit don't it don't balance. It just doesn't balance. I don't like that. I just don't like it. Yeah. Sugar said, Thank you. One day we'll love to have you meet and greet and everyone and share their passenger stories. Oh, uh, we'd have fun. Oh, uh, Logan, like I said, Logan, he's rolled with me before. He's rolled with me. And I'd be having some great rides. We'd be laughing, cracking up, bumping music. We'd be having a good time. I tell the apps be getting on my last damn nerves with some of the shit they be pulling with, you know, having pickup pins in different locations and all over, have your U-turning and shit, giving you stuff on the other side of the highway should be irritating me. But when I actually get a ride with somebody, and and like Logan, and we have a great time. We, you know, trade information, and everything else like that. That's what keeps me driving. The apps don't keep me driving. It's people like Logan. That's who keeps me driving. Because if it was up to the apps, I'd be like, man, fuck that. I ain't doing this shit. Luckily, you get good people like Logan coming in and we have a great time. And it's like, ooh, I need another ride like that. That shit's good for your soul. It's just good for you. And you go, all right, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's do this shit again. Let's find another good ride. And that's what I do. I want to be paid well. I'm going to have a good time while I'm at it. And a lot of times, that's how I works out. You can hear my videos. I'll be like, oh, man, that shit was cool. That last ride was cool. And that's what I love about ride share, the people, not the apps. Fuck these apps. I don't care about these apps. Oh, ragged ass, Oscar the Grouch ass apps. But the people who are requesting the rides, the people you meet, man, we have a good time. We have a great time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what Drew say, especially during rush hour, these apps pay shitty to sit in traffic. And that's the thing, man. They... 
if the apps actually understood how rideshare worked and how traffic made a huge, huge difference in pay, the day rates would automatically switch right after rush hour is done. Then the rates should go back to night rates. Day rates from from I think about 730, 8 o'clock in the morning, all the way till 5 p.m. There should be this thing called day rate. Day rate is for the day drivers who deserve to make the same amount of money we make at night because we can move a lot faster. Without day rates, it it's hard to make money. I've tried days, man. It's hard to move around because you got trapped. You sitting at one light for two, two turns because there's so much traffic sitting there at night. It ain't nobody at the light. I can run that motherfucker and get to where I'm trying to go to quick because there's not another car in a mile in any direction. So I can just go and I mean on busy streets. I'll be sitting at the most busiest intersection of the world with no car a mile in any direction. So I could just go through that shit. I'm like, I see cops do it all the time, too. I'm like, man, fuck this. I'm, I ain't waiting here. Ain't nobody out here. I'm in the middle of Gilbert, middle of nowhere. It's like you can see a goddamn coyote and shit run across the street. That's it. It's me and some fucking coyote. Nobody else. But in the daytime, I mean, you three, four lights deep, three, four lights deep. Drivers need to be paid for that shit. You cannot sit there and have these people working days at the same rates because they're going to go broke they're not going to have the profit margins we have at night and therefore you got two certain sets of drivers you're going to have some day drivers struggling like a motherfucker and night drivers eating everybody gotta eat they need to pay day drivers more man i've tried to drive days i went out there and done it and that shit sucks the money's not right the money's not right and these apps need to come up with a way to say okay we need to have two sets of rates if you're going to be a night driver we're going to do these sets of rates. Be okay with this. Day driver, this is what you guys get. Cool. Perfect. Because most day drivers got kids. So they got to be at home at night with their kids. They got three, four kids. You know, during the daytime, the kids are at school so they can go to, you know, drive while the kids are at school. They got four mouths to feed. They get four mouths to feed on these shitty ass rates. But we go out at night and when they're home with their kids and they just, you know, we're making three, four hundred dollars in a night doing events and concerts and symphonies and all this shit bars. And and these motherfuckers barely made one hundred and thirty dollars working days because the most they could ink out was, you know, 15 rides at less than, you know, ten dollars a ride. They did, you know, nine dollars a ride or some shit. They make it 120, 130 a day. That shit to me ain't fair. That shit ain't fair because they deserve to, to be able to make a life to pay for those kids that are sitting in school. They can only work days. That's it. They can't work nights. So they need to make money. And I'm like, man, apps, they don't got it right. They don't have the shit balanced out right. But these motherfuckers at apps, man. Oh, thank you, Adolphus, my brother. That's my man, Adolphus, right there. Adolphus Jeffries. Brother, you are on fire. Man, I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it, brother. Real talk, my man. Adolphus, we go back and forth all the time, man. And, and Adolphus, he's a great guy. This dude, he wants to do something for the, the military out in his area. He wants to give them, like, you know, gifts for their service and stuff like that. So it... I've been really thinking about how I can help you out, Adolphus, because I like that idea. You got some great ideas, man. You got some great ideas. So we're going we gonna to chat, man. We're going to go back and forth through emails. We're going to figure out how to get your plan to come to fruition. We're going to figure it out. We just need to get some stuff together, but we're going to figure it out, brother. What JQ says, Serge at Rysher got turned on several accounts in one location and watch the offers come in. The Hertz rentals were receiving sometimes significantly less. Oh, yeah, Hertz, get, they get way less. Because they can do that. They can force them to take less because Hertz renters have to do at least 30 rides. If you have to do at least 30, they got you by the balls. That's just what it is. You don't have any option. You have no freedom. So if you're doing, you know, you got to do at least 30 rides, you down to the wire. They can give you 30 shit fares. You got to take it because you got to keep the car. That's what you got to do. Whereas somebody like me who don't rent, I can kick rides out. I can do 19 rides a week and be okay if I can make it, you know, $20, $30 a ride. I'm making almost $600 off those 20, $30, uh, 20, 30 rides or whatever. I'm making almost 600 bucks. So I'm cool. But a renter has to take the shit rides and they know they got them by the balls and they do that. They push them to take these bad rides. And again, most renters, they're out in the daytime. And I know this because I'll see them like in the morning. It's like when I'm coming home in the morning and I'm coming down priest, I see all the Teslas, the day driver Teslas all charging up. They're all sitting out there at the machines, the whole rows taken up and they're charging. So I know these are day drivers in these rentals. I know that. So I'm like, man, and they're they're going to be grinding themselves into the ground in these rentals, taking shit rates all day long. And I'm sitting there like if if the apps aren't seeing the, the imbalance, 
And not only what the apps are taking from us each ride, there this is a huge imbalance in what they're taking from us each ride, but an imbalance in the pay based on I, I bet they look at night drivers and they go, man, night drivers make a lot of fucking money, man. These night drivers, because we got events. We got events. We can do, you know, concerts and get, you know, $20 surges, $30 surges, plus a tip on top of that. We're doing $60 for like 12 miles. We're getting $5 a mile on a whole lot of trips. Day drivers rarely get that. They don't get that. But they still out there every damn day in worse traffic than what we in. Way worse traffic than what we in. And they get treated like shit by the apps. Day drivers, it should be like, if you're a day driver, you can only go between these hours and these hours. You should get these type of surges, these type of bonuses. And at the end of the week, get this type of bonus to compensate for what you don't get from the night drivers. That's it. That's it. And that's how you balance out ride share. You got to look at all the drivers. And that means my phone is probably locked up to where I can't get online in the daytime. Because if I classify myself as a night driver, Jeff, your, your app only works between 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. That's it. Your app doesn't work anytime in the middle because you're classified as a night driver and you get night pay on your app. Anybody who's classified as a day driver, your app works between these hours. That's it. I'm like, I, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Because then you can switch when like the big events come like waste management and all that. I can send in a request say, hey, I want to be day driver for, white, for waste management. I want to do days because days is when shit's really jumping. And they give you that option maybe. But with, with anybody just being able to log on off and on at any time, you can flood the, the apps, saturate the markets. You can drown out fucking profits from other drivers and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I'm working tonight. It's only six o'clock right now. You can drown out profits from all the other drivers and, and our day drivers, all of our brothers and sisters out there in the daytime driving, they get starved out of the opportunities to make the same amount of money we make doing events and all that at night. And I, like I said, that, that shit to me, it's, it ain't fair. It's an imbalance. And me being a night driver, I'm not a greedy driver. I tell people, I give money to people all the time. I'm always like, hey, here's a good ride for you. Here's a $45 ride. Here's a $60 ride because, it's, you know, for 40 miles that way, I'm not going 40 miles that way. I had a, it was a, think of one time it was like an 80 or 90 dollar ride going way out to the west in the hills somewhere 50 miles out west into the hills i can't because i got to turn around and come back and it would be less than a dollar a mile because i would go 50 miles this way 50 miles back 85 dollars is not enough for me so i'm like i would just kick it out to somebody because somebody lives out in the hills that way and i would give that money to them because I'm not a greedy driver. I believe if we look at all driver situations, not just our own situation, it will force us to have a sense of humanity and be like, you know what? This guy has, you know, three kids, four kids. He can't work nights. I can work nights. You know, if there's any possibility of getting bonuses or structures like that, leave. I mean, I wake up sometimes in the daytime. The whole map is red in Phoenix. The entire map is red in Phoenix. Why don't I turn my phone on? Because I work nights. I'm not going to go out there and starve out day drivers. I don't turn my phone on in the daytime. People be asking me about shit. I'm already, my brain don't even work to turn my phone on in the daytime. I'll get up sometimes and King James is like, oh man, I'm going to get out today for a little bit, this and that, because he has some shit he has to do at night. I'll turn my app on. The whole map is red. I'm looking to see if I got any tips overnight, if there's any reservations popping up, this and that. Whole map is red. My car don't leave the driveway. Because there's drivers out there who need that money more than I need it. There's drivers out there who don't have events they're going to be able to work tonight. They can't work the Jonas Brother concert, the Drake concert. They got kids at home. So that's my time to go out and make the money. Let them have the day money. Because the, it don't come often. That shit don't come often for them. Day drivers, they're sitting behind fucking trucks. They're sitting at trains. They don't run trains at night because trains at night go, hur, hur, and it fucks up the whole neighborhood. Wakes everybody up. So trains run in the daytime. So you got Uber drivers sitting behind trains all fucking day. Just like, man, I can't even go nowhere. I'm sitting behind this fucking train. They miss an opportunity to get served. They wait on the damn train to go through. They got buses every fucking where. Day driving is rugged. It's rugged on people. That's right, Adolphus. Forget the tear. Just do basic math. And it'll make sense. And, and there's so many people forgetting that, that basic math of, and that's why when I'm talking about day drivers versus night drivers, the math has to make sense for why certain people make profits and certain people don't. In certain communities, like up in Sun City, everybody's like 55 years old and up. They're not out all night partying. So night driving in Sun City, you ain't making no fucking money. Day driving in Sun City, you taking everybody to doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, friends' houses, bingo games, shuffleboard games, cricket games. You taking people everywhere because most older people don't drive. They rather have a driver. So Sun City daytime's booming, surging everything up there. 
Nighttime, it's dead. So I'm down here in Tempe. I'm in Gilbert. I'm in Chandler because there's more younger crowds. You got to know the whole market, understand how it all works. And then you can't have that sense of greed. Understand there are some day drivers out there. And I'll tell them, go up to Glendale, go to Peoria, go to Sun City if you're in the daytime. There's people up there that need it. I'm helping them understand where the drive, where the rides are. Because when I drove the Jeep when I first started, I did days. I would have to drive the Jeep on big ass 35s trying to help people get up in this big ass Jeep. I had to get steps that I had to buy steps that drop down when you open the doors and raise back up when you close the doors because people couldn't climb in my Jeep. So I had to go spend sixteen hundred dollars just to get people up in my fucking Jeep. It was too tall. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was doing everything I could to, to help myself be a better driver. I was investing deeply into this, just like I invested into this Beamer and now these motherfuckers taking Lux away. Shit irritates me. Because we really take this shit serious. I wasn't just telling people, well, if you can't get in, I'm going to leave your ass on the curb. No, I said, damn, people are having a hard time to get in. How can I do this? When talk to a Jeep store. Jeep stores, you can get Ant Research steps. What's Ant Research? They're automatic steps that drop down when you open the door. They fold up when you close the door. I need those. 1600 bucks. Damn, let me go out and work a little bit because I need to come up with some money. <laughs> but I did the best I can do to help people when I rode that Jeep. I did it. Oh, yeah. Uber can use that beacon against you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't do it, man. I don't do it. I, I've never had lift lights and stuff like that in my car. When I first started, I put the lift, the little lift bubble light in my car. But then I gave it away. I gave it because I'm like, I don't like this shit. I just it was something about it, man. It was like the way I was lit up at stoplights late at night going through, you know, I'm going through damn parking lots. I'm going through apartment complexes. This big old thing is lift. I'm just like, man, I look like a sitting duck. Everybody's going around talking about how, how Uber drivers can't defend themselves against attacks and all this. And I'm sitting with a big ass lift light sitting in my damn car. I'm like, take that shit out of my car. I'm not going to be a sitting duck for these people. No, take that shit out. And now they're using it to track people. It's like, no, I'm cool on that. No, I'm cool. <laughs> Mike Panner, you stupid. You said, I'm done with Jeff and his profanity. I'm never coming back on here. I'm going to listen and learn from my man Spencer. I'm out of here. I'm back. <laughs> Fuck Spencer Fred. <laughs> I like that little speech. That was crazy. I'm done with Jeff and his profanity. I'm never coming back on here. I'm going to listen to him and learn from my man Spencer. I'm out of here. Oh, okay, I'm back. Fuck Spencer Fred. <laughs> that dude. Yeah, and you're right, Bricks. A higher risk with more drivers on the road, which means the premiums to ride need to offset the risk associated. That's what I'm saying. More people have accidents in the daytime than the nighttime. It's just, it's probability, man. It's probability. And drivers are not compensated for that risk they're not compensated for that probability properly and i know you know the apps don't look out for us they don't i mean real shit they don't look out for us they don't care enough to think about the things we think about from the driver's perspective and me being a day driver at first then going to a night driver i see the difference which is why i chose nights but that don't mean i need to forget about my brothers and sisters that drive in the daytime it means i need to bring up the situation people are out protesting people are out going on strike and shit no we still need to think about our day brothers and sisters. We still, because even though some, some of us don't do it no more, they still exist. They're still an imbalance in pay. They're still an imbalance in risk associated with opportunity associated. This is what we fight for. We fight for all of us, not just night. Well, I'm only fighting for the night drivers. No, I'll fight for drivers. There is no night or day. I'll fight for driver pay. And there's certain situations where you need to say these drivers need to be paid more for what they do. Long distance drivers need to be compensated. They need to be at least be like, hey, the apps need to say, listen, we'll do this. If we give you a fucking nature hike that's 100 miles, we will cover the receipt. Take a picture of your gas receipt. We will attach that to your trip. Most drivers might say, OK, cool. I, I spent 60 bucks. Cool. So we're going to give you the 100. Then we're going to give you 60 on top of that. Cool. That'll work. And at least you feel better about it, even though <clears throat> it's low profit. You know, as far as the amount of time you use and shit like that, at least you got compensated for something back. But to sit there and have these drivers drive 100 miles away, 150 miles away, but got to come all the way back on their own gas with no guaranteed ride to come back. No guaranteed ride to come back. That shit irritates me. Because you got somebody far from home who don't have upfront fare information. They don't have upfront fare information. They take a ride thinking they're only going two miles, four miles, eight miles, nine miles. They get a 150 mile ride. And now they got to go way the hell out somewhere because they don't want to just cancel that shit on the spot and tell the people get out their car and get their luggage out of the car. They don't want to be like that. Yeah, $96, Scott Harbor to Flagstaff, 300-mile round trip. Man, ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. No way. 
to go all the way up to Flagstaff for ninety six dollars. That's gas there and back. That's it. You just spent money on gas there and back. It was a free ride for somebody. Free ride. And you probably they you know they probably charge somebody four hundred for that. They probably charge somebody four hundred for that ride. But they're giving you ninety six dollars out of that. Yeah, Briz, and even even warehouse workers simply make more at night because they call it the night shift, and people get that. They get swing shift money. They get graveyard shift pay. But yet in ride share, this is the only industry where they don't look at levels of how people are doing shit. Everybody's paid the same across the boards for the most part. The rates are the same when the rates don't need to be the same like that. Logan, my man, appreciate it, brother. That's my rider, my man Logan right there. He says, Jeff, you're an awesome dude. Thank you for the hospitality. I honestly didn't expect our Uber driver to make a difference in my night like you did. And now giving us all this awesome info. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that, Logan. Truly appreciate that, brother. And like I said, you never know who we're going to meet, man. We never know. I just treat people with respect. We have a good time. We ride around, you know, and you guys respected me back. I gave you all my information because I, I just felt, you know, the energy between you, brother. So I said, hey, here's my information, man. Here's my information. And we stayed in touch and everything. And now here you are on the chat. And you're going to be a driver with us. That's what's up, man. And you're going to come into the game as a smart driver. I appreciate that. And this is his first super on the live stream. Appreciate that, Logan. This is your first super chat. I appreciate that. And like I said, good luck out there. And don't be a stranger. A lot of drivers on this channel. You can read through the chat, the comments. A lot of drivers out there, man. We know exactly what, what it takes to make a little profit. So we're going to not lead you down the wrong path. And we're going to try to lead you in the right way to where you get some money to stack in that bank account slowly and slowly. Less expense, you know, more profits. That's the trick of the game right there. Don't, don't listen to these. Oh, man, you've got to stay busy. Just drive nonstop. Yeah, they'll have your ass 200 miles away from home, you know, riding on fumes. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Mike Penner. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Good night. And thanks, Jeff, for your sincerity. Hey, man. Hey, it's all love, brother. All respect and love, Mike, man. You know, me and you, we go back and forth. You and your jokes, man. I love it, man. You you keep the chat live with them jokes, brother. Every time you come, <laughs> you take care of the Tesla driver with them oil change gift certificates. <laughs> you kill me with that shit. You kill me with that, man. Yeah, and multiple stops are the worst doing surge prices. That's real. Oh, Logan, you Logan, you're gonna find out about the multiple stops, man. Listen to Adolphus, man. Multiple stops, woo, man. When you get surge pricing with multiple stops, it takes you out of the money because it's taking too long for you to get back to the money. Trust me, man. There's some smart drivers on this channel, very smart drivers, and they're gonna have you driving to where each day you go out, you're gonna make enough money to feel that you were productive that day. You weren't just busy. You weren't just out there busy. You were actually productive. And you come back, you go, holy shit, I only spent like a quarter tank of gas, a, um, you know, an eighth of a tank of gas, and I made $120. That shit adds up during a week. You make $120, then you go back out, you make $130. Now you're at $250 bucks in a quarter of a tank. $250 bucks a quarter of a tank means you're going to make $1,000 for that full tank, a grand on a full tank of gas, but it's using smart ways to do it. So if you look at each quarter of a tank as a day of the week you choose to drive, I say, okay, I want to drive a quarter of a tank this day, a quarter of a tank this day. If I drive less than a quarter, that helps me because the next day I can drive a little more. I'm like, cool, I only use an eighth of a tank so I can drive a little more next day. I can drive, you know, a quarter and an eighth. So you slowly start using your gas tank as what day you're going to drive. I'm going to drive this day. Got to make smart decisions within that number. And you can tell as you're driving if it's a slow night or a fast night. If I'm sitting on a you know a full tank of gas and I ain't getting no rides, I'm coming back home with a full tank of gas. I'm not I'm not sitting out there all night because we got nice cars and we ain't getting carjacked. None of that shit's happening. Emmanuel, what's good, man? I got wisdom from the channel. Appreciate Jeff is the man. Thank you, Emmanuel. My brother, Emmanuel Sanchez is out there. Yeah, but when I use my my tank. And I'm like, Friday, I always say Friday, Saturday. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm at a half tank. I got Friday, Saturday. Okay, so by the end of Friday, Saturday, before Sunday comes, I'm going to be around about 50 miles till empty. I'm going to run it all the way down to almost an eighth of a tank. I'm, I'm going to run it all the way down. Then I'll fill up again Saturday night when I'm done, full tank on Sunday. Now I can start budgeting my week out. But that's usually how I do it. And just using, you know, that tank of gas, I'll use probably about a full tank and maybe about an eighth or a quarter. And I'll make almost a thousand dollars, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars off that. So I'm not yet at a thousand dollars for one tank, even. I, I I keep coming up short. I'm at six, seven. You know, I even did eight one time. I cannot do a thousand dollars in a tank. I just I can't do it right now. I'm figuring it out though. Holy says P Diddy guilty, man. P Diddy guilty of everything. I don't care about P Diddy. 
<laughs> P. Shitty. That's his name, P. Shitty, because he be treating people shitty all the time. Nobody like P. Shitty, man. All of his artists don't like him. Everybody's like, man, P. Shitty? Nah. Don't sign with P. Shitty. Don't sign with Bad Boy Records. He did everybody wrong. Danny Kane, he did them wrong. He did everybody wrong. Yeah, if you stop accepting new offers, riders can't add a stop after they get in your car. I don't do stops with rare exceptions. Yeah, the only time I'll do a stop, no restaurants. If somebody says, oh, we got to go to Taco Bell. Nope, don't do it. Don't do it because you're going to be sitting in line for 30 minutes and you're going to get like a $3 tip. 30 minutes for a $3 tip. It ain't worth it. You can make way more than $3 in 30 minutes. So I don't do stops at restaurants. I'll tell them right now, you got to pull that out. I don't do restaurant stops. You got to do Uber Eats. You got to do DoorDash. You got to do something. But this is an Uber car. This ain't Uber Eats. I'm not sitting in no restaurant drive through for no 30 minutes with no $3 tip. Nah, this ain't Uber Eats. And a lot, a lot of them, they understand. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Someone be like, oh, man, no, I'll give you $30. I'll give you $20. I'll, okay, cool, cool. But you got to give me that money up front. <laughs> I know. Yep, running at altitude says no food and car, period. And see, that's the thing. We got some idiots out there who will eat in a car. Now, I don't mind you. If you're at a grocery store, I pick you up, but you got your food or whatever, and I pick you up. It's cool. Just don't eat it. That's it. Just wait till we get to where we're going. Because <clears throat> one dude, like I said, two people I know have eaten in my car have left messages. The one dude last week with the boxes and shit all in my seat and the, the bacon and shit all in my floor in my seat, him. And then it was a lady jumped in and her kid had some potato chips. And I was like, oh, man, I don't like people eating my car. Oh, no, he's going to be clean. He's cool. I just don't want him upset. I got to man. It was motherfucking potato chips all in my Jeep, all in my Jeep. It was potato chips everywhere. I had to literally because I can't go pick nobody up after that. I ain't going to have nobody sitting on potato chips and shit. And they're going out to dinner. They got shit stuck to their clothes, salt, all these chip flakes and everything. Now, you can't do people like that. That's dirty. So I was like, you know what? I don't like people eating in my car because I don't like to stop and clean up. I don't like that. Especially when you ain't getting no tip at all anyways. So now I got to do housekeeping. I got to do clean. I just drove you somewhere. Now I got to do cleaning. I got to do housekeeping. Like, no, hell no. You can't eat in my car. This ain't a restaurant. You can't eat. My well, I'll tell you what, sit on the curb and eat. I'll cancel the ride. I'll stay in the area because I only do short rides. So I'll probably come back to pick you up when you're done eating because I'm only doing short rides. I'll come back. So you can finish, sit at the little table in front of fucking quick trip, eat whatever you got to eat. I'm still in the area. When you're ready, Hit me up. I'll come back and get you. Probably going to have some surge on the motherfucker because I'm chasing some surge right now. But I'm not doing no goddamn housekeeping. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah, man. Four people get in with ice cream. Two of those are two. <sighs> ice cream is the worst. And I'll tell you why ice cream is the worst. Because it gets sticky. And it sticks on plastic and it will discolor your plastic. There's chemicals in ice cream. That shit will discolor your plastic. It will have your plastic turning white and pink if it drips inside of your cup holders or anything like that. And you will clean it out, but you still will forever see where that those chemicals in that ice cream was, whatever it is. I don't know what they got in ice cream, but that shit will leave a, a permanent stain on a counter, countertop with big ass ice cream stain on it. Oh, well, Emmanuel came in. He said, hey, I did 150 on Saturday, quarter tank. Thanks to you. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Usually I run about 100, 120. Sometimes I'll get up to about 150, but normally I'm about 100, 120 on a quarter tank, man. That's what I'm talking about, brother. That's what I'm talking about right there. You got to do it, man. You got to understand, you know, what tanks a few and park that shit. Park it somewhere. Turn it off. Sit back. Scout rides for a while. So you're not in traffic driving, trying to look at the screen and do math and drive and not rear end some fucking body while you're doing math. You know, fuck that. Go park that shit somewhere. Turn it off. Let the windows down. Kick back. Relax. Find some music real quick. Look at a YouTube video or something, you know, on the repair you've been thinking about doing on your car. Be like, man, I keep hearing this ticking sound. Let me go look at this serpentine belt fucking repair real quick. Go on YouTube, look at a serpentine belt repair. But kick back, that's your time. You are your own boss. You ain't got to rush around for nobody. You your own boss. And so when you're doing that $150 on a quarter tank, that's you smart driving. That's using you to, your day wisely. And like I said, you do that shit, you're going to do the 150 Next, you're going to hit another 150 Next thing you know, you're going to bust out with a 270 280 day. You're like, holy shit, I just did 270 280 on a quarter tank. Cause you're going to slowly, the money's going to slowly start building up over the week. Next thing you know, you sit on $1,100, $1,200 week. You're like, damn, I did $1,100, $1,200. I only work like 15 hours, man, 17 hours. I'm sitting at $1,100. Bucks. Damn. It happens, man. It happens. You just got to drive smarter. And like I said, we ain't got no supervisors. We ain't got no bosses. What we have are apps trying to use us as tools to make profits for themselves. That's what we have. We have that over our head. 
So we got to sit back and we got to analyze situations, analyze transactions coming in. Excuse me. If the situation is there's an event going on, analyze the situation. Do you want to be on the outskirts of the event? Is the infrastructure right to where they got ride share set up perfectly so you can go in and swing and pick people up and get out of there? If the ride share is set up right, like at waste management, I'll go to waste management because it's set up perfectly. But sometimes at the stadium, it's not set up right. I got to do outskirts. You got to analyze every situation, analyze the events because you got to capitalize, man. You can't be screwing around with these apps and they will have you sitting in a parking lot with a million cars and a million people. You getting eighteen dollars and it's going to take you 40 minutes to do this because you sitting in traffic. Eighteen dollars for three miles looks good. Looks good, but it's a lot of traffic, and you like, damn, I just got set up $18 for three miles, but I'm sitting in the middle of a damn parking lot. Shit's crazy. So you got to analyze every situation, man. Analyze them events. Because like I said, 150 quarter of a tank, that's that's the speed I'll be at. You little you doing a little bit better than what I'm doing on mine. Like I said, I try to go out and get as much surge as I can because in that quarter of a tank, I want to trap at least two or three surges. If I can get two or three surges, $10, $15 a piece. I can start getting my numbers up. I can start getting my numbers up. So within a quarter of a tank, I'm like, okay, I need to save some of this tank for a surge. Turn my apps off, kick back. I know surge usually pop up in this area because I see it all the time. Sure enough, $13 around the corner. Boop, app on, Uber pet, around the corner. That's one surge I got within a quarter of a tank. I need two more surges within this quarter of a tank. Because if I can get two more surges within that quarter of a tank, then I can start driving at my $2 a mile range, you know, $3 a mile, because I'm hitting, you know, six dollars a mile now five dollars a mile because i'm grabbing that surge within that quarter of a tank and then at the end of the quarter of a tank because i'm sitting there on weekends saturday sunday oh i can get you know three four in within like an hour i'm getting three surges within an hour so at the end of the day i probably got you know six seven surges at the end of the day with that quarter of a tank so it looks real good i'm sitting on like two hundred dollars on that last quarter but you got to do that. You got to say, how much shirts can I trap within this quarter of a tank? What can I do? I need a couple of five dollars. I need a six twenty five. I would like a nine. If I get a three dollar surge, give it to me right here so I can do a one mile ride because it'll be six dollars for one mile. Because I'm already sitting at the jack in the box. Three dollar ride, three dollar surge, six dollars, one mile to the dorms. Cool. Take two kids to the dorm. Six dollars for one mile. I do that shit. Beamer bucks. <laughs> I'll be on that shit. When I get a short bang, I'll be like, Beamer Bucks, Beamer Bucks. <laughs> Got a bunch of kids and shit standing with pom-poms on the fucking corner. Beamer Bucks, Beamer Bucks. <laughs> Motherfuckers holding up big-ass poster boards. Beamer Bucks. Like, go get that $6. Hell yeah, $6 for one mile. Let's go. So if I can do $6 for one mile, and I can go about 120 miles and a quarter of tank at $6 for one mile, if I could do that shit, that's $720 I can make with a quarter tank of gas. $720. Four of those, doing that four times, I can make almost $3,000 on one tank of gas. <laughs> but that shit is hard to do. $6 a mile for every ride is a whole bunch of $3 trips with $3 surge for one mile. Do that shit over and over nonstop. Just keep doing it. Like, dude, you just made $3,000 on one tank of gas. Dude, all my trips were $6 a mile. I kept getting a $3 trip with a $3 surge and I just didn't stop. <laughs> Kept using the same three dollar surge over and over again for one mile trip, one mile trip, one mile is killing their ass. Yeah, exactly. Some old school Pac Man's out. Walk up, walk up, walk up, walk up. Do that shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, was a bro. I never let ice cream eaters in with ice cream. They, the sound of people smacking lips triggers me. I feel like backhanding them. Will you fucking stop licking that ice cream. You sound like a Labrador retriever. <laughs> 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 Motherfucker bark back at you. God damn it, motherfucker barked at me, man. What the hell? This human just barked at me. Smack the shit out that motherfucker. <laughs> what Joe says, stadium and downtown Phoenix game nights can kill you. Avoid downtown Phoenix when there's a baseball, basketball, and multiple events. Joe, that's why in my videos, you never see me doing those events. You never. Because they don't let you do left turns. They screw you up. If I'm coming north on 7th Street, I'll be south Phoenix, and I'll come north up 7th Street. When you get to Washington, they don't let you make a left. So you got to go up to Monroe, turn left, and then see if you can turn left on Monroe somewhere. Because usually once you turn left on, like, let's say, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, something like that, they got the road closed. So you can't even get through 3rd Street to get down by Jefferson to pick up people. It's so jacked up down there, man. That's why you never see. I'll try to grab somebody. Like, if I can get Surge, I'll grab Surge coming up 7th Street. And I'll try to go up near like Roosevelt. If I can get somebody at a bar on Roosevelt, like the Van Buren, or I'll get somebody from, you know, Wells, whatever, get some, 
then I'll grab that search and use it for somebody going to like a house or an apartment. It'd be like three miles, like nine dollars. Cool, I'll do it. Three miles, nine bucks. Let's do it. Three dollars a mile. But when it comes to game shit, you got to wait until everybody's gone. All the traffic is clear. All the no left turn shit is out of the way. And there's people still standing in the parking lots who are waiting for Surge not to be there. Like the ladies I picked up the other night from the, uh, I think it was the, no, it was the Pink concert. It was the Pink concert. I didn't even know Pink was in town. They were some of the last people there. I got like $60, 60 some dollars for like 14 miles for that trip. They were the last people there. I grabbed Surge. That's when I went and grabbed that. It was a $15 surge sitting around the corner from my house. I was like, oh, shit, 15 bucks right around the corner. So I shot around the corner, picked up the 15, got the pink offer, went and grabbed them from downtown right up 7th Street, took them down to like Ahwatukee. It was like 14 miles. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it, man. 60 bucks. And he tipped me on top of that. The only way I do downtown Phoenix is like that. There is no way you will get stuck in that traffic. Your people can't make it to you. You can't make left turns nowhere. You can't park nowhere because the police with the vest on, they be saying, we're going to give you a ticket, sir. You got to keep moving. We're going to give you a ticket. I'll be like, oh, fuck, man. My people was right around the corner. So now you got to take off, fight through traffic to get back to them. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It's just not. You got to say, I need to pick up somebody, at least Roosevelt. If they could be on Roosevelt, even Monroe or Adams, I'll go Adams, Monroe, Roosevelt. Any one of those streets, I'll do. When you're doing Washington Jefferson, count me out. Just count me out. I'm not doing it because you're going to get stuck down there and your people can't make it to you and the police won't let you stop because traffic got to keep moving. So you got to keep doing circles over and over again and you're stuck in traffic. So it's going to take you 15, 20 minutes to go like a mile, one mile, just keep going in circles. It's going to take you 15 to 20 minutes to go one mile just to finally get your people to get out of there. It ain't worth it. Because you're going to mess around and make like $30, $40 an hour at an event with Surge. With Surge, you're making $30, $40 an hour at an event when you should be making $100 per event. So you $60 short screwing around with downtown Phoenix. You $60 short an hour. It's, it's not worth it. They don't got it set up right. So I'm like, nope, nope. Exactly, D-Bone. They, th they think they just walk up like we buses. We're not buses. You can just walk up and have me pull over and you hop in. Cops will be like, we're going to give you a ticket. Like, if you don't keep it moving, you're getting a ticket from impeding traffic. So we got to take off. They'd be like, don't you get in that car. You got to. And they'll be like, I'm like, oh, man, let me pull up here on this side street. I'm gonna, and they'll walk down the street and I'll be parked in some little alleyway and they can get in at the alleyway. But it's like, we can't just pick you up because you put the pin on Washington or Jefferson. You can't do that. These are busy streets. Washington and Jefferson are too busy. We can't do pickups there. I got to find an alley. I got to pull over into an alley. You can get in there because I'm not getting a two, three hundred dollar ticket for a thirty dollar ride. The, the math don't work right there because now I took your $30 and I got to come up with a $200, you know, pay a $200 ticket now. So I need to go get more rides to pay this ticket off. So it's like, no, nah, I'm not getting no ticket just to pick somebody up. I would just cancel the ride and go about my business. Nope. Cause I'm not getting a ticket. Not happening. And any of the customers, oh man, we sorry. You got a ticket for us, man. We so sorry about that. We'll pay the ticket. No, you ain't never getting that conversation. They're going to be like, well, why'd you fucking pick us up if you knew you was going to get a ticket? Exactly. That's why as a driver, I use my brain. I cancel their ass because I know the pickup's on a busy street and I go somewhere else. <laughs> like, no, nah, you got the pin in the wrong place. Nope, I'm out. What up, Damon? Flag, what's good, brother? Yeah, Jesse, people order the, the rides next to Chase Field. I'm like, why would they do that? They know we can't pick them up on the corner. They know we can't turn right or left. All the streets are blocked over there. It's like, and the police or Uber, somebody should say that this zone is not able to pick up rides and put the pin somewhere else to force the people to walk somewhere else because we can't pick up where they're standing. We're going to get a ticket. We can't go right. If we're going, let's say, east on Jefferson, we can't go south. Even when you pass Chase Field, they won't let you go south. You got to keep going straight down Jefferson and you got to pass like 9th Street and all that shit and sit in one of them parking lots and wait. Man, it's like people don't get it. And we're not going to sit there and take, you know, a charge or a hit for a ticket just to pick somebody up for $25 for four miles. Cool. It's a, it's a banger ass ride, but I got a $200 ticket now. <laughs> it's like shit don't work out. I'm, I'm mad now. All day I work all day to pay off a ticket that I didn't have to get. Like, man, what McCann said, there's barely any surge in my city. Yeah. When you don't got surge in your city. That's when you got to do like the bar runs. You got to do something that where you know you most likely going to get a tip. And that's why I usually like the bar runs because those people are in the, the tipping mentality. They're in tipping mentality. When you're just picking up somebody from Walmart or somebody from a gross, they're really not in tipping mentality. 
They think, well, I gave the, the apps the money and that's where the apps are fucked up. And that's why we got to keep declining rides that ain't paying because the apps are taking $12 from these people, but giving us $4.50. Apps are keeping like $8. So it's like, no, and that $8 y'all keeping, throw us an extra four. Y'all take the four and give us the eight. It's like, because y'all got it inverse. We're the ones doing the actual service. So why are we not getting paid for doing the service? The app is not the service. The app is the interface to get the service. The app is how they find, how can I get the service of me getting home? We're doing, we're not selling them a fucking product. We're giving them a service, a ride. A ride is a service. We deserve the service fees. The service fees don't come to drivers. Apps be like, oh, well, service fee. The app is the service. No, the app is the interface. I know what a service is. The app is an interface. A service is when somebody comes out to your house, like they send out a service technician to do service at your house. The service technician is not the person on the telephone. I'm calling to say, hey, my heat went out in my house. OK, we'll send out a service technician to you soon. Cool. When the service technician comes out, that service technician does service. The app does me making a phone call is not the service. Me asking for somebody to come out to my house is not the service. The service is when the person gets here, just like in Rosh here. The service is us doing the ride. That's the service. So this whole app shit of them being the service. No, you're not the service. You're the interface to the service. Get it right. We know what's going on. Y'all ripping motherfuckers off, ripping off riders, ripping off drivers. That's why we decline bullshit. <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, you stupid. What you say? Spencer Fred be picking them up, though, to keep that AR at 100%. Hey, hey Spencer Fred got like $400 worth of tickets. <laughs> 100% AR, $400 worth of tickets. <laughs> I got to pick up my people. I got to stay busy. God damn it. I'm Spencer Fred, motherfucker. I'm not declining nobody. Fuck you, cop. I'm picking up my people. All right, Spencer Fred, this is your third ticket I done gave you this week, man. Hey, you got to quit doing this shit, Spencer. I don't care. Just let, let give me the ticket so I can go about my business. <laughs> my AR is 100%. I'm going to tell the judge that shit. The judge be like, hey, Spencer Fred, welcome back to court. How you doing, Spencer Fred? Hey, how you doing? I'm telling it 100%. All right, since you sell at 100%, we're going to put your ticket at half price. You only got to pay $200 this ticket. <laughs> Instead of $400, we are going to put you at $200. Because if your AR was any lower than 100%, we charge you full price for this ticket, Spencer Fred. You lucky you had 100% AR. Yeah, that shit will never happen. That motherfucker need a t-shirt that says 100% AR. I'm going to Walmart today. Hey, I'm Spencer Fred. I got 100% AR. Oh, Fred, then it's half price off of everything in your fucking basket. You 100% AR. <laughs> what's up lisa what's good talking shit about spencer fred back in the game baby <laughs> that shit's funny jesse you nuts with that shit spencer fred back in the game baby that motherfucker walk out of court and say that shit back in the game baby <laughs> that motherfucker leave court happy as a motherfucker i only got a 200 dollars ticket this time but i'm still at 100 percent shit don't mess with Spencer Fred. You mess with Spencer Fred, you end up with Drop Dead Fred. That's that old school movie, Drop Dead Fred. God damn it. Don't mess with Spencer Fred. He going to come back on the channel one day, and he going to light our... He's he's working on a whole log of shit. He's going to light our ass up. He's taking names. He knows fucking Jesse. I know Melvin. I know motherfucking Mike Penna. I'm getting all they motherfucking ass when I get back. <laughs> he going to have a whole speech. <laughs> what I like to say to all these stupid-ass drivers with low ARs, Fuck all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Spencer Fred, he get that 10 cent hot dog and five cent root beer float. Well, we're going to mess with Spencer Fred. <laughs> Spencer Fred outside dropping relish all on the ground and shit. Oh, my God. Need a napkin. I need a napkin. <laughs> like, dude, where you get that hot dog from? Uber. This is an Uber dog. This ain't a hot dog. This is an Uber dog. I got this for free. Okay, motherfucker with them Uber dogs. <laughs> He said he be taking kids with him. <laughs> he taking kids with no car seats, keeping it 100%. Motherfucker, just, they just standing up in the seat and shit. He hitting brakes. They falling all in the floorboard. Motherfucking kid ain't even strapped in. Got to keep that 100%. <laughs> Dude, why is my kid all fucked up? Motherfucker rolling with Spencer Freddy. Got a black eye. Motherfucker hit his, hit his face on the air controls in the back. Like, damn, this motherfucking kid been riding with Spencer Fred. <laughs> Lisa, you stupid. You said it's scary when the judge know you by name. They know Spencer Fred. That motherfucker walk in. Hey, good morning, Spencer Fred. We've been waiting on you. We saw your name on the docket. We knew you'd be here. <laughs> Spencer Fred. It's every Monday we see Spencer Fred over the weekend. Still at 100%. You've been picking up people on Washington and Jefferson, ain't you, Spencer? I got to pick my people up. 
<laughs> gotta keep that 100 <laughs> percent like okay Spence, we got you in court today for a transporting a child child endangerment no car seat but i got them there i gotta keep that 100 percent fuck them car seats <laughs> i don't cancel nobody i don't give a shit motherfucker uber pet he got people all covered in dog hair and shit like that <laughs> Motherfucker covered in dog hair. Show up at dinner like, dude, why are you covered in dog hair? Man, we fucking roll here with Spencer Fred. Oh, you got that one driver, huh? <laughs> Motherfucker covered in goddamn sheep dog hair, sitting in a fucking restaurant like fucking Spencer Fred. Man, I think he's driving a great Prius. <laughs> driving a great Prius with no hubcaps. That motherfucker be hitting potholes, still going bam, bam. Fuck that hubcap. I got 100% AR. <laughs> I will pick up everybody. What Brandon came through, Brandon said 842 for 18.6 miles. No, dang. dude, that ain't even 50 cent a mile. What the hell? That's not even 50 cent a mile. You just got that. $8.42 for 18.6 miles. Wow. Wow. Oh, they, they digging in the barrel right now. They digging in the barrel. Spencer Fred popping this motherfucker. Where that at? Where that at? I'm going to go get that. Where that at? <laughs> like, motherfucker, that Spencer Fred t-shirt just say that shit. Where that at? Where that at? That's it. That motherfucker keeping it hundred percent. Motherfucker, show me. You need to show me what that ain't forty two for eighteen point six miles is. Where that at? <laughs> that motherfucker boy. Man, what is it? Two hours and forty minutes into this live, man. Hey, you guys have been great on this live stream. I appreciate us keeping it up under three hours. We kept it under three hours. Cause see, in the beginning, I was gonna say, hey, once it gets about two hours, we was gonna cut it, take a break, and come back. We get going though, man. I love hanging out with y'all, man. Real shit. A lot of drivers out there, y'all, y'all are funny. Y'all are funny. Like I said, I'm glad my man Logan, you know, one of my old riders, got on the chat today and hit up, and now he's gonna be a driver with us. And I appreciate that he's on here. He's learning from everybody, man. He's really picking up, you know, some information from everybody. That's cool because you know it. It's the drivers that come into the game that think, oh, I don't need to listen to nobody. I'm my own boss. Nobody's trying to be your boss. We're trying to help you make more money. That's the trick to this, man, is making more money. But you can help us as drivers get better fares by not taking the shit fares. That's the trick to it. You get in and you say, hey, listen, I want to learn how you guys are doing this. This is how we're doing it. This is how you can help out the ride share community. Man, that's what we do it. Oh, look, is yep, still here, sir. <laughs> still here learning just by listening. Real shit, man. Like I said, and I appreciate that, man. And wait a minute, they nobody said just picking up a Russia driver who said he had a passenger vomiting <laughs> into the air conditioner vent. The smell never went away, even after pro cleaning. Dude, he's got to spray a uh, lemon scent ammonia. You've got to spray lemon scent ammonia in there. Trust me on this one. Spray lemon scent ammonia in the air vents. It kills the bacteria that causes odor. But keep your windows down. Get out of the car because you are not inhaling this ammonia. This ammonia is like the most strongest shit ever. You could probably got to dilute it. You got to water it down a little bit because pure ammonia, man, it'll it'll burn your, your nasals. It'll burn you out, but it kills the bacteria that causes odors. So he's got to just spray that all that lemon scent ammonia all in there and just walk away. Like, don't even go near the car. Don't go near it for like a good two hours because it's going to burn your eyes, your nose and everything, but you will never have that smell again. I usually mix mine with, um, uh, laundry detergent and a little fabric softener. I mix it in the spray bottle and I'll in the Jeep. I spray the seats out, I spray the carpets, I spray everything down, like completely soak them down. And it soaks into the fabric, it soaks into the cushions, it soaks in everything, kills all bacteria causing odors and odor causing bacteria. And once you do that, I'm gonna tell you the Jeep. I got 257,000 miles on that Jeep, smell like the day I bought it. I bought it with 112,000 miles on it. People get in that and be like, dude, there's no way that this Jeep is 257,000 miles. This thing smells new because you got to kill the bacteria causing odor. I spray it in the back. I just put that shit in the spray bottle. Man, yep. Oh, Brandon says, I bought some lemon cinnamon from a much earlier live. Hey, man, that shit work, man. Ozium will do it. Ozium likes to kill stuff in the air. So it'll kill the bacteria sent in the air. But if you got to hit the actual, the source of the bacteria, which is carpets, seats, cushions, like, especially where people like where their back is resting against, because a lot of times sweat will go through their shirt and it'll soak their shirt up, but it'll also soak into your seat a little bit. So I always spray the back area. So I spray where people's backs hit my seats and I really soak it in pretty good. And it kills all that bacteria, that odor causing bacteria. And I mean, the next day it smells like you did laundry in your car. That's what it smells like a laundromat inside of your car. I mean, it's fresh as hell. And I leave my windows cracked. Because you don't want to trap that ammonia in there because it's, it's fumes. It's ammonia fumes. You got to leave that shit aerated. And you spray the carpet, spray everything down. Anything that's cloth, spray it. 
because it's going to soak into that cloth. It's going to soak into the fabric. It's going to kill all the, the bacteria and all that fabric. And it's like, yeah, the ozone machine is good. You hook that to the AC system and that really cleans out. It, that cleans out your, uh, your cabin filter too. That ozone machine to clean out your cabin filter. And that's what I need to get. I need to take and get my cabin filters cleaned out. Yeah, that osium is powerful, dude. You you spray that once in the air. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't breathe it in. You spray it once in the air. Oh, it'll take your breath away. Osium is no joke. That shit. I got a small can of it in the Jeep. I don't even use it no more, man. I hit that shit when I first bought it. I hit it a couple of times, like two. Man, I was like <laughs> driving the shit, trying to stick shit like, God damn, what's in this little ass bottle? That shit is powerful. <laughs> I'm like, damn. That shit, that's an emergency. That's like when you got a fire emergency. Yeah, you pull an osium switch. That's your fire emergency switch right there. If motherfucker really snakes, smell like ball cheese and motherfucking grapes. Pull that motherfucker. Hey, I need the osium. You smell like stale grapes and ball cheese, man. Fuck it, hit that osium. That shit's gone. You're going to ride around fresh as a motherfucker. But definitely that, that lemon scent ammonia, you know, make a, con make a concoction with that. Put a little fabric softener in with it. Fill it with water, put some, you know, some laundry detergent in it, shake it up a little bit, just kind of squash it around. Man, it's like washing laundry. I mean, you spread all your cloth seats off. You can wipe it down a little bit. If you want to get a clean rag and just keep dipping it in water, getting all the dirt off the top of your seats, get all your dirt, let that shit soak into the seats. So the top of the seat is going to be free of all dirt, but that shit soaks into your seats and kills all that bacteria that's inside of the cushions of your seats and everything. And getting in, then after that, whatever you spray in your car, your car is going to smell like that. It won't smell like that trying to cover up a smell. It's going to smell like if you spray like wood oak in your car, your car is going to smell like wood oak, not wood oak trying to cover fish scales. Because that's what happens when you just put spray on stuff. The bacteria is still there causing the smell. So you can still smell a tent of like a little hint of what it was. You're like, oh, man, these seats still stink. Get that ammonia, that ammonia flavored, uh, that ammonia scent, uh, lemon scent ammonia in there. And that shit will just it'll kill everything, man. But like I said, it's very powerful. It's very powerful. And you got to say, my life left fish in the car. <laughs> left fish in the car. I'm telling you, man, that's funny shit. My wife left fish in the car. Like, yeah, spray them fucking seats now. No, nah, but like I said, you got to aerate it. Because if you don't have air in there and you keep your windows up and you trap all of the ammonia, them fumes in there, oh, it's going to hit you when you get in the car. Especially if it's kind of warm outside, it's going to hit you. Keep the windows down. Let that air pass through. Let all those fumes get out of there. Because it's going to really clean your whole car out. I mean, I spray carpets. I spray my pedals off because when I'm walking outside, the bottom of my shoes, I'm walking on fucking spit, shit, dog piss. Who knows what I'm walking in? So I make sure I spray off my pedals because your pedals smell like whatever you've been walking through. So I clean off my pedals, my brake pedals, my clutch. I clean all that, my accelerator pedal, clean all that shit off, spray it with ammonia shit. So now whatever I was walking on, that smells not in my car no more. And even with my shoes, like I'll spray the um the my welcome mat. I usually hose it down with water outside. And I got a big bottle of that concoction I made with lemon scent. I'll pour it on my um my welcome mat and I'll use the bottom of my shoes <clears throat> and I'll just keep doing this on my mat with my shoes going back and forth. So I'm cleaning off my shoes, but I'm cleaning off my mat at the same time with that lemon or ammonia flavored. <laughs> I know it. Say, um, you want some ammonia flavored biscuits? Yeah, these motherfuckers taste amazing. The shit tastes like ammonia, man. You know what I mean? Lemon scent. <laughs> what up, information man show, my man. Yeah, but I pour my concoction on my welcome mat because my welcome mat is kind of like bristly. So you pour it. I got a big bottle. I pour it on my welcome mat and I just go back and forth with my shoes a few times. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Hose it all down. And so my welcome mat's always super clean, always look good. But then it cleans off the bottom of my shoes before I get in my car. So now my shoes are clean. But once I start getting into, you know, walk through parking lots, doing what I'm doing, your shoes start getting dirty overnight. You can track that dirt anywhere. And plus, I got dogs. I'm in the backyard with the dogs. They pee all the time in the backyard. So I'm like, hey, I got to clean the pee off the bottom of my shoe because I don't want that dog pee smell in my car. So I'll hose off my mat, wipe my shoes on my mat real good, real good, real good. Now my shoes are clean now. Yes, brand people sweaty balls. <laughs> I'm telling you, and like I said, I'm, I'm big on killing bacteria because ever since I was little, when my mom used to do laundry, she would use that ammonia flavor now nah, that lemon scent ammonia <laughs> shepherd got me saying that shit now ammonia flavor. i fucked up i know it and then ammonia flavored lemons no nah, that le she would use that in our towels she get a cup of that pour that into the and i'll still use that to this day in my laundry room i got like four big ass bottles of that shit 
because you pour a little bit into your towels, your bath towels. So it kills the scent of, you know, when you take showers, and you throw the towels, they kind of get like that mildew smell to it. My towels, no matter which towel, I get, old ones, new ones, they all smell brand new because you're killing the bacteria in your bath towels. When you use ammonia, you pour it into the bleach section. You just pour it in there, fill it up, add your fabric softener, add your laundry detergent. It cleans all your bath towels to where your bath towels smell like hotel towels every single time. They smell like nice, real nice. So it's like, man, oh, Shepherds did just hit the car wash, ready to roll. Hey, go out there and get that money, brother. Go get that money. Yeah, but see, and that's what it is. You know, when people get in cars, like my cars always have like really high miles on it. But my cars all smell like brand new cars because the trick is like the exterior is going to be what it's going to be. But the interior is what makes cars look like shit. Because they stink because of what your shoes are tracking in the car all the time. The carpets are holding smell. The seats are holding smells. So you got to kill that bacteria. So your car smells like leather. It smells like wood grain. It smells like whatever. You can put pledge in that motherfucker. Make it smell like pledge. Whatever. <laughs> Briggs and I know it, man. I got caught. I got caught. Fucking ammonia flavor. Yeah, this shit's ammonia flavor. I love it. <laughs> it's like, this motherfucker drink ammonia? <laughs> You a special kind of driver, goddammit. Yeah, this motherfucking ammonia flavor juice. <laughs> like, who the fuck drinks ammonia? Yo, hey. <laughs> Y'all gonna have me fucking make a bottle of some shit and call that shit ammonia flavor. This is new. Ammonia flavored bodyguard juice for the athlete in you. <laughs> Keep your interior smelling fresh. <laughs> Drink this ammonia flavor. Like, motherfucker, what? <laughs> Man. This is what Silver Fox said. I might go out to Phoenix for the SAR gun show. Whenever that's going to be, shit, I'll be there. I'll do that. Because, hey, there's one dude I picked up. Man, I got his number. I can't remember. You know, he gave me his number and everything. But this dude, he's got like, and he lives in some apartments not far from me. This dude got like 30 guns. He showed me pictures of him. He's got like 30. He's got like ARs, all these guns. He's a gun collector. But he's downsizing. So he's selling his, some of his guns at a really, really low rate. All his buddies online, they're all like, dude, I can't believe you're going to sell that gun. That's like your favorite gun. You're going to sell like, And I mean, he's got some amazing, beautiful firearms. Beautiful, man. And I'm like, yeah, these are 30 guns. It's rookie numbers. Like, I only got three, motherfucker. I was like, I would love to have like five or six. Because I, guns to me are like cars. They're they're beautiful, man. They're beautiful. And I like to sit there and see how they're engineered, how they're put together, how somebody created this. Uh, damn over a hundred man you got everything in the under the damn sun what the hell hey shepherd appreciate that can't wait to watch your next ride along appreciate you thanks brother yeah but man like i said i would uh, to me having guns is like having a museum i mean you can go through them you could take them apart you could show up people how to clean them you can oh man it's just like i and i'm not i don't have a like a lot of like i said i only got three i just i don't invest a lot of money into it but i like to see other people's collections i like to kind of go through and see what they got See who engineered it, who manufactured it, how was it made, the springs, the triggers, you know, the, where there's a hammer, if it's an automatic, a revolver. I like to see shit like that because it's engineering to me. It's like, who thought about making this at this point? And it's, it don't have to have bullets and shit in it. I just like to see the gun. I like to, like, go through it, see the, like, how they do all the engraving in the metal, like the actual, in, like, the real intricate engraving over the whole gun. So the gun looks like just art. It's crazy how it looks. And it's like, man. This is what is I have over a hundred. I bought a Springfield trip full rail yesterday, twenty one hundred dollars. Damn, see that's what I'm saying, man. You got like cars, guns are they? I can go buy a goddamn Toyota Tercel for that motherfucker, nineteen eighty five Toyota Tercel, twenty one hundred. I'll buy that bitch, and it's got the roll up windows like this. I'll buy it. <laughs> you out there saying I'm gonna buy a gun? I'm looking for a Toyota Tercel, motherfucker. One of them old ass fucking cars that nobody even got. Like you got one in your garage? Yeah. Yeah, Briggs said, people just be having hygiene issues. Having your clothes out is one thing, but you got to wash your ass. <laughs> is that wash your ass? <laughs> Real shit. You need to have that shit on, on your motherfucking, uh, on your driver profile. When they pull up the picture, they say, tell us about a little bit about yourself. Wash your ass. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Man. Hey, what all for kids come out with? You said, I took Lyft driver today. Said he had 300,000 miles on a 2013 Acura RDX. Interior was immaculate. I've been sharing your channel with my Dallas Fort Worth drivers. A lot of people need your spray concoction. Thanks. Uh, thanks, all for kids. I appreciate that. Yeah, like I said, the more drivers we get around, 
the more people start driving smart and we get that energy of of not being nervous about canceling rides or, or declining rides. We we help people not be nervous saying you can make it. So don't think you got to have a high AR just to make it in ride share. You can have a low AR and still make it in ride share. It's possible. And all of us prove that we prove it. We're not getting deactivated. We're still making decent profit margins to where, you know, we could take care of the bills we get without feeling really stressed. Like I'm I'm like, OK, I know if I need, you know, a set of tires, I can go buy me a set of tires. If I pop a tire, or I don't feel stressed about it. There are some people with really high ARs. If they had a flat today, they'd be stressing the fuck out. Because they'd be like, there's no way I can go buy a new set of tires, pay my rent, pay my insurance for my kids thing, and also pay for, you know, the, the fucking band camp they're in. I can't do it. They, they sit on 85% AR, but they can't pay for some of the basic stuff to keep the business rolling. And that shit, man, is not, man. <laughs> what don't he say, Jeffs? I like, like I got that spray for your ass. <laughs> I got that spray for your ass, God damn it. Like, man, that's funny shit. I'll use that shit. Hell yeah. Fucking hit him with that ozone. Motherfucker, that's for your ass. <laughs> Shepard Brothers says, hey, I know some people smell so much. You think they ran a marathon before the pickup. They get in smelling like motherfucking poison ivy. It's like, dude, you've been playing in the weeds. You smell like straight poison ivy and poison oak and shit, man. What the hell? It's like, no, nah, man, I just, I've been just partying all night. <laughs> it's like, have you thought about partying with the shower? The motherfucker, the shower still exists. You can hang out with the shower for a little bit. Man. <laughs> Uh, Chris D says, I love this channel. I can't stop laughing. Am I the only chick driver in here? I don't know. You might be. You might be. No telling. No telling. But all for kicks might be. Hold up for a second. What do we got? We got a few. I know uh, Nicole, she was north of the valley. Nicole, she's in here every once in a while. So we be in here cracking them laughing. We don't care. We tell everybody. We just get in here and just laugh. We have a good time. And a lot of channels are, you know, certain driver centric. Like me, I'm not driver centric. We just we do anybody. If you're a driver and you just want to know how to make some good money, you don't want to be used as a tool by these apps and shit. We welcome you on this channel. If you're somebody who's stuck in your own zone and you don't care. Oh, I drive the way I drive and can't nobody tell me how to. nobody's trying to tell you how to drive. bro. We just trying to tell you, you know, there's a better way to do it. There's always a better way to do something, a more profitable, a more efficient way to do something. We just give people that option. That That's all we're doing is giving people that option. But some people don't like that option. They come on this channel and they be mad as hell. I'm tired of you, you know, low AR drivers. You guys are canceling people, and deactivating people. I can't respect you. Like when Stanley Jenkins said he was on a, a Facebook channel. And they're like, oh, we can't respect you. You decline. You decline too many rides. We can't respect you. Like, motherfucker, this ain't personal. This is business. What the fuck do I care about your respect for? Like you are a driver talking about you don't respect me because I'm looking out for my profit margins. Like, who the fuck are you? And there's a bunch of high AR drivers on that channel. We, we don't respect you. You're, you're declining too much. We don't. I'm like, dude, why don't you ask, is this person OK? Excuse me. Hey, are you paying your bills? Yeah. OK, cool, cool. Are you are you saving a little bit to the side in case of a rainy day fund, you know, in case your muffler and shit fall off? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. They don't care about that. They don't ever ask you shit about that. They always trying to knock you for what you're doing in a way that you're succeeding. They always want to knock you for that shit. This is I'm an ATL driver. Infilate Jeff Knight podcast. That's right, seriously, man. We be here, brother. We be here. <clears throat> but they always trying to knock you for for doing good, like for for taking care of your family. All right, Lisa. Hey, you be out there, lady. Hey, get out there tomorrow and get that money. You know what? And we gonna keep fighting for the day drivers to get paid a little more because that shit's rough out there for y'all in the daytime. We know it. We know it. Yeah, have a good night, Lisa. And yeah, and it's like I tell people the first thing I ask drivers is, is are you doing well? That's it, because I need to know. Are you are you okay? You're doing well, or you know, are you struggling? You're suffering, what's going on? I don't ever knock nobody when I see them doing well. If I see them struggling, I'm gonna say, Hey, let me put you to the side. Like when I saw King James a long time ago, he hit me up. King James was like, Hey man, I'm just struggling, man. It's like I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just and that was a couple of years ago. I met King James, and he's like, You know what? I said, dude, this is what you should probably be trying to do. This is what you can do. You're already downtown. You should be doing these shorter rides. You should be plucking rides from here to there. You should be crowning grabs. Now King James is like, he's a master at this shit. This motherfucker make over $100 an hour, damn near sometimes $200 an hour. Real shit. Real $200 an hour. And I'm like, this is a dude who came to me saying that he was having a hard time struggling. The most I could do, the best I could do for a driver like that is to say, hey, let me help you not struggle. What can I do to help you not struggle? So when I see drivers that's not struggling, I go, I'm glad you're not struggling. You can share information with drivers who are struggling. You can come on my channel and help people out. That's what we do. Instead, 
You get these drivers who see people not struggling. Oh, you guys are horrible. Y'all need real jobs. Y'all ain't got no fucking skill. Do we not struggling? I don't give a shit if you're not struggling. You need a real job. This shit ain't no skill. Y'all a bunch of idiots. Y'all a bunch of low lights. But we ain't struggling though. I don't care if you're not struggling. I think you guys are idiots. You guys are stupid. You got and it's like people like that, they don't fit in what we're trying to do with our life. It ain't even about Rogers with our life. They're they some of the shittiest energy people who come jumping on YouTube channels. Because they're not happy with whatever's going on in their world. They're not happy with it. And when you miserable, misery wants company. They need somebody to feel just as shitty as they feel. Misery loves company. But when you're successful, you want to go out and share that success, share that knowledge to help the next person out, to help some people out. And that's kind of what we do. Thanks, brother. My man, Shepherd Brother Film, best Uber, Uber ride share YouTuber, in my opinion, keeps it 100. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hey, I do, because we all see it. And we say how we see it, man. We don't, we don't you know, Try to sugarcoat shit. We call it exactly how we see it, what we see in this community. We see it in comments all the time. The people who are upset with their own life, so upset with their own life, the first thing they do is open up YouTube and start bashing people who ain't got a problem. We ain't got no problems with nobody. We just waking up trying to make sure when I go to Walmart, this $89 for this two bags of shit that used to be like, you know, $30 to buy two bags of shit. Now I was 80. I can afford this shit. I could bring it home and feed my dog some dog food. That's all I want to do. Get them some dog food. Get them some dog bones so they don't like chew up my walls and shit. Like, hey, I need to buy, you know, I'd rather spend $16 on dog bones than $400 fixing the fucking wall. So let me go buy $16 worth of dog bones to get them something to do. So here, here's $16 worth of dog bones. Don't eat my fucking walls. I got to go drive and I'll be back. And they mad at us because we can do that. We can afford $16 fucking dog bones. Why are you mad at me for that? In stage, you're like, dude, I'm glad you're doing that, man. That's cool. That's cool that you're living life right. You know, you're doing the best you can do to take care of your situation, to keep your energy up. Instead, they bring that shitty energy onto a page of people who don't really have that shitty of energy. We over, we get mad at the apps because the apps are playing the shit out of us. Cool. We own that. But as far as driver to driver, human to human, we ain't got no problems with each other. We ain't got no beef with each other. But they bring their beef and ass over here trying to create beef. What the fuck you over here trying to create beef for? And then I beef with nobody over here. We have the barbecue kicking back. Eat motherfucking ribs, potato salad, motherfucking coleslaw. And you come on this motherfucker, flip my motherfucking plate up. Ain't nobody got beef with you. Like, who are the, who the hell are you? And that's why I run my channel the way I run it. And I'm glad a lot of drivers that understand that energy and understand that vibe, they come over here. And they go, hey, you know what, man? I'm glad I found this channel. I've been having an issue struggling in my, in my market. I, my AR was at 79%. I dropped that motherfucker all the way down to 42%. I'm doing a whole lot better when it comes to money now. <laughs> it's like. That's what it takes sometimes. It takes a channel to kind of jog people. Say, hey, man, don't worry about these apps. These apps worrying about these apps. You worry about you. Because these apps ain't worried about you. Tuck, Tuck is back in the house. What up, Tuck, Tuck? He said, no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> you know we be on that, man. We be on that. We see them rides come through like, eh, I'm cool on that shit. I'm not doing that. No, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> that's real, though. But that's what we do, you know what I'm saying? And and that's why I wanted to be a part of the community that that actually is a we they call keyboard gangsters. Never say it in your face. The internet gives gave shy folks voices. Real shit. KC Biz Strategy. She's out in Vegas doing it. What up, KC? She's out in Vegas making it happen. Hey, she out there running what 18, 1900 a week. Woo! And she ain't doing crazy hours. And she's got them high profit margins. That's what I'm talking about. It's possible. It's possible. She proves it. She proves it every week. It's possible. And she's in Vegas, which is a hard market. She's in a hard market doing low miles, low hours, 1900 a week. She's doing it. She's out there in the streets. And so when we get people like that, that come on this channel and they help share that energy and share that vibe and they help build us up and they don't sit up there and, and try to knock us down for us just trying to do better. We trying to lift people up. We trying to, like I said, she's out there doing smart driving. She ain't doing no 80, 90 hours a week. She doing 2K a week, doing normal work hours, normal work hours, 2K a week. It's just smart driving. That's all you got to do is smart driving. Because I tell people, I could do 1K in 15 to 19 hours. I could do 1K, 15 to 19 hours of driving. I could do $1,000, 1100 1200 So all I did was have to double it. If I doubled it, I'd be sitting where KC is. We'd both be out there doing that shit. We be out there making 2K a week pushing. And I'm trying to get to that point to where I can be out more. Because, you know, when I see KC out there doing it, she's out there making a 2K and she's working normal work hours, not, not double time. She's not working a double time job. She's doing a full time job. She's doing true full time, 40 hours a week, true full time. Not no 80, calling it full time. That's double time. Motherfuckers, ain't, we ain't stupid. We know what double time looks like. 80 hours a week is double time. 
So she's doing true full time, making 2K a week. And people said it can't be done. And she's doing it in a shitty market at a shitty time. Low AR, super low AR. So when you got low AR, you're in a shitty market at a shitty time of year, and you're still bringing in 2K a week on full time hours. You a smart motherfucker. You've done figured something out. You done figured something out. And instead of people like, you know, appreciating a driver like that, being in our community, helping us with the energy, helping us, you know, know the possibilities and talking about it and stuff like that. She's over here helping us. She ain't over here bashing us. Oh, I'm better than all you motherfuckers. Y'all suck. Y'all this. Y'all. She don't do that. She's not one of them people. But you go to them other channels. That's the first thing you hear. Oh, you guys are horrible. I'm better than all y'all. I'm this. I'm that. Y'all ain't doing what I'm doing. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. No, we don't. We don't roll like that at the barbecue, man. We don't do that at the barbecue. You might like the apple pie. You might like the motherfucking turtle pie. You might like the motherfucking barbecue sauce. You might like some without barbecue sauce. Whatever it is, it's all here for everybody. And you just enjoy whatever you like when you come around here. But one thing we don't like, you don't come over here flipping over motherfuckers plates, smacking down sodas and shit, mad. We don't do that. G sauce, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. The super chat. The super chat with the super cat. I like that. That's good. <laughs> you got the super cat chat. I like it. Thank you, G sauce. What, what Tony say, Jeff's next shirt, low AR, high IQ. That's man, that's real. That's real. That's real. Lower the, the lower the AR, the higher the IQ. Because this is driving IQ. It's all ride share IQ. It's all it really is. And Casey says, thanks to you. I was taking all the shit before. And look, when she stopped taking it, when she really started maximizing her the level of efficiency. I mean, even her husband, he drives too. And he's her and he's running a little less than what she's running. They basically making four thousand dollars a week in their household. Four G's a week. That's two hundred thousand dollars a year between the both of them. And, and it's all high profit margin shit. Bank accounts looking nice. Bank accounts looking real nice. Motherfucking stress is out the door when you know you got a couple of months saved up to where, you know, I could probably be off for two weeks and, and still make rent. I could be off for two weeks. I could twist my ankle and shit and be off for a couple of weeks and I can still make it. That's what we're talking about. Because you will twist your ankle. You will hurt your elbow. You will get sick. You may have to take off three, four days, five days. And you shouldn't be at a point running your own business in ride share to where you take off three days and now you're in a hole for two months. And that's how a lot of the high AR drivers are. They take off three, four days. They can't make rent. Their car ain't paid for. They can't afford the insurance. They took off too many days. Three days is too many days. Because they don't have the profits that can afford the, the time. They're not buying their time back. We're buying our time back. But the higher our profit margins are, the more time we could buy. When you don't have high profits, you're on company time. You're living check to check, ride to ride, drive to drive. Yeah, in these streets to fill our cars. Yeah, for real, exactly. <clears throat> and I'm one of those people that I'll sit up there and I'll tell folks, when I first started driving ride share, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I was looking at YouTube watching everybody, oh, yeah, you got to just go out there and drive nonstop and do this and do that. No, I was talking about strategy. I remember one time when I first started talking about strategies, a couple of years ago on my ride show, I was talking about strategies. It was somebody coming to do, it ain't no such thing as ride share strategy. You're stupid. You just got to get out there and drive strategy. That's stupid. Nobody ever heard of strategy. Of course, nobody ever heard of strategy because nobody talks about it. And now that we have strategy and we have people talking about it, people actually proven in their markets that them having the strategies that they're using in their market works. I mean, like I said, if I listened to people like those people that were making those comments back then, I would end up like those people back then. Many of those people who said, ain't no such thing as strategy, I guarantee they're no longer drivers. They're probably working a W-2 right now, being told when they can and can't piss. You can't piss till 10 o'clock, dog. You got to stay on the clock till 10. You can't go take a piss. But man, I drank too much water this morning. I drank too much coffee. You can't piss till 10 o'clock. Hold it for another 20 minutes. Can you hold your piss? Can you hold it? Grown motherfucker telling you when to piss. It's like, no, you're not. If I got to piss, I'm getting up and I'm walking out. I'm sorry. You're not telling me, well, sit here till 10 o'clock because we need somebody on till 10. Well, I'm going to go piss. I'm going to put this thing on hold. I'll be right back. Those are the kind of people that are trying to tell us how to run our business. The people who are now being told when they can, they can't piss. I mean, it's real shit. They don't do ride share no more because they weren't doing it right. You got to have some form of strategy because I'm telling you right now, Lyft and Uber, they have strategic planning. When they have boardroom meetings, conference rooms meeting, Fino Boxing, that's my man on IG right there. That's my man. What up, Fino Boxing? Yeah, because these they have business strategies. So they're sitting there with business strategies, having boardroom meetings and shit like that, 
and we're saying there's no such thing as strategy in business. The people who were saying that really have no strategy. In they shouldn't even be doing business. If they're not budgeting, forecasting, having some form of strategy, they shouldn't even be in business. But they're telling other people how to run a business. Oh, there's no such thing as strategy in business. You guys are stupid. It's just driving. You just get in and drive. You're stupid. There's no strategy. What are you talking about? Strategy. That's the stupidest. It's just driving. See, that person don't belong as a driver. That's not a driver. He's an employee. He's been an employee his whole life. He doesn't know how to think in terms of business strategy, strategic planning, financial planning, expenses, budgets, forecasts. He don't think that fast. He's just used to walking in, punching in, typing on the computer, answer the fucking phone. Hi, welcome for calling Toledex. How may I help you? How may I direct your call at Toledex? That's what he's used to. Motherfucker, ain't no strategy in that. You just read the script. Thank you for calling Toledex where we pay tolls. Okay, motherfucker. <laughs> man. What Melvin said, hey, man, I'm cool with that. My 12 to 14 on 28, 30 hours screwed me. That 84 hours a week screwed Spencer Fred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm. That's real shit, man. 1200 to 1400. That's what I'm looking for. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Because it gives me time to run my errands and do shit that I can do. I don't need to be on, on the road for 12 hours a goddamn day. That's way too many hours for me to 12 hours a day. Where, when do you live? Like, when do you fucking breathe? Shit. Fino said, hey, if we would all follow your tips, we would all be making more, make making more enough from Uber and Lyft. That's right, brother. And it's, it's not just even just my tips, Fino, man, because you know how we roll, man. I'm taking tips from other drivers in the comments in the chat. And we go through this whole fucking back and forth to this conversation through testing and trying. Me saying, okay, I'm going to try this then. Okay, I'm going to try this at night, Jeff. Oh, shit, Jeff, it worked. And I tell somebody else, hey, make sure you, you contact customer service for your reservations. Victor told me this shit. Try it. It works. So we always going back and forth, giving each other opportunities to, to find out how do we work this? How do we do this as a team? Because it's us against the apps. It's always been that way. It's never been driver against driver. They wanted it like that. But we saw that that shit wasn't working. Because when it was driver against driver, what was happening? They keep less pay, less pay, less driver pay, less percentages. They kept screwing with us. They had us fighting each other so much. They was behind the closed doors going, dude, we got these people fighting each other, competing for each other. We got them driving 84 hours a fucking week just to make money. They don't even know the system. These people are stupid. Look at all these high ARs we got across the board. All these motherfuckers are 100%, 95%. 90. They have no idea what they're doing. We got these drivers fighting each other, not paying attention to what's even going on. We're winning. And once we said, wait a fucking minute, why are we fighting each other? So we said, okay, this is what we're going to start doing. We're going to start spreading information and education. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make the app see that we're a force. Drivers are a force to be reckoned with. We're not just individually. You can't fuck with us. You can fuck with us individually, but as a whole unit, you can't touch us. You can't fuck with us because we'll have these apps not making no revenue on shit trips. None. The high ARB, oh, I'm going to take that. The Spencer Fred's of the community. I'm going to take that. And we don't got to deal with that shit. Yes, it's, you're saying too much now, Jeff. Shh, just playing. We all going to eat together. <laughs> Tuck does it. <laughs> you're saying too much now, shit. No, you know me, brother. You know me. Antonique, she's back in the house. Hey, Jeff, I just joined the live at the right time. Yeah, you right in. You right in. <laughs> Andre the Muslim, I'll tip you in the app. <laughs> exactly. When the motherfuckers say, I'll tip you in the app, consider it not happening. It ain't happening. I'll tip you in the app. If Fino says, hey, are you still having issues with Uber stealing your tips? Finally, the other day, I got another dollar tip. I got another one dollar tip the other day, and I haven't had a dollar tip in a long time. I think there's some shit going on because they see me getting all these surges, and I think they're starting to con constitute my surges as part of my tip because they say we're going to give the driver 100% tips. They see me getting an $18 surge. They probably reclassing part of my surge as the tip. Okay, he got a $10 tip, but he got a you know $18 surge. Well, give him a $1 tip. And we'll just say part of we'll say nine dollars out of that 18 was surged. So we'll give him nine. His tip was nine. And we pull nine back out of the mix. So they're keeping my nine fucking dollars. I think they doing that shit. Andre. Oh, hell no. Cap. <laughs> like, man, man, man. They, I see certain days where the tips come in immediately. Other days when nobody tips, which I think is BS remover. Yeah, they're holding money because I think they're they're playing money market. They'll hold some of the money back. And they'll do it. They'll like probably do like loans or they'll do something with it in the in the stock market or with bonds or whatever the hell they doing. We don't know. They'll get a little interest off of these tens of millions of dollars in tips we're getting. They are not just letting it be a pass through system. They're seeing it as an opportunity. They're getting tens of millions of dollars in driver tips. King James was good, brother. Just talking about you. They're getting tens of millions of dollars in driver tips flowing through their hands. You don't think they're going to use that money to make money? 
You think they're going to just like say, oh, thanks for giving uh, Jeff the 10. We'll give it to him immediately. No. they like, dude, we're going to hold this shit for 30 days. At least 30 days. If Jeff don't ever say shit about it, give him a dollar out of it. Give him $2. Give him $3 out of it. Because he don't even know how much this person tipped him. He has no idea. He has no idea how much this person tipped him. Person just tipped him $9. Give him $2. He don't know. He ain't going to fucking find out. And that's why people keep busting these apps because they keep finding out. Man, this dude tipped me 20 but y'all gave me $5 on the app. Then they send them screenshots of shit. Now they hear them see a $15 adjustment because these apps know what the fuck they're doing. They're not stupid. They know what they're doing. So they'll sit up there, take all the money in, do money market, whatever the hell they're doing to make money with our money. And if we don't ever say shit about our money, they're going to keep most of that money anyways and throw us two, three dollars. Motherfucker probably tipped us fifteen dollars. We don't give you three dollars on that. Oh damn, I got a three dollar tip. Motherfucker really tip you fifteen. They just kept twelve of it. You didn't know, and that's why we got to start using our fucking cash app and Venmo fucking QR codes because we know that they're taking our money. They're playing with it, not giving us what it is. Even when they, it's time to give us what it is. We have no transparency, no ability to audit our tips because they don't give us any way to contact a customer. No way we can contact a customer. Anything that happens, the only way we can contact somebody is if we give them a card if they text us one day and say something. We say, hey, man, did you tip me like six bucks? Six bucks? Do we tip you $30 on that trip? What? Yeah, we tip you $30 on that. Oh, man, look, I'll show you a screenshot. It says $6. Oh, no, dude, they, they took $24 from you. We tip you 30 bucks on that trip, dog. Now you got to get their screenshot, contact Uber, Uber. The, oh, we're sorry about that. It was the incorrect amount applied. We'll, we'll correct your account immediately. How many times these motherfuckers done done that shit to people? Countless, countless. Fats. Anthony with that shit. Fats. <laughs> Instead of facts, we like fats, motherfucking fats. <laughs> oh, yeah. The lower, the, high, the higher the surge, the lower the base fare. Been killing them on Uber Eats. Oh, man, they do that shit. Like I said, and I got the other day, like I said, I did a $13.99 trip, $6 surge. $13.99 trip was the base. $6 surge was the surge, and I ended up getting $17 as a payment because they're increasing their service fees. They're jacking their service fees up to eat into our money. That's how they're doing it. They've been doing that for a while because if somebody tells me I'm going to give you $6, I'll say, okay, cool, you give me $6. But if somebody say, hey, I'm going to give you $5, and they hand me three fucking dollars, I'm going but you said you was going to give me five. I did give you five. Dude, you just gave me $3. Oh, there's a service fee to that. I was going to give you five, but I service feed you $2 real quick. But you never told me you was going to service feed me $2. You said I was going to give you $5. That's the shit that Uber be pulling. Oh, we'll give you a $13.99 upfront fare. Sure, we'll give you that. Oh, I got a $6 surge. Okay, cool, $6 surge. Well, why do I have $17 then? Because $13.99 plus 6 is $19.99. Why do I have $17? The fucking math don't even add up. Because that's what they're service feeing the shit out of us, man. They're service feeing the shit out of us. What KC say for the Raiders game, I got $41 ride from the stadium to Caesars, 2.5 miles. They tip me 40 on the app, then another 20 in cash. Best ride ever. I got the tip. There you go. There you go. And like I said, that right there, those are the bangers we be talking about in ride share. Those are the true bangers. When you put in minimal miles, minimal time, but you getting max dollars for the service you just provided for somebody, you are doing the service. You the ones who are giving these people the great experience. It's not the app giving them the great fucking experience. It's the driver. It's the, the atmosphere, the energy, all that. You deserve that money. That's your money. And for these apps to claim that they're doing the service, these apps ain't doing no fucking service. These high-ass service fees, them selling our tips and everything, they're not doing that. We're the ones who are giving these drivers the experience. They could ride a fucking bus. You think the bus driver going to talk to them? No. Bus driver going to be like, next up, that's it. Motherfucker, bus driver don't fuck with you. Next up, we in the car like, hey, man, what you want to listen to, dog? I got Spotify. What y'all got? Oh, shit, yeah. I'll do check this shit out. We giving true service when we driving. Motherfucker jump in my car. Next time, I'm just going to go, next up, kick the motherfuckers out. <laughs> Why he acting like that? He acting like a bus driver. Motherfuckers, we ain't getting no tips. Next stop, get the fuck out. <laughs> no. I think Fino says, I have to use every trick in a book to make a decent hourly rate. Man, all you got to do is just make sure you you make sure the hours that you actually working. If you're working, you should be paid for the work you do. 
for hourly rate, like I tell people, sometimes my apps can sit there and my Lux will sit there for like 20, 30 minutes, not getting shit. I'll be riding around on UberX the whole time getting UberX ride. So I don't even look at online time no more. Online time is what a lot of these channels and these drivers fuck with. They don't realize we're running tandem apps all the time. So I'm doing UberX rides, picking up people doing this, but the whole time my Lyft is running. Should I be being paid for Lyft? No. So being online is just being online. I don't even look at my hourly rate. I look at my per ride rate. What am I getting paid per ride? What am I getting paid when I do actually work? So I got Lyft running. So it could be on for an hour. Oh, look, you were online for an hour. You didn't get paid by Lyft for an hour because I was making $60 on Uber with that same hour. I made $60 on Uber, but Lyft says you didn't make anything for that hour. I don't give a fuck what Lyft said. I made sixty dollars on UberX that exact same from noon till one, from midnight till one a.m. I made sixty dollars on UberX, the same hour I was running Lyft and Lyft didn't send me shit. Well, your online hour says you didn't make nothing on Lyft, so that's your rate. Your rate is really not what you say it is. That's why I don't even fuck with online time. I don't even look at online time. I look at when am I working. John Alpha John, my man in the house with the Alpha Romeo, John Post. So right, Jeff, great service, Acme Cab. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Acme cat with the Wiley Coyote. Love to you, Jeff. Alpha John. Much love and respect, my brother. Hell yeah. Oh, Devon, you on that too. That's why I have my Venmo Cash App Zelle sign is right in the middle. I fucked up and I didn't put Zelle on mine. I did Cash App and I did Venmo. I totally forgot about Everybody uses Zelle. I totally forgot about Zelle. So I got to redo my shit. I got to order another one. I'm going to use this one probably, but I'm going I'm to use my other one because I need to put Zelle because everybody's like, you got Zelle? I get more Zelle shit than anything. You got Zelle? I'm like, damn. Like, why didn't I put the Zelle QR? I wasn't thinking, man. I wasn't thinking. So, yeah, I just paid money for that one. It's got my name spelled wrong anyway. So, it's probably like I'm not really losing shit. So, I'm going to end up getting my Cash App Venmo Zelle put on one next. That's my next one. Because, like I said, I fucked up and I didn't put Zelle on there. And everybody uses Zelle. Because it goes directly to your bank, back and forth to your bank. You don't got to go through apps, around apps, and all this shit. So, yeah. That's right. Tuck Tuck said, it ain't a trick. It's just know your worth. It's your car maintenance. That's right. Shit. Fino said, I live downtown Long Beach. So when I'm home, I have Uber Eats on. Take us a good order for me to get my night started. Nope, not. I'm staying home. Real shit. And I'll be sitting in my driveway sometimes, you know, just scouting rides from my driveway, seeing what's going to get me to move. If nothing's really banging, I don't see no surge. If I say, man, this surge like, you know, two miles away. I just go grab the surge real quick. Then I'll start my night with the surge. But if it ain't no surge around, I'll turn on Lux and see what Lux can do for me. I won't turn on UberX because if I turn on UberX, it's going to probably be some airport ride at 50 cent a mile. I'm going to say, hey, go to Terminal 4 and pick up Sarah. You know, take her 20 miles this way for $12. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. Turn that UberX off quick as a motherfucker. Nope, done. Oh, so Zelle is exempt for the 600. No wonder everybody's using the Zelle. Ah. There you go. There you see. I knew I fucked up, man. When I had that cash app Venmo on there, and I, everybody gets in my car, it's like you got Zell. I'm like, fuck. Like, here's my phone number. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, man, I need Zell. I knew I fucked up. So yeah, I'm a, and everybody, especially a lot of drivers I talk to, Zell, 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 Ryder, Zell. I'm running around with cash app and Venmo. Like, dude, I gotta, I gotta get on a fucking boat with Zell. I need to do that shit. So, yeah, it's a little more secure. That's why they like it. And it's exempt for this. There we go. Let's do it. So there y'all go right there. If you're going to be doing tips with Rideshare, Zelle is exempt for the $600 reporting. Get Zelle. You just heard from Silver Fox. So I just found that out, too. I didn't think about that. Because Cash App and Venmo, they both, you know, they don't have that reporting shit. But it's cool because I don't think I make $600 on them motherfuckers anyways. I don't think. Maybe. Who knows? But yeah, man, like I said, I'm I'm gonna get out what time is it? 7 30. It's about 7 30 right now, man. We're gonna get out there and make this is what make your own line of pimp juice for ride share refreshment. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I'll get a motherfucker some goddamn drink packets. Now, here's a drink packet. No, -uh, on my east thing is no tip, no trip. Hey, Devon, that's what you gotta do, man. Let them know up front. Let them know up front. Say we do this for the money. They ain't nothing personal. It's business, it ain't nothing personal. I wish I wish I could bring you your food. I wish you wasn't hungry. I wish I could. But you got to realize I got mouths at my house to feed, too. So if I'm running a, a zero sum game, if I'm doing drop offs, you know, three dollar for three mile fucking deliveries all damn day, making a dollar a mile deliveries all day. At the end of the day, if I do 30 fucking deliveries at three dollars, that's ninety dollars I made in one day. Ninety dollars for working like goddamn 10 hours doing 30 deliveries. 
And I'm not going to be sitting out there doing all 30 deliveries at $3 a pop, making $90 in a 10 hour day. That's $9 an hour on my own gas, wearing the tear of my car down. So no, no tip, no trip. It ain't no, like I said, it's about business. It ain't got shit to do with personal. I know a lot of people are like, well, tipping culture, people are sick of tipping culture. I'm sick of bringing fat motherfuckers burgers. That's my own personal feeling, but it's business. You give me $15, I'll bring your ass to fucking burger. That's just how it works. You can't sit around saying, I want my motherfucking burger. Here's a $3, you know, $3 even for it for three months. No, you ain't going to get that fucking burger. You're not getting it. And it ain't nothing personal. It's business. I'm sick of tipping. Then be sick of fucking eating. I mean, what else can you do at that point? It's like, you're not going to be getting no fucking food. You can't sit around sick of tipping, sick of, sick of somebody else trying to get money to take care of their life. Putting money on the line. Their car's going to get fucked up. They got to pay rent. They got to pay for fuel. They got to pay for all this shit to make it convenient for you to get this fucking burger. But you telling them, well, I don't care. I don't value that shit. They ain't got shit to do with me. Then this motherfucking burger ain't got nothing to do with me. No tip, no trip. Sorry. Fuck that burger. And motherfucking sit there for two days waiting on that burger. You can get your ass up and go get it. I mean, that's another way to solve the problem. But we need to save our time and our energy and our every people that's paying money. What up, Merle and my man? What up, Dusty Krusty? What up, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. It, it's like we don't care about, you know, people being upset about it not, you know, not getting food. Where if you don't want to fucking tip the shit, oh, I'm sick of tipping culture. I'm so sick of tipping. Then don't tip. But at the same time, realize your motherfucking IHOP going to be sitting there for two days straight. Ain't nobody. If you sign up to do this, then you should do it. Motherfucker, you ain't no fucking boss. You trying to eat a fucking pancake. You ain't no fucking boss. You eating a fucking scrambled goddamn egg. You ain't no fucking boss. You don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. Well, you shouldn't do it if you don't want. No, fuck you. You are not a boss. You a pancake eating motherfucker that won't tip. That's who you really are in like the real scheme of things. So you could be sick of tipping all you want. I ain't dropping off these motherfucking pancakes. Leave that shit sitting on the counter because somebody else out there values my time enough for me to say, hey, Jeff, my kids is really fucking hungry. I ain't got time to get home to get them no motherfucking Happy Meals. Pick up these two fucking Happy Meals. I threw a $10 tip on that motherfucker. Thank you, man, for helping me out. Oh, I got you, brother. $10 tip, $5 for three miles, you know, $15 for three miles. I'll do it. Your kids is eating the Happy Meals. They got the little fucking wimpy toys and shit or whatever they playing with. Y your kids are taken care of. Cool. Thanks, brother. No problem. But if a motherfucker tell me, I'm sick of tipping. Fuck you. You sick of eating then. That's the way I look at it. Leave that shit sitting there. If the apps don't want to pay me to bring it to you, then that shit won't be brought because you ain't paying for me to bring it to you. You done told me already. I ain't tipping. Fuck it. You ain't eating. Leave that shit sitting right there. And I'm one of those people, man. It's like, Jeff, you do personal clients too? I think about starting up a taxi service. I was thinking about it, but I don't know how it works. Yeah, you got to get like commercial insurance and stuff like that. Probably ride share insurance, commercial insurance. Man. Yeah, it's something to look into. You got to get your TCP, all your little licensing. Jennifer Rice said, I got hit behind, from the Honda in Chicago. Today was crazy. Oh, you finna get paid. Hopefully you had clients in the car with you. You finna get paid. Jennifer gonna be like, I just bought a new Lambo. <laughs> Man, thank you, Finno. Hey, appreciate that, brother. Finno says, loving the stream, champ. Thank you for what you do. Hey, man, I appreciate that, brother. Hey, and y'all gotta check out his, his uh, Instagram, Fino Boxing's Instagram. He got all boxing on there, man. It's some, it's some great clips, some great clips. I'll be seeing some crazy knockouts, man. I love that shit, man. Yeah, man, but I tell people, you know, if if these Uber Eats and, and DoorDash and all these people, they they walk around them, I was like, well, tipping culture is over. And then fucking eating culture is over. We're gonna be on a diet. We putting a lot of motherfuckers on gig work diets. You gonna you not gonna be able to eat. Motherfucker, like, damn dog, you got skinny last year. Yeah, motherfucker, stop bringing me my food. See, tipping culture helped out. Tipping culture kept your ass fed. When you lose 150 fucking pounds because you ain't tipping, motherfuckers like, what kind of diet you on? I'm on the no tip, no trip diet, motherfucker. Ain't nobody bringing me my food. These motherfuckers ain't. I lost 100 pounds from me not eating no motherfucking burgers. I don't get no burgers. I don't get no pizza. I don't get no motherfucking Dairy Queen. I don't get shit. These motherfuckers ain't bringing me nothing. That shit work out. I don't want to be on that no trip, no tip diet. Yeah, but well, just don't tip these motherfuckers. You ain't going to get no food. It's that easy. <laughs> it's like sitting around hungry all the motherfucking time. Eating on your motherfucking fingernails and shit like, eh, I don't know what I'm going to eat. Go in there, eat some motherfucking rice. Go make you some motherfucking pancakes or something in the kitchen. <laughs> well, Bridget, today I picked up a guy at Amtrak and his, and his walker wouldn't fit in the trunk. So I watched for 20 minutes adjusting the wheels so it would fit. It was so fun. 
<laughs> no, he says, I picked up a damn Amtrak. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, Briz, Matt, ain't nobody putting shit in my trunk manually. I got a really nice car. Ain't nobody scratching my trunk up. Hell no. Motherfuckers be trying to put luggage. Nope. As soon as I see luggage, I jump out because ain't nobody scratching up. My car is ceramic coated. It's a nice car. Ain't nobody smacking my shit with wheels. The other night, one dude was trying to drag his suitcase out. Nope. I'll get it. Lift it out of my trunk. If you drag it out of my trunk, you're going to scratch the whole trunk now. I'm not driving down the street with a scratched up fucking BMW. This car ain't got a scratch on it. It's nice. Almost 100,000 miles on a scratch on this motherfucker. It is nice. You can't even tell I do ride share in it. I could park this shit anywhere. Ain't nobody going to say that's a ride share car. I see some of these ride share cars. Man, the whole back be having black marks down the back where scratches, shit like that, where people be dragging their suitcases out of cars. My car will never look like that. Because I'm one of them people like, no, you are not. You're not going to lift this suitcase out of my trunk. I already know that. You're going to pull it. And when you pull it, I'm going to have these two scratches, up to four scratches from your wheels going down the back of my BMW now. And motherfuckers going to be like, oh, I know he used that car as a ride share car. Why? You see all those black marks going down? All those black marks going down the suitcase wheels. This motherfucker used that car as a ride share car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Especially if the trunk has an automatic closing function. They try to close it themselves. Yeah. Cause they end up breaking that shit. They end up breaking the motor on that. And when they break the motor on that, it's money out of your pocket Mo money. Cause all you gotta do is hit a button. You hit a button and the trunk will close on his own. You ain't got to yank on that motherfucker. Well, Fino say I always end up taking a no trip order, especially when restaurants are about to close. Uber will raise the base pay significantly to entice drivers. So I'll pull up 10, 15 minutes before they close. Yeah. Oh, I've seen some $22 shit, $22 for like four miles. Grab it, man. I'm sitting up there. Say, Hey, if I see something at a 24 hour taco stand, taco shop, $14, three miles to one of these hotels, grab it, get it. Cause that's what they're going to, they're going to raise the base price because they already know nobody's been picking up this order. It's too low. Uber didn't try to sucker people already. You know, $4, four miles. Nobody pick it up. $7, seven miles. Nobody picking that shit up. $9. Nobody. As soon as you put $14, three miles, somebody's going to get it. And whether it's a tip on and with Uber Eats, I hate late nights because you might run into the risk of possibly getting Uber, getting a uh, tip baited. You run into that risk of tip baited because these motherfuckers in these hotels, they think they slick. People at houses, houses usually don't tip, don't tip bait you. Houses won't do that. But once you start getting into these hotels, these motherfuckers know he don't know what room I'm in. I just said, just drop it off that front. So you go drop that shit off that front. Next thing you know, you'd be like, oh, shit. Motherfucker. This shit was supposed to have eight dollar tip on it. I ended up getting five dollars instead of thirteen. This motherfucker got me, man. Tip baited me. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer said, "Briz, if you were slow, I'm not gonna reverse you." <laughs> no. So I had another day where the guy was calling saying he was upstairs. What the hell am I supposed to do? Like I'm upstairs. Cool. Come on down. I'm here. I'm here. I done forty dollars for a mile. Yep. You get them, man. You get them. I'll be dropping off sandwiches and shit, $20 tips for a sandwich. I'm like, hey, I love that. I got to get back into delivery heavy. I got to get back into that shit. And what Zick says, I really haven't done any rides since they announced Lux going away. It's good side money, but that was just a slap in the face. Once they figure out what they got to pay people, I'll check back in. Oh, Zick, it's going to be interesting. I want to see Lyft's uh, revenue numbers. I want to see their gross revenue numbers for the period. From the moment they dropped it, oh, trust me, their gross revenue numbers is going to go through the floor. But they go, oh yeah, but the but the uh, profit margins went up. When the profit margins only went up because people got the the desperate the high AR drivers are taking that shit. But your gross revenue numbers are gonna go through the floor, go through the fucking floor. And I'm sitting there like Uber X numbers, or oh, their gross revenues, they're gonna have way more people picked up, way more rides, especially in the same regions. Wait, excuse me, way more rides in the same regions. Their gross revenue numbers are gonna like slap lift in the face. Their profit margins are gonna slowly increase. Because if they can keep more drivers on their platform, even the higher AR drivers are going to be helped pulling those numbers up. Lyft is going to get their ass handed to them. Lyft is going to get their ass handed to them. And I got a funny feeling. That's why those two board members said we're out of here. Because we got a lot of analysts. We got a lot of people saying shit. And drivers, we seeing them on, we're hearing the stuff, you know, the chatter on the internet and everything else like that. Lyft is about to get their ass handed to them. And I don't want to be in, I don't, I don't want to be in charge of this shit when it happens. I'm jumping shit right now. There's other things I want to do with my life other than watch this fucking ship sink. So I'm going to do some other shit with my life. I'm going to do some other endeavors. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's better that you get out and do it yourself. Plus, get stressed for a few seconds. Blood circulation, keep the wheels moving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
So Flavio says, hey, Jeff, did you hear about what's going on in Australia? The Uber is going to be forced to raise the pay because Australia said it's slavery, what Uber is doing. Oh, I kind of heard about something like that. The Australians were really upset at, at how the pay scales. But I tell people, man, Australian drivers, just like American drivers, we control the app. The apps don't control us. We control the apps the moment we know that we can decline any fucking ride we don't want. That's your sense of control right there. You are taking control because they can't force you to take any ride. If they can force us to take rides, I would say that's slavery. A lot of the high AR drivers, I think, are the slaves. They are. The low AR drivers, we ain't the slaves. We have a choice. Low AR shows that you have a brain, you have a choice, you have business analytics, you're, you're based on profits. The high AR drivers are the ones complaining. We want more pay. We want more pay. They're the ones that are over there. Fuckers, they're all high. Ask all these motherfuckers, what's your AR? Guaranteed, the majority of the people in those crowds got high AR. Guaranteed. The low AR people, we know we ain't slaves. They trying to make us slaves. We can see that because they like the slaves. They like the high AR people. They love those motherfuckers. If you renting, you're a slave. Especially if you're renting with a high AR, you really a slave. If you're renting with a high AR, you a real slave. But the moment we sit around and we show them that we control the app because you ain't making no revenue until we click accept. If we keep clicking decline, there's no revenue transpiring. Decline, no revenue, decline, no revenue, decline, no revenue. Accept. Now you're going to get revenue. So if I'm only if I'm only picking up one out of every, let's say, five rides, 20% AR, one out of every five, you're not getting all the potential revenue that's out there. You're only getting 20% of the potential revenue. That's 80% of the revenue sitting on the boards that you may not get. 80% of the revenue you're losing. You're losing it, the potential of getting that because you got a lot of low AR people going decline, decline, decline. Okay, accept. And if everybody did that, we control the apps now. Because they're not making no money off declines. They don't make they make money off of cancels. So they love if we accept it. And if we had to cancel for whatever reason, or the, the rider had to cancel for it, they still get money on that. They get money on cancels, but they don't get shit on declines. And once all these people that are out there protesting and saying they're bringing up a good point, I believe they bring up a good point that the pay is too low. And I think drivers in the daytime are paid way less compared to what they should be paid for drivers in the night. I believe that that's could be a really good argument. But as far as saying, you know, they want a minimum wage. Not, no, no, we don't want no minimum wage. Because if you've got a minimum wage, that means you have a maximum wage. I don't want no minimum wage. I just want good opportunities. Because you, you can't put a floor on me and you ain't putting no ceiling on me. I'm going to accept what I think is, is good for my situation. I don't want to be deemed or reprimanded for that. Give me the opportunity to say, hey, I want to be able to accept or decline rides without being throttled. You can't throttle me. You can't, you know, string me out. You can't do this. You got to give me the opportunity to say whether or not I could do this or not. And if I say no to five of them because you sent out five shitty ones, you can't throttle me. You can't kick me offline. You can't reprimand me for doing good business for myself. You can't reprimand me for that. So if people are out there arguing about, we want better pay, we want better pay, you have the power in your hands. It's called the decline fucking button. That's it. You can, all these little shit rides they taking, they mad the whole time. I can't believe I'm taking this fucking 50 cent amount fucking ride. Well, you the idiot. You took a trip with no tip if you're doing delivery. You the idiot. Don't blame DoorDash. Don't blame Uber Eats. You the fool. You the fool that took that shit knowing what it was. Well, I was hoping it was going to be. Motherfucker, hope don't pay the bills. Hope don't. You can't call your landlord, man. I hope I can pay for this place. No, motherfucker, you better pay for this place. Hope don't pay shit around here. So you can't take no orders and, well, I hope I get a tip. No. You can you can get a, a better fare if the apps have to pay you to get that, that job done. Because the apps are saying, we don't have to pay these people to get the job done. Because they get these motherfuckers a free hot dog at 7-Eleven. They get one free hot dog a week. They get a free fucking soda. We give them a free fucking bag of chips. All they got to do is keep their AR above 85%. And these broke motherfuckers riding around eating some old dusty ass hot dogs, drinking some flat ass non-carbonated Sprites, drinking motherfucking, exactly, and all them goddamn diamond rewards. So you sitting there gotten these people doing all that shit, but it's like you won't allow these people to make money the right way. 
The right way is allowing us to decline everything and not throttling us, not punishing us for saying this is a bad transaction for me. I don't want to do this transaction. And if the app says, well, it's a bad transaction for us, then apparently the customer shouldn't be. You shouldn't let that customer do that transaction. If you say, well, this guy just ordered one hundred dollars worth of pizza, hundred dollars worth of pizza is probably 10, 15 motherfucking pizzas. You're not giving me three dollars to bring 10, 15 fucking pizzas for one mile. You're not giving me three dollars for that. For me to bring 10, 15 pieces, at least give me 15 bucks, 20 bucks for the mile. I'll take it. But you ain't going to sit up there and be like, oh, man, we're going to give you three. We're going to give you base fare. It's only a mile. You get base fare. No, the motherfucking pieces can sit right where they at. You putting all them greasy ass motherfucking pieces in my car, putting grease on all my shit. I got to wipe all my shit down in the trunk because I keep my trunk clean. I got grease spots. Motherfucking goddamn sauce, marinara sauce done spilled some fucking where I got to clean that shit for three fucking dollars. No, I'll be the idiot for taking that shit. I'm the idiot for taking it. I can't blame DoorDash. DoorDash is like, man, we just made fucking $14, $15 on that order, and we gave that motherfucker $3. He's stupid. They would be right. They would be right. And the people would be like, well, we're not obligated to tip you. They're right, too. We're not obligated to tip you. You the motherfucker that took it for $3. You the idiot. Everybody's right. And the idiot is mad outside going, we deserve more money. Give me more money. You the idiot. Decline that shit. The money is on the table. We've been showing people the money is on the table. We've been declining rides. Oh, you guys are stupid for declining that. You're stupid. Well, you stupid for standing in the street fucking protesting low fares. That's what I think. So we both stupid motherfuckers. But one of us got a better bank account than the other stupid motherfucker. My bank account looks good. I'm the stupid motherfucker with the good money. You the stupid motherfucker with no money. So we different. We can both be stupid. You stupid. You declining that. You declining. You, I would have took that. You're stupid. You're an idiot. You declining that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stupid. Yeah, I'm stupid. But I ain't stressing right now. I'm sitting okay right now. I got emergency money right now. My motherfucking engine blow. I got seven Gs. I can go give me a new engine. It's going to hit me hard. It's hit me hard as a motherfucker. It's going to hit me hard. But I got seven Gs of my motherfucking engine blow. Engine transmission assembly. Seven Gs. Ship it to my house. Here, seven Gs right here. I install that shit myself. But if you're going to sit there, you got high AR, no fucking money in the bank, and you calling somebody else stupid, you in the wrong fucking business. I mean, you you sat in there telling yourself who the stupid one really is. I mean, you're sitting there with your ARs and they're, oh, well, we shouldn't have to take these orders with no tips. You don't have to. Who the fuck said you have to? You're not obligated to. They're not obligated to fucking tip you. You're not obligated to pick up these soggy ass fucking pancakes either. Leave that shit sitting on the counter. If the motherfucking butter soak all the way through the fucking pancake, through the motherfucking container, through the motherfucking countertop, and got butter on the fucking floor because they didn't tip, that's their fucking problem. They can try again tomorrow with a tip. Because by the time they get them soggy-ass motherfucking pancakes, the butter has completely evaporated. The fucking syrup has evaporated. The fucking container got a hole in the bottom. I ain't leaving no tip for this. Well, you left it sitting up there for four fucking hours because you wouldn't apply a tip. So some high AR motherfucker came skipping along for, you know, a base fare of $1.85 for two miles and brought you those nasty ass pancakes. That's on you now. You could have got the shit a lot faster had you put a tip, but you ain't obligated to tip just like you ain't obligated to get no fresh pancakes. You got these motherfuckers. Deal with it. And that's just how I roll is I tell motherfuckers it ain't personal with business. Because I'm not going to sit up there. And run myself into the ground, run myself ragged, run my car ragged. When I got companies telling me, Jeff, you don't have to take this shit if you don't want it. When I got a customer telling me, you don't have to pick up my shit because I don't have to tip you. When I got two people telling me exactly what I need to hear to make this decision. Two people telling me, Jeff, you don't got to pick up the order. I don't have to fucking tip you. Who's the idiot if I bring that order? I don't feel sorry for these motherfuckers a lot of times. I really don't. I see people being mad, kicking motherfucking chicken bags and shit, throwing boxes over the fucking fence. What you mad for? You accepted it. Punch yourself in the face, motherfucker. Kick yourself in the nuts. It's like, you the one who did it. Be mad at you. <laughs> and go home. I mean, I'm mad at myself. Why? Because I keep taking these dumbass orders. I'm mad at myself. Yeah, be mad at you. Because it's, it's you. We control these apps. Zick said, wow, this guy's AR is 99%. Get this man a VIP table immediately. This motherfucker sitting at IHOP at the VIP section with a motherfucking, a goddamn one of them disco balls spinning over his fucking head. That's the high AR VIP table. 
where we only take 20 minutes to bring you this fucking order. Three dollars for five miles. <laughs> it's like shit. So we control what we make. So it's kind of hard to ask these apps for shit. I ain't never asked these motherfuckers for nothing. I ain't never sent them motherfuckers a message. Hey, can you do me a favor? And No, fuck them. I don't need no favor for you. I just need you to not try to discipline me when I reject dumb shit. That's all. I know it's dumb shit. You know it's dumb shit. Don't throttle me. Just do that for me. That's it. Let me work. Let me do me. Let me analyze. Let me break this shit. That's all I ask for. I don't need no minimum. I don't need no motherfucking, can you help me? I don't need none of that shit. Just don't fuck with me when I'm out here working. If you sending out shit and it ain't nothing but shit, I'll just go home. I'm done for the night. I'm done. You don't have me as a driver for the night. We're not, I'm not contracting you with you for the night. I'll go home for the night. But if there's good money out there, give me the opportunity to make it. If I got to decline two or three, don't like these orders, nature hikes and shit like that, don't throttle me. Don't do me like that. Because you know it's shit. You know it and I know it. Don't be mad at me company be like well we're trying to make money too then pay me because if you take an 85 dollars for a ride leaving the airport you take an 85 for that but you give me 28 just because it's fucking you know 20 miles no fuck that no no if you take an 85 for that give me 45 you take 40 i call that a good deal that's a good deal but yet these apps they want to see drivers like me as a threat to their profit line i see these apps as a threat to me taking care of my family because if you're going to go out there and break my car down, break me, have me evicted next month because I can't come up with the rent by the third or the fourth or the fifth or whatever day it'd be. If I can't do all that, then you are a threat to my survival. Because now I got to go take the car back because I can't afford it. You done ran into the ground. My trade in is real too fucking low. Depreciation done killed this motherfucker. So now I got to turn around and, and move from a, you know, a four bedroom house down to a one bedroom condo with a roommate. My room is the fucking patio. I got to sleep on the fucking patio now. And I got four fucking dogs. The dogs get the living room. I get the patio. What the fuck? How, how kind of shit is that? So these motherfucking, these apps can run you ragged. They ain't calling you, checking on you. Hey, man, we see you not making a lot of money. We see you doing some high AR shit. Are you going to make rent this month? Is it cool? Is everything? Do we need to give you an advance on motherfucking, you know, ride share money? Can we, can we help you with your rent this month so you ain't stressing about that? These motherfuckers, they don't call you about that. They're not calling you for that. They're going to run your ass into the ground. And when, you, and when you can't drive, the first thing they're going to say is, well, we got a rental. We got a Tesla rental, motherfucker. He'll do that. This is pro tip. Create, create a contest for extreme rides on your channel. <laughs> extreme rides. Like motherfucker off-roading and shit, going over curbs and all that. Roland says, I'm thinking of trading my Tesla 3 performance for a Model Y, black color. I keep hearing the Model Y is the best one for ride share. They say the model, the Model Y is the best for ride share because you can get all the tiers with that. Yeah, so I'm I'm sitting there looking at oh JTB's in the house, get some shitty crusty garbage. What up, <laughs> Dara? I know that's funny shit. And I tell people, man, if if you want to sit up there and and like Australia's doing, and say we we're asking you, asking you for better fares, but you're taking shit fares. That's like you saying, Jeff, we want chocolate chip cookies instead of these fucking sugar cookies you keep getting us. Well, why do you keep eating the fucking sugar cookies when I'm putting them on the table? When I put the sugar cookies on the table, if you don't want them, I should see the same amount of sugar cookies on the table when I come back. But when the motherfuckers is all gone, I'm saying they like sugar cookies. These motherfuckers love sugar because every time I put 12 sugar cookies on the table, I leave and come back. It's only one left. These motherfuckers love these sugar cookies. If you want chocolate chip cookies, I should come back and see 12 motherfucking sugar cookies on the table. That will let me know. Y'all ain't eating this shit. So when people tell me they don't like the fares that's out there, but Uber's like, they're clearing out our queue. All these shit fares are gone. That tells me y'all like shit fares. That's what it tells me. I should come back to the queue and see the same amount of rides sitting there. I should be like, damn, we put 100 rides in the queue. It's 100 rides still in the fucking queue. What the fuck? That means Uber ain't making no money. Lyft ain't making no money. All right, Flavio, my man. Gomez, hey, got to go, Jeff. Thanks for spreading the knowledge, brother. Real shit, brother. Real shit, man. Y'all be safe out there. It's a crusty world. <laughs> Flavio said, it's a crusty world. Old crusty, dusty motherfuckers trying to get us. <laughs> Emmanuel, you right. That rental program is dumb, man. They getting people, man. 
But as drivers, we control how this shit works and we don't even realize how we control it. Because if I left 100 rides in the queue and never took a single one of them, how much money does the app make? Because at some point, even the people that are paying for programs and shit, like the riders that say, hey, I got the rider package on this program. At some point, they're going to cancel their rider package because they say, I got the rider package with you guys and I never get a ride because Uber's not paying the drivers well enough. So the people are going to cancel their rider package and go over to Lyft. Lyft rides, oh man, I always get a ride on Lyft. This is crazy because Lyft might be paying better. No telling. Yep, gig ass requires to be ignorant for them to succeed. Real shit, real shit. Oh, ride flow. I heard that. Yep. And somebody said it's true. I think Cod Mobile said, yep, that uh, Hertz is now making Tesla rentals pay for their tires. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. JTB is mostly is, is mutually exclusive. We have to feel so they can succeed. So if I don't want none of these hundred shit trips, I shouldn't be taking none of them. I shouldn't be taking these sugar cookies, eating the motherfuckers crumbs all over my fucking shirt. Man, these old nasty ass fucking sugar cookies. Fuck these sugar cookies. I can't stand fucking sugar. But I'm eating this motherfucker the whole time and it's crumbling all over my shirt. I got sugar cookies all in my seat, all in the floor. The dogs is eating the shit off the floor. But I'm complaining about these sugar cookies, but I'm eating these motherfuckers every time they put them out. Same with these rides. Stop taking these rides. Don't get in the cookie van. <laughs> Real shit. People complaining about the rides. A lot of rides I laugh at. I'll be like, doubt it. Shit. I ain't going for that. No, I can't do that. Nope, not for me. I'm cool on that shit. I let people know right up the front when I'm I'm selecting rides why I'm not taking them. And so if any of the employees or the people at Uber, why is Jeff not taking this ride? Dude, it's $36. It's $36. I'm like, yeah, it's $36 for 45 miles, man. $36 is taking me 52 minutes. 30, I can make $60 in one hour. Why do I want 36? And then I got to drive 45 miles that way when I can sit in my own region right by my house, make 60 bucks. And then only got like a three mile ride home after I'm done. I can make 60 bucks an hour in my own region and have a three mile ride home instead of making 36 and 52 minutes driving 45 miles that way. Then I got a 52, a 45 mile ride all the way back home again. I just went 90 miles to make $36 when I could make 60 in my own little region doing little shit trips and I'm right back home in three miles. And so I tell people, if you keep taking this shit, they're going to keep putting this shit on the table. You keep taking these rotten ass hot dogs. They're going to keep putting these rotten ass hot dogs on the table. Who's eating these hot dogs? These motherfuckers, the buns all crusty and shit. And you still biting into the motherfuckers. Stop eating that shit. I tell motherfuckers, I don't want no mashed potatoes. I'm cool on that shit. Do not put mashed potatoes on my plate. I don't want mashed potatoes. I'll eat red beans and rice. I'll eat, you know, some steak. I'll eat some pizza. But I ain't eating no motherfucking mashed potatoes. So when I see mashed potatoes, I just don't eat it. I let them know I don't like mashed potatoes. You don't sit there and eat the shit. And then when they say, well, you've been eating the mashed potatoes. Why? You didn't like it? No, I didn't like it. Well, you've been eating the shit for a whole year. Why didn't you just say you didn't like it? We thought you liked it, so we kept feeding it to you. That's shit fares. When we stop taking them, the price has to go up. The rods have to, the price has to go up. The fares have to go up. The percentages have to go up. All this shit has to go up if you stop taking them. So for people to sit around and beg these apps for more money is laughable. These apps don't give a shit about drivers. How many times have we said that? To sit in their face begging them for more money. They like, the choice is yours. You've been, you've been accepting shit. So we've been giving you what you like. Uber used to send me messages sometimes. We noticed you've been declining a lot of rides lately. What type of rides do you like? I'll be putting high profit, low miles. I'll be putting that shit. Leave a comment, high profit, low miles. And now I turn around and what happened? I'm getting a lot of high profit, low mile rides. Holy shit. Why? Because I don't eat fucking mashed potatoes. Is You can make more if Uber died. Yeah, that's the thing. Uber is, Uber is worldwide. Uber is in every country on this fucking planet almost. Lyft would die before Uber died. Lyft is only nationwide. They're, they're only North American. And it's hard to see that uh, just a basically North American company can exceed an international company. For, for Uber to die, it's got to die in every market. Every market it has to die. Because you got to understand, Americans travel. A lot of Americans travel all over the world. The American dollar, it's, it's expensive to live in America. So when we go to Mexico, we go to Thailand, we go to fucking Korea, we go to, you know, to Guam, we, we leave a motherfuckers a $20 tip. We thinking $20 is like, oh, it's what I leave in America. 
these motherfuckers are like $20. This is like a $100 bill to me, man. What the fuck? You just gave me a $100 bill. That's what it's like around the world. So those markets, as long as they get tourism and Americans and people in expensive places traveling to less expensive places, these drivers are making some serious bank because we're treating them like they're in America. We say, hey, here's $5. $5 tip. We like, oh, here you go, $5. They're like, dude, five, this is like 50 bucks. What the fuck? This dude just gave me like 50 bucks pretty much. And so it's going to be hard for Uber to die because Uber is worldwide. They've got money that Lyft don't have. They've got drivers that Lyft don't have. So when we starting to leave tips all over the way, and that's why it was funny because there's a reason why you, like on the the, uh, the Russia Professor channel, he had that weird app that was people was getting $11,000 and $7,000 all that shit. It was, it was funny because all those currencies and all those words were in foreign languages. They weren't in English. Every screenshot he showed, none of them were in English, not a single one. So it made me think that all that shit was like not even converted into a U.S. currency. It had a dollar sign next to it, but it wasn't U.S. currency. I think the apps were putting shit into U.S. dollar currency, but it was not converted to what they were from. Because like $7,000 a week in that whatever they were working in those many hours and shit like that really converts to about 12, 1300 U.S. dollars, which is normal. So when they were showing me all these screenshots on this channel, I'm looking at this channel and I'm like, why is this currency not converted? Why, why are the words not converted over to English? So if the words are not converted over to English, that means the currency, because I do foreign translations all the time. I tell everybody in some of my videos I do, I do foreign translations, at least 30 foreign translations a day. 30 translations a day I do every single day. I'm on Google Translator. I got the shit saved in my fucking favorite because I use it all the fucking time. So why is the screens and all that shit still in another fucking language? Because when I do my foreign currency translations, when I do them, guess what? The U.S. dollars are still there when I'm doing my foreign. When I tell somebody $800 for a week, this and that, it's in all their language. But there's a dollar sign, the eight, a zero, zero point zero zero. It never converts to their currency. It never because I have to go into a currency converter to change my 800 to their currency, then convert my language over to their language. It would take an extra step. So when I'm seeing all these screens on this channel, all the language is converted into a foreign language, but the currency is still U.S. So that tells me that that currency is not U.S. currency. It's a foreign currency. Eleven thousand dollars a week. Uber wouldn't let that shit fly. That currency was never converted over. That's why I think it's bullshit. You've never seen that shit nowhere else except on his channel. You've never seen that shit nowhere. And there's people walking around. Oh, yeah, they're, they're fucking with him. They're fucking with him. Oh, yeah, we got this app and we get all this money. Well, how come it's not in U.S. dollars? Because when you work on the app in America, it's English. You can put a different language on your app here. But guess what? It's going to convert. So once you do the conversions and everything like that, why do we not have it in English? You never see those numbers with English writing or nothing behind it. That's why I tell people, man. You got to watch who the fuck you listen to because some of this shit is garbage, man. Some of this shit is straight garbage. And I'm not saying like the Roger Professor is garbage, but I'm saying the shit he was showing in that video don't make sense to me because I do 30 currency. I do 30 translations a day. I do Zulu, Somali. I do Dutch, Netherlands, French, Canada, Portuguese in Brazil, Portuguese in Portugal. I do what? Fucking Chinese simplified Chinese traditional Hong Kong and Singapore. I do Africans. I do Bosnian. I do motherfucking uh, Bangla in India, Bangla. I mean, I got Turkish, Thai, Vietnamese, Zulu, all these motherfuckers. I got to goddamn break down all these translations. I got to break down every fucking day. Hindi, Hindi, do that shit. Everything I'm doing every day, German. Do all that shit. And all the dollar signs are always whatever I put on there. They never convert over. What lets me know. Those screens are not converted to U.S. None of that shit's U.S. It's all foreign fucking currency. Everything's foreign. So if you do a foreign currency translator and you type those numbers into a foreign translator, you're going to get thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a week, which is what everybody's fucking making. And I'm like, it's not amazing. <laughs> Sounds like a date nap resume. I'm telling you. No, it's YouTube. I'm telling you right now. YouTube is worldwide. Because I, like I said, I got friends. One of my son's teachers was over in um in Thailand. She lives in Thailand. Her and her husband lives in Thailand. He's a Thai guy. 
there in Thailand. She used to live in Vegas. She was teaching in Vegas. She hit me up one day on, on uh, Instagram and I told people this story and I showed them all the screenshots of me in her conversation. She says, Jeff, I'm sitting here at the gas station and I'm looking at this, uh, this thing by the airport and it's got your video plan. Your YouTube video is playing, Jeff, in Thailand right now. And she screenshotted all the shit and showed it all. So they had my videos, all y'all names, all y'all chat, all y'all shit going on my channel, sitting over in Thailand in real time. I was online and y'all were all making comments and we were being played in Thailand. And she screenshotted all the shit and showed it all while she was sitting there at the fucking airport. That's why I translate all my shit to different languages. There's Americans all over this world. I have to be in search engines all over the world for people to find me. There's drivers all over the world. There's drivers in Thailand. There's drivers in Korea. There's drivers in China. There's drivers everywhere driving Uber. They may not drive Lyft, but they all drive Uber because Uber's worldwide. So we pushed this strategy. Everything y'all saying, Zick, Shuggy Shug, Adolphus, Doc, JTB, all y'all. Motherfuckers right now, overseas right now, reading what y'all writing. Listen to what y'all, because of the way I market my channel. My channel is worldwide. And I don't do it for me. I do it because there's too many smart drivers on this fucking channel for y'all not to be known globally of how y'all doing this shit. KC Biz Strategist, Juan Vargas, King James, all you motherfuckers, man. When I push shit out there, Logan, I push shit out there to let everybody know. I do a lot of work behind the scenes on this channel to make sure all you drivers, if y'all got some shit to say, somebody gonna hear that shit. We got 7 billion people on this planet. Somebody probably not need to hear what you gotta say. And I'm gonna make sure it gets to them. That's what I do with this shit. I don't just sit on it right here in the United States. United States is cool, but United States is not the planet. So when I push this channel out to 35 countries a day, well, 35 languages, I do 35 languages a day, 35 languages. And some languages are spoken in multiple countries. Therefore, just think of every language is in, is in two countries. That could be up to 70 countries I'm marketing this channel in every day, 70 countries. Sometimes you might get four countries. That's 120 countries we're in every day. And that's everybody. Emmanuel, they do it. Man, I'm going to tell you something about YouTube. YouTube does what YouTube does. I think YouTube is trying to push, you know, they're trying to push uh, YouTube premium. YouTube premium is the point where you don't get ads on anything. But we get a cut of the premium money because you bought premium. So you don't have, like I have Spotify premium, Spotify premium. I don't get no ads on Spotify, but it costs me money to do it because when I'm driving with people and I'm rolling, I don't have commercials and shit when I'm riding with people doing stuff. So I got to pay to be in a certain class of that app to where I don't get commercials. YouTube, I got to go get YouTube premium because sometimes when I'm watching people's videos, I may not want to have, you know, ads play. So. If you don't want to see commercials, there's a way to do it. But a lot of people want free shit for free forever. Somebody's got to pay for this shit. YouTube covers everything, but they do it through ad revenue. And I tell people, if you don't want to see ads, you can do like me when the Spotify pay for that shit. You won't see them because I don't expect shit for free. I work my ass off every day. I don't expect shit for free. Oh, yeah, they do it all the time and they do it all the time on my channel. But I'm a person that I understand how business works. I understand how economy works. I understand why things are the way. Somebody's got to pay for YouTube servers. Somebody's got to pay for the fact that we can open this motherfucking app every day. Somebody's got to pay for it. You see his advertisers paying for it because we ain't paying for the shit. And I don't expect nothing for free. So that means I got to watch ads for a minute. And I do. I watch them. But I understand why I'm seeing them because I haven't paid the money to not see them. On Spotify, I've paid the money to not see them. On YouTube, I've got to pay the money to not see them. That's just how the world works. That's how that shit works. And I understand why it works the way, because I used to be corporate most of my life and I understand how shit really goes. And some things are used to pay for other things. They use advertising revenue to pay for the salaries of the people running their servers. They use it to pay for the actual infrastructure. They use an ad revenue for all that shit. They use it for everything. And all we do is create content to make sure people are on their platform and not on TikTok, not on Netflix, not on Hulu, but on YouTube. And advertisers say we got more people on YouTube. Therefore, we're going to advertise on YouTube. The people that want to see the ads or are going to see the ads just don't pay for YouTube premium. The people on Spotify that when I had Spotify first and I didn't have Spotify premium, I would have to wait till ads finish playing just to give somebody a fucking song they requested. That shit sucked. I'm a professional motherfucker. Professional. I'm a professional motherfucker. So when I'm in these streets and somebody say, hey, I want to hear fucking Doja Cat. I go Doja Cat. Shit plays instantly. 
because I paid for Spotify Premium. Back then, I used to put in Doja Cat. Had to hear a motherfucking commercial. By the time the commercial was done, we already had the goddamn house. So this is how the world works. Like I said, I don't expect shit for free, but I understand why things are set up the way they're set up. And I tell people, like, like when I was talking about, you know, advertising, there's my channel. Like I said, I do all the back end work for it. I don't hire nobody to do shit on my channel because I like my shit done a certain way. I'm an accountant. I'm OCD with my shit. I'm an accountant. I've always been an accountant. Always been OCD. Always worked on my own cars. Always did my own housework. I always did my own shit because I like shit a certain way. So when I do my website, it takes a lot of time. That's why I tell people I make probably a dollar an hour on YouTube. I make a dollar per hour. It takes me 30 hours to make 30 bucks in my car. I can go out and make $20. That's why I drive because I'm like, I drive still because I can make, you know, $60 an hour driving. $60 an hour is like 60 days on YouTube. And one day of me driving is what I pretty much make in, in like 60 days. Cause I'll make it or 60 hours. I make like a dollar an hour dead serious, but I don't mind. Because when you look at the benefits of what we do, how we spread this shit all over the world, how we spread it all over the nation, all these drivers, you motherfuckers are like characters in the movie. Real shit. What up, Steven? I'll see you, man. Sugar said, preach. Let the church say amen. <laughs> but when I do the back end work for all this, I make sure not just these videos are seen, but you as drivers, what you're saying is being seen. What you're showing in the comments is being seen. What you're saying in the chat is being seen. I do that for the ride share community. I'm not the only fucking driver here. I'm not. I just got the microphone and the camera. The drivers are in the chat. The drivers are in the comments on these videos. The drivers are the ones giving this information, telling people I made this much in three hours a day. Thanks to doing this, 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 and this. The drivers are the proof of who we are as a community. And I share that shit with as many countries as I can share because we some hardworking motherfuckers. All of us ain't out here begging for money. We not begging for money. We're figuring out how to make money. We letting the apps do what the apps do because they need to make that money. All right, Devon. Hey, be, be easy out there, Mr. Jordan. Good night, everyone. Jeff, keep up the great work. Keep them wheels moving. Real shit, brother. Real. And you know we will, man. I'm going to be off this thing in about shit, 30 minutes. I'm at four. This is supposed to be a two-hour live. I'm at four hours right now. We get it in. We get it in. <laughs> but when I'm doing this, Emmanuel, too, when I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I do all the back end work. So this channel shows up in all search engines in all different languages in all different parts of the world because there's drivers who will copy what you said and they will translate it so they understand what's going on. They will put it in Bangla. They'll put it in Turkish. They'll put it in Somali, Persian. I do Persian in Afghanistan. They'll do they'll put it in Persian because they may want to know how is this driver making this money? What is this driver talking about? And then they can also go to, to uh, auto format because I publish all my shit in closed captions. Everything's published in closed captions. So they can read what I'm saying. If they don't understand what I'm saying, they can at least read what I'm saying. And this is not just for me. It's for all these drivers that are on my channel. These people know y'all names like y'all are characters in the movie. They know who King James is. They know who Juan Vargas is. They know who, you know, Bigfoot Dasher is. They know who, you know, Rod Flow is. They know who winner is. They know who all these people are on this channel. Because I make sure that I talk to the drivers, that the drivers, are, you are not just screen names on my shit. Y'all not just screen names. Y'all are real people with real families, real kids saying, mom. And you may not go to school. You may not go to college. You may not, but this might be the seminar you need to hear for 30 minutes today. 20 minutes a day. I'll pay the rest later. I, I just need to hear this a little bit today. I'll play the rest later. This might be the seminar you needed to hear to get out in them streets to make that money. Because like I said, not everybody values drivers. They think we don't deserve the money. Motherfuckers out crying right now in Australia about the money. Shit, how many times have we yelled and screamed and cried at these motherfucking apps about the money? And what do they keep doing? Taking the money. So the trick is not in crying to these motherfuckers, not asking them for that's not the trick. The trick is to go out and get it. And this is a go out and get it channel. But it's not just going out, logging hours and aimlessly driving around, letting the apps do what they want to do. We say you have to have a strategy, even when other drivers, oh, there's no such thing as strategy with Rod Cherry just getting in and drive. That's stupid to hear that as strategy. That same motherfucker make about $100 in like 10 hours of driving. And we sitting here making in three hours, 250, three hours, 130 four hours, 
because we're using a strategy to do this. Not everybody's going to understand what we're doing in this code because not everybody understands trigonometry. Not everybody understands algebra. Not everybody understands business calculus. Not everybody understands fucking neuroscience, botany. So you don't have to understand every fucking thing. You just respect that it does exist. I know quantum physics exists. I know it exists because I know people that do it. Do I understand it? Fuck no. But I don't disrespect it just because I don't understand it. I say, damn, man, that's some serious quantum physics shit, man. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, poop. I'll holler at you, dog. I don't walk into a quantum physics fucking lab. All oh, you people are fucking stupid. This is the dumbest shit I ever heard. This is a, but, but that's what they do on these. They don't understand what we're doing and how we making the money we making. And instead of understanding that shit and trying to understand how to do it, they walk in the fucking door mad at it. They mad that they don't understand quantum physics. Well, this shit is do. Uh, what, what I was heard was, you know, this is stupid. I don't understand why you do. And you guys don't know what you're doing now is that you just don't understand, man. It's cool not to understand. It's a lot of shit I don't even understand. But I'm willing to sit and listen. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to fucking go back and forth, have a conversation about it. That's right, Daniel and Steven. And I'm cool with that. I'm cool with not understanding because there will be a point when that light will come on and I will have that understanding now. Oh, this is what you mean. This is what he. Oh, I get it now. I get it now. But for somebody to walk right into a room, see what's on the fucking chalkboard, get mad and turn around and walk out, yell at the class. and walk, That's their fucking problem. But the class is going to learn something. When everybody leaves the class, everybody was like, dude, I'm glad I came to class today because I almost missed this motherfucker. But I'm glad I came. Because it might not even be the teacher that says some shit. It might be the student next to you that brings up a question that you say, I never thought of that. It could be the student behind you that gives a response. I never thought of that. It could be the student on the left of you that says, you know, X, Y, Z. And you go, holy shit, I never thought. So sometimes it's the atmosphere. It ain't the teacher. It ain't the class. It ain't the, it's the atmosphere. And when you have a channel that's an atmosphere type of channel, you're going to get some shit out of this. You're going to get some benefit out of this because it's the atmosphere. And when you put people in the atmosphere of stupidity, yelling, anger, lack of fucking compassion for drivers. Like I said, I'm a night driver, but I got heart for the day drivers. I know what these motherfuckers going through because I've tried it before. When you lack all of that and you don't have that environment around you of ride share, that environment of wanting to help people out, help out this motherfucker in the daytime driving because he got to be home for these three kids at night. He can't be a night driver. So I need to keep my ass in the house and I need to do nights. The money is out there, but you got to share the wealth. You got to share the market with everybody. Understand what parts of the market you can you can like capitalize on. They understand what parts they can capitalize on. And together you figure that shit out. Just like when I leave big ass rides going to Casa Ground for Frank, I leave rides for him. I leave rides going out west for Wild Vargas. Leave them rides for him. A lot of rides in Tempe that's going downtown to uh, Phoenix. Sometimes King James might be like, dude, I need that fucking ride. Guess what? I'm not trying to go to Phoenix. I'm trying to go to Gilbert. I'll leave that shit for him. So a lot of people out there, especially drivers out there, they don't have a heart for what we got a heart for. They don't do it the way we do it. And it's cool. They just don't understand it yet. They ain't there yet. And there was a point in time when I wasn't here. I was not always at this point. Had I been at this point when I first started, there would be no need for this fucking shit. But we learned a lot. We went through a lot. We're sharing a lot. Logan Belly, my man, like Logan, he, he shared the whole QR code shit with me. He shared that shit with me. I fucking hurry up and got me one. But now I got to go put Zell on one. I got to do another one and do Zell on it. <laughs> but still, at least I'm going to have two now. So if one gets fucked up, I got another one. But that's what we do. We share information so we can help each other out. We see in this world that we live in, we see where people struggle. They struggle with bills mainly. Finance is the number one struggle in this world, finances. And when you got somebody sitting next to you going, I want to help you out a little bit with your finances. You got to respect that motherfucker because right now they probably went through some shit in life to where they know what you could potentially go through and how they're going to keep you from going through that. Then they're going to beat you down like a lot of these channels will beat you down. I'm better than you. I'm the king of this shit. You ain't nothing compared to me. I've been the best driver in my area my whole life. I've been the best driver. Ain't no other driver around here better than me. Y'all should listen to me. I'm the best. I can't fuck with people like that. I can't fuck with people like that. Because sometimes you put yourself so high up on a motherfucking pedestal. You up in the clouds and you can't even see down past the clouds to see as people in the valley sit on there struggling and shit. You way too fucking high up for me. I can't fuck with you. Because I'm always in the trenches. I'm always in these trenches. I'm always in these fucking streets. Always. And people say, well, you're a YouTuber. I don't get paid shit off of YouTube. Like I said, I make about a dollar an hour. I put a, I put clearly, easily, about a thousand hours a fucking month dealing with this fucking shit. I swear it feels like that. 
always fucking editing, always recording, always going through administration, always, you know, making sure I'm in other markets. I can go to any fucking, you know, market I want to go into and I can type in my channel in that market. It comes up in that fucking language. I'm like, cool. My videos is in fucking, you know, Guam right now. Perfect. My videos in the Philippines. Perfect. Like it. I'm glad it's in Vietnam right now. Cool. That's cool. But I don't just do that for me and my channel. I do that because there's a lot of drivers on here. A lot of drivers on here with information that can help somebody out that's in the exact same position. And if we don't share, I'm telling you, man, these apps, they're going to have us looking like Australia down there crying in the motherfucking street. Walking around with popsicle sticks and motherfucking poster boards. Man, I'm going to protest. I'm a protest. I'm going to protest. Fuck that. Yeah. Dre says, I got beat down my ride share. I quit yesterday. I'm pivoting in delivery. Appreciating all the advice I got from this page. It'd be like that, brother. Some of these markets out here are rugged. Some of these markets are rugged. Like I said, the Vegas market, the Miami markets, you know, the L.A. markets, these markets are rugged out there, brother. They rugged. And you got to do what's mentally better for you. I mean, if you got, like I said, I had a headache for like two or three days last week. I couldn't even drive. Like it was a Friday. I couldn't even drive. I had to just call it good. I drove for like two hours and I'm done and my head is hurting too much. This shit will beat you down. Mentally, it will fuck you up. And like I said in one of my videos one time, these motherfuckers got PTSD. A lot of drivers got PTSD. They got PTSD. They get beat down by this shit. Even when they go back to a W-2, they remember the money. They remember the downloading $300, $400. They remember that shit. It's PTSD, man. They send it a W-2. Slow money. Slow money. I know nothing. <laughs> Jeff Watts for president. Coming from I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what's up thank you thank you a profit go get a logan yeah but these people they'll have p they're sending a w2 making slow money 17 an hour 18 19 an hour they'll never download that much money a day they gotta wait two weeks for a paycheck one week for a paycheck they gotta learn how to budget they've got to learn how to budget yeah i'm doing extra comfort steven yep i did a video about my car qualifying i got the email saying i qualified for it at least until april so i got it till april on lyft but when they when they used to that fast money that download two fifty a day three hundred a day you used to download some good days five six hundred a day you used to download that and all of a sudden you not ride share no more you had a W two you can't do that download you got a bill coming up on Wednesday but you got to wait till Friday it's slow money you get PTSD because you ain't used to that feeling you're not used to that you used to downloading two fifty shooting that money over for the bill real quick next two days working you used to that. So rideshare gets into the mentality of who you are, gets into the psyche. And if it takes you too far down, too far, you got to come up for air. You got to say, you know what, man, I'm cool on rideshare for a minute. I'm going to do delivery. I'm going to go. You got to come up for air sometimes because this shit will take you down a fucking path and it will beat you up and have you yelling in a fucking car and shit like that. So you got to, like I said, Dre, at least you, you know your limits, you know your limits. And a lot of drivers don't know their limits. I mean, you got motherfuckers out here, drivers are pulling guns on fucking people. You got drivers fighting people. They don't know their limits. This shit's gotten to their head so much that they, they've lost it. When it comes to Roger, they've lost it. And so it's good to hear that you're pulling yourself out. You are aware. You got that self-awareness to where you say, I need to pull myself out. I need to pivot for a minute. I need to do something different for a minute. A lot of drivers don't got that. And like I said, a lot of them still got that PTSD. where They, they ain't worked ride share for two years, three years. But they on ride share channels to this day trying to beat up drivers. You're going to end up like me. You're going to end up in a motherfucking wheelchair sitting here pissed off, yelling at every fucking bite like me every day. No, you're not. Because it don't happen to everybody. It don't happen. To every, it only happens to certain people. It, don't have, it does happen, but not to everybody. But some, oh, you're going to go get you a job and you're going to have to work for $13 an hour, start back at the bottom again. It ain't going to happen to everybody. It ain't going to happen to everybody. That's right, Logan, man. I'm used to getting money every day. That's why I fit right in with gig. That's real shit. I have lived direct, so I get paid after every ride and tip. It's addicting. Yeah, Dante, man. And it gives people PTSD when you don't, when you done working all day, you working on credit. How many companies in the past two years have you seen with employees being furloughed, laid off, fired, terminated, all that shit in the last two years? Because I read this shit all the time. I get business shit all the time on my phone. And these motherfuckers are still fighting for their final paychecks. They worked on credit. These people were working on credit. They were working with the company saying, we're going to pay you. And these people are getting big paychecks. They don't get their pension paid out, their vacation. These people waiting on five, six thousand dollar checks, five, six thousand dollar checks. 
they waiting on. Never got it. Working on credit. A lot of contractors didn't get paid $14,000 invoices, $26,000 invoices. Working on credit. They working on credit. We do this shit. We get paid at the end of the day. This is like day labor shit. You get paid at the end of the day. You downloading 300. You put in some smart ass time. You downloading 300. You only work five, six hours. Because that's all you say. I'm going to go out here for five, six hours real quick. See what I can get. Five, six hours later, you downloading 220. Damn, 220. I did like three hours of driving, almost $70 an hour. Download that shit. People get PTSD from this shit because they miss it. They don't want to admit it. It's like a girlfriend that they, they scared to admit that they fucking miss. Fuck that bitch. Can't stand that bitch. Well, why are you still talking about her all the fucking time? You dating a new fucking girl. You still talk about your old fucking girl. Because I can't stand that bitch. See, that's what it's like. It's like PTSD. And so I tell everybody, when you out there driving, just like Dre, if you got to come up for air, man, you got to come up for air. Because even some days, man, when I like my, I got a headache, you know, I just, I'm not in it. I come up for air. I park that fucking car in the front, put the cover on it, clean it up. I'm in the house. You got to come up for air sometimes. You got to know when enough is enough and when you've done enough for the day. You got to call it good. And a lot of people, like I said, when they're done with ride share, they're bitter for a long time. They're bitter for, they got, you know, deactivated for no reason. A line customer or something got them deactivated. Something happened to them or they, their car got fucked. They weren't making enough profit to fix their car. So now their car is fucked up. They can't drive it no more. Radiator done blew up, messed up the water pump. They can't get it all fixed. They mad because they had to go back to that slow money again. At W-2, you're working on credit. You work for two weeks. I'll pay you next Friday. Excuse me. You work for two weeks. You get terminated. Now you got to wait another like few days for your check to come. And you're already behind on bills. Or you be like them people that got furloughed. Months later, months later, you still waiting on money. You still waiting on money. Happened to Kyle. Got deactivated on Lyft. Yeah. So months later, these people still waiting on $3,000 checks, $5,000. And what are they doing in the meantime? I mean, we sit in the parking lot for 10 minutes. We sit in the parking lot for 10 minutes. Oh, you wasting time, man. You wasting time sitting in that parking lot, man. You should be out driving, keeping them wheels going. You should be 10 minutes is too long, man. It's 10 minutes you could be working. But these motherfuckers sitting at home for three, four months waiting on that $6,000 check, fighting every day, arguing every day, taking out, you know, mortgage loans, taking out title loans on their cars and everything. They ain't out working. Because they waiting on that money to come through. They fighting every day. They mentally broke. They fighting every day for that money. We take 10 minutes and we get chastised. These people taking three months. Oh, no, that, that's because, man, I've got to, you've got excuses for that shit. I get it. You got it. They're W-2. They're W-2. We're contractors and we take 10, 15 minutes and say, you know what? I'm going to kind of play the system for 10, 15 minutes, kind of kick back, see if I can give me a $40 ride real quick. Cause I'm, I'm tired of these little three dollar for you know two mile rides. Probably got four motherfuckers jumping in out the car. I'm not looking for that. Give me something else. You mess around, get a thirty six dollar banger for like you know ten miles. You good? You good? You waited for it? You got it? Took you ten minutes. But the same person sitting at home three months waiting to get paid by W two that let them let their ass go three months ago. But yet these people could be on their channels talking shit to them. But yet they on our channels. We, we're doing something. We making money. We doing good. Because it's not always to talk good about. It's to pull you down. Misery loves company. Like I said, some people just want to pull you down. They want to see you doing well. And they want to pull you. Instead of them going to these channels trying to lift these people up. Hey, keep your keep your head up. Keep your head up. They ain't going out there saying that to them fucking people. No, they chasing people who are doing okay. Because they want to pull us down. They could be on their channel. Hey, man, you're going to get your six grand. Just keep your head up, brother. I got a, I got a, uh. Uh, application for you. If you want to go out and get a job, I'll, I'll shoot you an application. This one place that's hiring right now, bro. Keep your head up. You gonna get that six thousand dollars? They don't do that. They come to a driver's channel where people actually making money. Oh, y'all ain't doing it right. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. You ain't that man. Get your motherfucking ass off the channel. Go on somewhere. Yeah, says brother Jeff. We get paid in California after the ride and standing with the Lyft Pro Card. Yeah, Lyft keeps trying to give me that Pro Card all the time. I'm like, ah, I just download my shit to the bank. I don't care. I do it every, I download every night. I try at least. Sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot. The bonus will get paid to the end of the week. So lame. Yeah, they do that because they holding all those driver tips, paying bonuses. <laughs> That's what they doing. They going to give you the fucking bonus in the form of somebody else's tips. Shit. Man, Mr. Gambit, you got to brother. Amen to the hustle and flow. Got to get that money or you got to go. Real shit, man. Real shit. 
And I tell, you know, a lot of drivers out there when I meet them in the streets and everything like that, hey, you are in control of what you make. You in control of it. So don't think these apps owe you shit. They're not going to ever call your phone telling you, hey, dude, we see that you're sitting down there, Tempe. We're going to pop up a surge in about 15 minutes just south of you. Go south. We're going to pop up a surge down there. We got you. We're going to go. They ain't going to call you with that shit. No. They going to pop up a surge. And if you don't make it, you don't make it. Whoever drivers in the area going to get it. You ain't getting it. These apps ain't looking out for you like that. They don't call your phone. Hey, man, next week we got a big bonus structure coming up. Tell you what we're going to do. If you don't drive Lyft and you just drive us, we're going to give you extra. They, they ain't trying to help you. These apps want to use any dime they can to put into their own pockets so they can get the shareholders to give more money so they can expand, do more investing, and really take over the market share and push all these new and upcoming ride share companies out of the door. Because a lot of these new ride share companies is getting paid. They getting money. They getting money. And Uber is like, we're losing market share. We're losing to these smaller companies. This is money we could be having. Even if it's 5%, 1%, 2%, it's money. Because 2% could be 10 million bucks. A little ride share gunner can mess around and make 10 million in a year. 5 million in a year. They could do that. And, and Uber is like, man, that's 5 million we didn't make. That's 10 million off of our bottom line. What the hell are we doing? We need to go in and push this little ass company out the door. What are we doing? drivers we make the difference we're the ones that make the difference because we can go out there decline all the shit rides don't take none of these rides from these low paying fares and people the riders are going to say i can't get no ride on lyft i can't get no ride on uber they're going to start opening up new accounts with new ride share companies going damn every time i go on this app man people are like they're like within the next five minutes i'm finally get because the driver is getting paid the driver's getting paid he's showing up Ten ten dollars for a five mile ride. He's showing up for that, but yet the five mile ride on Uber is paying you, you know, five five fifteen five dollars and fifteen cent. So you making an extra four dollars and eighty four cent just by going by driving for another app. You making an extra four eighty four per ride, no surge. This is the extra four eighty four per ride you making just by using a different app that a different rider says, "Hey, I'm gonna use this app instead because Uber ain't getting me no rides." Because ain't nobody trying to do no dollar mile shit on Uber all day. Well, they can do $2 a mile on another app, $3 a mile on another app, $4 a mile on another app. Why use Uber and Lyft? We're the drivers. We're the ones that make shit happen. And so when I see a lot of these riders out there complaining and arguing, and oh, man, we, you guys need to give us more money. You need to pay us more. You speak with your acceptance rate. That's how you talk. You speak with your acceptance rate. Like I said, closed mouths don't get fed. If you 100% AR, you got a closed mouth. 80% AR, your mouth is not even really open. 90% AR, closed mouth. If you got a 30% AR, okay, you talking. What were you saying? What you saying? You don't like the shit we sending? What you saying? 5% AR, oh, you complaining like a motherfucker. You don't like shit we send. 2% AR, oh, you just saying fuck us, right? You just saying fuck us. That's what you saying. <laughs> closed mouth don't get fed. 100% AR, your mouth is closed. You can't say shit about Roger. You can't even be out picking. You can't complain about nothing. You speak with your AR. 80% AR, you shouldn't even be out picking. You wasting your time. 90% AR, why you out protesting? You out protesting. You 90% AR, you can't say shit. You speak with your AR. You drop that shit down to 10%. You got something to say. What you saying? Saying my rides are shitty? You saying you don't like these rides? 20% AR, okay. You what, what you saying? You saying you don't like this shit? We ain't paying you enough? What you saying? What you trying to say? The higher the AR is for, for drivers that are intelligent, the higher their AR, that means the market is getting better and the apps are listening because they're starting to send you better shit. But if you sit at 100% AR, 85%, 95% AR, I can't hear what you're saying. I really can't. Unless you can truly tell me your market pays $5 a ride every ride you get and you sit at 100% AR and you show me, hey, man, every ride I get is $5 a mile. $5 a mile, dude. I'm at 100% AR. Uh, then I can't say shit to you. You better do 100% AR at five. But if you tell me you're taking 50 cent a mile rides, nature hikes left and right, and you sit on, you can't, I can't talk to you like that. We're not having the same conversation. Don, they say, yep, my acceptance rate is 44%. Hey, because you got some shit to say to me. Hey, man, half the shit you send me ain't no good. More than half the shit you send me ain't no good. So y'all need to fucking figure it out. It's like having a motherfucking whole plate of food, but half the shit you got on the plate is burnt. You don't want the fucking dinner. Now you just ruined the dinner. Half the food is burnt. Look at that. AR, 
Jonathan, like, man, you gave me a plate of nothing but burnt motherfucking grits and the pancakes ain't even cooked all the way through. Take this shit back. That's 5% AR. <laughs> 100% AR, motherfuckers, like, I guess I'll have to eat the burnt shit. Yeah, that's 100% AR. I'll eat these soggy ass motherfucking eggs. That's 100% AR. The sausage ain't even cooked. The sausage is still frozen on the inside and they still eating that shit. That's 100% AR. We out of John's there from LA, bro. Yeah, so you already know that's a hard market, man. That's a hard market. These motherfuckers trying to serve y'all motherfucker burnt spaghetti and shit. How you burn spaghetti? These motherfuckers trying to serve y'all burnt spaghetti. John's like, no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. 5%. That's all I need. <laughs> I'll eat the bread. I ain't eating the rest of this shit. I'll eat the bread 5%. I'll eat the I'll eat the motherfucking French toast. The rest of this shit I don't want. <laughs> you know, what, this is nothing was better than Uber Lyft Nick was rocking 0% AR for a few weeks. Yeah, sometimes hey, and he drives daytime. Ride flow, he drives daytime. Daytime his map be just glossy white. It would be like a little pink, a little purple, gloss white. There's I open my app sometimes that shit be firing in red across the whole city. And it'd be like, you know, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. when I'm waking up. Man, I was like, forget that shit, man. Dude, ain't no way. Ain't no way I'm driving unless it's like fire engine red. I ain't driving. I'm serving you burnt water. <laughs> like, motherfucker, you drinking burnt water. Oh, what what Mr. Gambit say? The game changed the minute I went to Uber Greenlight Hub and told the guy, me 80%, 20% is no more. Uber can take what they want when I started doing the same cherry picking fat ones. Yep, you got to cherry pick the fat ones, man. If it ain't fat, it ain't that. I ain't doing it. If it ain't fat, it ain't that. <laughs> Full Pepto Bismol. Hell yeah, the whole screen pink motherfucker. I, don't, I want some Pepto Bismol on the screen, baby. We looking. We trying to get sick money. <laughs> John says, yeah, but I closed last week with eighteen hundred. There you go, brother. There you go. Five percent, and they say low AR. You can't make no money with low AR. Eighteen hundred. Five percent AR. You can't make no money with low AR. Five percent, eighteen hundred dollars. Trust me on that one. Don't let these motherfuckers tell you. Or oh, if you keep declining rides, you're not gonna make no money. Okay, they don't know about Jonathan. They don't know about Jonathan. Because I told motherfucker, even KC, you know, KC, she's just like you out there in Vegas. KC business strategist. She's just she nineteen hundred two k a week, low AR. So when people sit and tell me, oh no, you know, you ain't gonna make no money with low AR. You ain't making no money. Shit. Shit, like you don't know some of these drivers out there, two G's a week, 1800 low AR, five percent AR. Man, that's how you do it, brother. That's how you do it. Hey, Jonathan, hey, appreciate these. I learned a lot from you, brother. Hey, I appreciate that, man. And like I said, while you sitting here with 1800, five percent AR, not taking no shit you don't want, you ain't dealing with nothing. We got people right now protesting in, in, in Australia and throwing motherfucking picket signs at people and shit. And you sitting there pulling down eight because they don't realize. They are in control of their own money. Uber and Lyft ain't giving you shit. You took that 1800 You took that 1800 They weren't just giving you shit. They was giving you shit right. We'll give you this. Don't give me nothing. We'll give you that. Don't give me nothing. Oh, but I'll take that. <laughs> it's like shit. What do I mean? $22 for two miles? I'll take that. Motherfucker, you took that 1800 They ain't give you shit. They was trying to give you some bullshit is what they was trying to do. In L.A., it was trying to, oh, man, you fuck around, make $16 an hour in L.A. They'll give you that. They'll give you $16 an hour. They arguing in Minnesota, we want $17 an hour minimum wage. We want $17 minimum. And Uber's like, we can't afford $17 an hour minimum. You like, you motherfuckers looking for $17? Man, fuck that. I'll take that. <laughs> they ain't get, You took that $1,800. You took it. They ain't give you that. You took it. And that's what a lot of drivers don't realize, man. This channel is about the energy of what a driver, the, the comprehension of a driver, knowing that you are in charge of your bank. You are in charge of your money. And if you think the apps are in charge of that shit, they're going to run you into the ground. Guaranteed. You're going to sit there. Oh, yeah, I got the MV7, brother. I like that, Mike. I love it. And see, that's the thing. If you sit there and you take all these cheap ass rides and you complain about what you're getting paid, man. That's on you as a driver. That's on you. That's on you. Oh, yeah, Stephen. This arm is pretty good. Cool. I don't even know what kind it is. I got to go look at my, my eBay list. But I like this. It was on like 50, 60 bucks. I don't even know what it was. But it's a pretty cool arm. And I like the MV7 because it's all USB. I don't got to use my XLR, so I don't need a powering source. It runs right into the laptop. Right into the laptop, man. Easy, easy. And the thing with this, 
because everybody tells you that the um that the mic like this like you can push it all the way down like this now when it pushed down like that you can hear a lot of peas popping because you don't it don't have an air buffer so what they do is they tell everybody to go get a bigger a bigger cone say hey go get a bigger cone and you won't hear all the peas popping so what i do is i just pull it up like about that so i pull mine up to about there and that creates air space that's all it's doing is creating air so it's less pop that's all you create an air space so your pee hits the hits the cone and it dissipates air before it hits that little uh, mic inside because this part right in here is the actual microphone that little piece right in there is your actual microphone yep the plosives yep so you pull that cone up a little bit and you get it from sitting on top of the microphone. You create that air pocket. That air pocket dissipates everything. And it sounds a lot better to me like this. It sounds a whole lot better than what it always pushed down because the plosives hit and they pop and people are wearing earbuds and shit listening or they listen in their car and it's popping the speakers and it's popping their earbuds. So you got to pull that microphone off, back that shit off a little bit. So you're not popping people in the head. But yeah, I like this MV7, man. I think I'm going to buy like, because when I set up this room as the podcasting room, I got to go get another couple of these because I want the people who I'm speaking with and the presenters who I'm talking to, when I have them all come to the house and we sitting down, then we all have the same microphone so I can run it through a board or something. I got to figure something out with that. Yeah, man. Because a lot of people, they was like, you got to go. I'm like, when you buy a new one, the new one, the other filter, all it has is just airspace at the top. That's it. So I'm like... So that's what the microphone looks like without nothing on there. So what I do is I just put it like right until it's snug. Now it's snug. So because you can't talk into the, the side. So the microphone don't have to come way down here. It don't have to be that far. You're not talking. In, you're talking into here. So you pull it up, create airspace. You don't need to go buy a whole nother fucking mic, a whole nother uh, filter. It does it itself. And it's snug like it ain't coming off. But I don't know. This is me with my engineering brain sitting in the garage working on shit all the time. It makes you think of things. So I logically think it through. Why do people need pop filters? Because the airspace, there's no airspace between the microphone itself and the filter. So create airspace. How do you create airspace? Just pull the shit up. These motherfuckers be out. Yeah, I just spent $60 on a new filter. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, just pull it up, man. That's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We... My son built a, I had a gaming computer built. I mean, this thing is a crazy game because he plays a lot of games. He's an online gamer. This dude, man, he, they got liquid cooled. There's like cooling antifreeze inside of the motherboards. There's a, it's a liquid cooled motherboard. All that shit's crazy. The, the, all that, man. He's, I use a sock as a pop filter before. Yeah, Dre, man, you got, you got to do something to create those pops, man. Pull that shit back a little bit. Man, man. Gypsy said, new driver here. I just found you today in Phoenix, too. I oh, appreciate that, Gypsy. Appreciate it. Welcome to the barbecue. Like Jesse says, this barbecue is the best. Only spot where you can get knowledge and speak our minds, and it's entertaining. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that, brother. And Gypsy said, I'm learning so much. Hey, these drivers on here, we, we push information and education. We don't sit and play that, oh, I got a secret, and I ain't telling nobody unless you pay me $5.99. Then I'll fuck all that. You know what? We put it on the board because we got families to feed. We got kids that need clothes. We don't want to see nobody evicted, nobody homeless. Like, man, I was short $200 for rent, man. They're going to evict me. I was sure you ain't going to be short 200 on this channel. Trust me, you ain't going to be short $200. We can get you to leave the house today and make $200 if the day is good. We can help you get that 200. So a lot of channels, they just going to show you what they made a week. Oh, look what I made last week. Whoa, how'd you make it? Driving. Yeah, but like, how are you driving? Well, I put my key in the ignition and I turned the motherfucker and I hit the brake pad and I put the car in drive and it started moving. Okay, so what, like, how are you driving? What was your strategy? I just started at four o'clock in the morning and I went till midnight. Yeah, we am not fucking with you. I'm not fucking with you. See, because drivers like that don't tell you the business. They don't explain to you the business from a driver's aspect. We're drivers. We're this end of the spectrum against the apps on the other end of the spectrum. We're all feeding off of a customer's. The customer's the center point. That's where all of our funding comes from. The app is funded by the customer. We're funded by the customer. So therefore, the app wants to get as much money out of the customer's pocket to save for themselves versus giving to us. Because they think we're going to be like the people in Australia out there fucking struggling, pissed off, running around mad. Give us more money. Give us. I say, you know what? Fuck it. I guarantee when I drive every week, Lyft loses money on me every week. Uber King James said Uber be sending him fucking emails saying, you know, this is how much money we lost on you because that's how we drive. 
we don't give a shit about the apps. They can make their money on high AR drivers. You're not making money on us. The high AR drivers all over the world pay you enough. They pay you enough. The money you're stealing, the money you're taking pays you enough. But we're going to get ours. We're going to figure out how to get ours. <laughs> oh, Michael said, it cracks me up every time when Uber app tells me this shitty trip has been taken by another driver. <laughs> That's what he needs to say with an Oscar the Grouse face on that motherfucker. This shitty trip has been taken by another driver. Big ass Oscar the Grouse face pops up. <laughs> Back that ass up. Shit. And that's what we do on this channel. You know what I'm saying? We we understand what the apps have to do. But they've got financial statements. They've got financial experts. They've got accounting departments. They've got all that shit on their end that they need to help run their company better. Stealing from us does not run that company better. That's not called that's called stealing from some fucking body to give money to a company that's not being run well. That's what that's called. So when you run your company better, you minimize your expenses, you maximize your opportunity, maximize your revenues, you get shit set right. They got a lot of job duplication. Guarantee they got a lot of job duplication. They got managers stacked on top of managers, stacked on top of managers that they got to pay all these wages and salaries for. Not only you got to pay taxes, wages, salaries, insurance, benefits, all this shit for these people. And you just stacking managers and supervisors on top of managers because I know how corporate fucking works. You got one person calling another person to say, hey, how's your department doing today? And that's the only fucking job. Hey, check on that department. OK, I'll check on that department. Hey, how's you doing in the department today? Well, let me call my department leader and see. Hey, department leader, how's the department running today? I don't know. Let me call my lead clerk and see. Hey, lead clerk, how's the department going today? So all they doing is job duplication. The same motherfucker doing the same shit, just passing information down the tube eradicate all those middle motherfuckers have somebody at the top and somebody at the bottom and go hey how's the department running today actually is running pretty good we got all this shit done this is done this is what we're working on right now i'm working on this he's working on that she's working on that and britney's on the fucking controls and she's dealing with jeff all day jeff ain't taking no fucking rides that's all they need to say but they have middle managers, middle man. You got Langston, you got Brittany, you got fucking Karen, you got Keith, you got all these motherfuckers in the department. That's all you need. But yet when you start putting Virginia at the top, Valerie, fucking Henry, you got all these motherfuckers overseeing four fucking people. You got three people supervising four people. Shit don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me. And it's like, when you get rid of all that mental management, all that extra fucking weight, all that job duplication, you run as a much smoother corporation. You don't need that much money now. Now you can have money sitting in, in the profit column. Instead of always looking at salaries and wa salaries, wages, administrative costs are the the biggest cost of most corporations. Salaries because they well, we need people here to do the work. We're drivers, motherfucker. We're the ones doing the work. The people running the controls. You can get AI to do half that shit, and and just use AI. You can need somebody who understands AI and somebody to run computers, somebody who can fix them. IT department. Then get an accounting department. Uh, accounting department tells you which way to go with your decisions. That's it. It's a lot of dead weight at these fucking companies. A lot of dead weight. And they got to sit there and pay all these government politician people and shit, lobbyists and shit like that. Excuse me, a lot of dead weight. So when we, the drivers, are going at the rider because we want a certain amount of money, then the apps are digging into the driver's pocket saying, well, we need a certain amount of money from you. We both feeding off the same fucking tree. And it's only so many apples on this fucking tree. So if I'm like, I got four people in my house, so I need minimum at least four fucking apples. And the app is like, well, we'll give you two. You just got to cut those motherfuckers in half so each one of y'all get a half an apple. No, we ain't each eating a half of a fucking apple. No, I need four apples off of this tree. So why is the app taking, you know, eight apples off of the tree, giving us the last two apples and telling us, we'll just chop that shit in half. Now each one of y'all got a piece of, no, 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 we're not doing that. There's 10 apples on that tree. We're the ones doing the work. We, we're neutralizing the soil. We give the nutrients. We trim them up. We pruned it. We fucking got the dirt right. We got everything. Right. All you did was told us where the tree was. You just told us where the tree was. That's it. So because you told us where the tree was, we get there. You want us to give you eight of the apples off the tree and we take two? No. We're going to take at least six of the apples, seven of the fucking apples, and give you three. Thank you for telling us where the fucking tree was. Now tell us where another tree is. And we'll give you some more apples off that tree when we get there. But we're the ones doing all the work. Man. Is it what what Williams say? Hey, wouldn't have took so long much to get legal issues if they pay us better and getting people who shouldn't be ordering rides off the app. Right. Right. And a lot of these people that are on the app, riders and drivers, both. They're hustlers. Motherfuckers is life hustlers. People get hustled by, you know, ordering fucking Sasha McMuffins. And then I ain't get my Sasha McMuffin. Motherfucker cheese all around their fucking mouth and shit from it. I ain't even get it. 
You just ate the motherfucker. But I didn't get it. And so now the app got to deal with that shit. Kick these motherfuckers off the app. It's dead weight. Dead weight. Drivers that's, that's going to pickup areas because they know they can they can trick the fucking person. So they'll go to a pickup area just to get the cancellation fee. Me, I don't even wait for cancellation fees most of the time. Me, I just like, hey, you take it too long. Cancel, I'll drive the fuck off because I want to make money. I don't give a fuck about that cancellation fee. I want to make money. If I know it's a busy, busy area, I can make $30. Why am I waiting on $3? I can make $30. All I got to do is cancel this motherfucker real quick. I'm sitting in a surge. Pick up this person. I just made $30. But these raggedy motherfuckers is waiting on, I'm going to get this cancellation fee. I can't wait to get this. Motherfucker, it's $3.67. You can make $30 right now, but you waiting on $3.60. Fuck this person. Cancel they slow ass. You sitting in surge. Get that surge. Pick up somebody that calls the street. You just made $30. But I didn't get the $3.67. Motherfucker, slow, man. Motherfuckers are slow. And I'm one of those people that, you know, live, they always send to me, you've been canceling too much. Well, your people are taking too fucking long. I'm sitting in, let them know, Jeff is on the way. If it's taking me six minutes to get to them and they still don't have to pick up when I get there, oh, we're going to have a problem. Because it took me six minutes. You're in the building where I'm going. It takes you like a minute to walk out of that building. It's taking me six minutes to fight the traffic to get to you. How do I get to you in six minutes and it still takes you four minutes to get out of that building? That's 10 minutes done passed when you knew I was on my way cancel <laughs> it's like man i'll be out of there because this is the psyche behind it we got money to make we got surge we sitting on we got people right across the street with their phone and they hang on god damn it i can't find a driver and i'm waiting on this motherfucker right here who knew i was six minutes away and it still took him four minutes to come out i'm not doing that i'm not doing that i'm gonna pick up the person across the street with the phone and they hang on damn i can't find a driver you got one i've done that shit many times on my phone I'll be on Mill Avenue, motherfucker, in the building. Won't come out. Cancel. Block away. There's somebody sitting on the corner waiting on a ride. I got that one. Cool. $22, you know, eight miles. I'll do that one. But the one who was in the building, fuck them. They can, they can get the next ride. They can get the next one. And that's just how I drive. If they don't like it, you ain't got to like it, motherfucker, but you got to respect it because there ain't shit else you can do. So if you don't respect my time, you know that I'm six minutes out and it still take you four minutes. Man, you it's 10 minutes of fuckery you just created. 10 minutes to fuck, and I'm not dealing with that. I'll pick up the person across the street. I'll get to the building. If you ain't, no, nah, I'm gone. I'm out. What Jesse say? Jesse said, hey, Jeff, I had a customer tell that a female driver picked him up the other day with her young son in the car seat. What, in the front or the back? The motherfucker was sitting in the back seat and shit. When she got in, she got in like, oh, shit. Yeah, you're going to babysit on this ride. Like, motherfucker, I ain't babysitting your kid. That's fucked up. Hey, William said, the man, the Eagle Rock man is playing downtown, but it's 30 miles away and I'm too comfortable on the couch. Yeah, sometimes you just got to fucking kick back and relax. Kick back and all day. We coming up on five hours on this live stream. Five, this is supposed to be like a one and a half hour live stream, but we getting it in, man. We be getting it in. I love it, man. I love it. Because a lot of you guys come into the chat. And like I said, I like to run my live streams a little long because not everybody can get in as soon as I start it. And some people get in at the end, but it's always some people can go back and play, you know, another day. Like, fuck it, I'll play like 20 minutes of it today. I ain't listening to all this shit. I got to go work out. <laughs> yeah, Papa Cito, we be running. We be running. We run these live streams. I know YouTube is probably like, why does this motherfucker always run like five hour live streams? It ain't me. It's the drivers, man. We got shit to say. We got shit to get off our chest. We got issues. And if Uber and Lyft ever looked at one of our live streams, just play this shit at a meeting. So we got one of Jeff's live streams playing in the conference room today. If anybody want to get some motherfucking crusty dusties and some juice, go in the conference room and listen to these motherfuckers. Because I read all these driver questions. I read everybody's shit. Just because, man, it's like, it's important. This is, these are important things that we need to discuss that somebody needs to have in their head because they'll hear it too. What well, Dante come on? We love it too, Jeff. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate it. And what Dante says, he said, quick question. I've been doing Lyft for two years now. I'm finally doing Uber as well. In your experience, which app can I earn more money on? Seems like Uber has better surges. Uber definitely has better surges in my region. And some people's region, Lyft is better. But in my region in Phoenix, Uber has the much better surges. When concerts hit, I like to use Lux because the availability of drivers is low. So I'll throw it on Lux with Surge and I'll get probably a little bit better than UberX. But I've shown videos where UberX with Surge kills lux it does it i don't know how it works out like that but uber x with surge will kill lux with surge on some rides 
I'll be getting like, you know, eight, nine dollars a mile on Uber X, but I'll get a lift lip ride with surge. It'll be two dollars a mile. You like 12 miles, twenty four dollars. And it's got surge applied to it. But I'm like, but I just got an Uber X almost nine dollars a mile right now. So I'm going to take the Uber X at nine dollars a mile. It'd be like two miles, eighteen dollars with surge. I'll do that one. And I do that all the time. Yeah. In Vegas, always concerts and events going on. Run both of them, man. Run both of them. Because that Uber X, like I said, it's it's a crazy app. I don't know how they come up with the prices sometimes, but man, it'd be jumping. It'll be jumping when you can get the, the surge to hit right and you get on the outskirts. So you got your time right. You got your surge right. And you're going away from the event. Dude, it, it's easier like that. I love that. I love that. And what what William say? He said, Steven said, because Lyft surge sucks. Yeah, they'd be like three dollars and fifty cent. I'm like three dollars and fifty cent. Uber be putting out eight dollars at the same time. I was like, man, I ain't doing no damn Lyft. It was like what William says. So Lyft has shown the drivers the interface and rate cars, but it's extra comfort starts tomorrow. How Lyft will stack and try to get riders to take extra comfort? I wonder. I said it's almost nine o'clock, so I'm gonna run in here and eat some dinner real quick. I'm gonna run, eat, jump in the shower. You know, get ready to drive, go out, and make sure the car is clean and everything. And I'm about to go, I'm about to put Lux on and drive until midnight and see what happens at midnight. This thing flips around, but this is gonna be pretty interesting. This will be pretty interesting. I want to see exactly what it does, but yeah, so that means I'm gonna have to end this live stream, man. Like I said, we got it in. Hopefully, I can get back on this week. We still got what Wednesday, Thursday. So, Wednesday, Thursday, I might end up doing a short live, it might only be like three hours. <laughs> My short lives are three hours. I might do a short live on Wednesday, like three hours. You know, it's short. <laughs> we be fucking getting it in. Oh, man. Hey, Mr. Gambit, that's right. You got that one, brother. That's it. Love my shirt, Jeff. No one's entitled to success. Best words. You got to work for that shit. Yeah, Mr. Gambit ordered that one right there. So he got that one off the site. You are not entitled to success. He's. I, I remember I sent that one to you, brother. Man. And, and I wear that shit in the store sometimes. People stop me and go, I needed to see that today. I'm really working hard on something. <laughs> it's like, hey, psh, they stop me all the time. I really like that shirt. I'm like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, you are not entitled. It's just you got to work at this shit. You got to work at it. Just because you got the app don't mean you'll succeed at it. You ain't entitled to success just because somebody else doing it. You got to work on it, too. We all got to work on it together. And for some shit might work for some days. Some days I got to call it good early and, and hightail it out of there because it ain't nothing going on. But, man, that's it. That's it, brother. You are not entitled to success. Everybody's got to wake up and everybody's got to say, today is the day that I'm going to just try my best. Go out and get that good ass energy out there. And if, and if shit's going good, stay on top of it. If shit's grinding into like with Dre, if shit's going into the ground and it's grinding you out, come up for air. Realize, okay, I'm getting in too deep. Your shit is racking my brain. It's fucking with me today. Let me take a break. And I remember when I used to do, when Uber Eats used to be jumping, I would always be out there, you know, doing Uber Eats. I'll take Chinese orders in, sushi orders, because I needed a break from people. I'm like, I need a break, man. I need a break from people. And that was when, you know, I was still doing like the tail end of days sometimes. But you got to always, you know, realize when you're, you're struggle, your struggle for success, if you're struggling to get success, you got to know when it's time to come up for air at that point and say, I've been pushing real hard. I've been, I've been pushing hard for three, four days. I'm starting to get a headache. I'm starting to get wore down. I can feel myself getting edgy. Do like Dre, pull up. Be like, okay, I need some air today. Today might be an easy day. It might be a light day. I'm not going to really go all at it. So, and if it works out to where you start getting good money, then you're like, okay, cool. It, it started working out because you, you had a lighter energy about it. You let yourself have lighter energy. And when you put that heavy ass fucking yoke on your back, you got to carry that heavy ass energy. You be snapping at people. You mad at rides. You don't want to sit in areas. You get real edgy. Come up for air, get lighter energy and be like, all right, bet, bet. Let's do this shit. Thank you, KC Biz. That's my Vegas lady out there doing it. Her and her husband out there making bank. That's what I'm talking about. Like I said, I really wish, you know, this, like I said, I know we got a few Australian drivers on this channel because they've said it before, but I really wish those people in Australia would realize the power they have and look at some of these people on here. Look at KC Biz. Look at Jonathan. Look at a lot of these people on King James, Juan Vargas. Look at all the money being made by making the decisions for yourself. You ain't got to beg these apps for shit. Make these apps beg you to drive by giving you surges. Make them beg you to drive by giving you quests and challenges and streets. Make these apps beg you to drive. Make them beg for you to turn your car on because this shit can sit in the drive. You ain't paying my shit going to sit in the driveway. If you want me to start that car up, you got to put the money out. And a lot of us, we don't do it, man. We, we, a lot of high AR people, they just started it because they're, they're on autopilot. They're on employee mode. They start that car and they start driving nuts. 
Man, man, there you go, Jesse. There you go. Just did the brakes today, putting them in work tonight. If you see brakes light, it's probably me. <laughs> Be stepping on them brakes. Skirt, skirt, skirt. Yeah, wear them in pretty good, man. When you leave in the neighborhood, go about 15 miles an hour, brake to a stop. 15 miles an hour, brake to a stop. Get that, get them pistons worked out. Get that uh that fluid worked in and get them calipers pushed out, man. So yeah, that's what I do all the time. What William say made $20 of Lux ride for three minutes, 0.49 miles. Damn, that was a good ass ride per mile. Yep, that's it. That's what we're looking for right there. But yeah, man, let's let's get out there and get this money tonight. I'm about to go eat me some dinner, see if I can go get this last of the Lux, man. This is it, last of the Lux. And I'm about to go out there and get it. Hey, Julio says, when do you actually deal with a dollar mile rides? In a lot of my videos, I talk about that. I talk about how I use it for transportation and commuting. I, like if I got to go east to west and I don't want to go on my own gas and the ride looks good, if it's 22 miles, $23, I'll take it. Dollar a mile, I'll take it because I'm not on my own gas. But if I'm in a in a region, I'm staying in a region, oh, I'm not doing no dollar mile rides. I'm plucking it for all the good shit. And then I'm dollar a mile out of there. But all right, y'all, I appreciate you guys. I'm about to shut this live down. Once again, thank y'all for everything. Casey Bizra, just keep it up out there in Vegas. Keep reporting back to us. Let us know how it's going because you're in a hard ass market. Ride flow. I know you down there in Miami, man. Hey, got to keep doing it, brother. I got to come check out your uh, channel. I want to hear you. Uh, I want to hear your newscaster, the helicopter pilot. <laughs> I want to see if you're going to start doing that, man. That's going to be tag me in it. When you do the helicopter pilot shit, you got to come up with a good script. Come up with a good script. Tag me in it. I want to hear this shit. This is going to be funny. <laughs> All right. Y'all let y'all later, man. Y'all be easy out there.